Well, they'll certainly, won't they certainly, certainly will hope they're not going to be out there for too long. Um, already 300 looks as though it'll be way too much for Middlesex to avoid the uh, uh, defeat. As Helm is in, he bowls, and that one goes through. Uh, doesn't get up outside of the off stump, looking to cut uh, over to a length delivery from Helm. That's passed well underneath the bat through to the keeper, and off he goes to work on potentially a divot, as we're told, in the track here. Yeah, it sounds like there's a, it's a little bit inconsistent out there, possibly. Um, you think James Harris, who's bowled very well this game, will, will steam in from this end. Jack Leach and Mason Crane shouldn't provide too much opposition. I, I guess the one thing, just uh, reflected on this match before we go knee-deep into, the, uh, into uh, the, the many tweets that have come in this morning. Um, here's to Helm. He's in, bowls, and uh, this is played away into the offside by Overton, and there's no run. Um, one, the seamers got more assistance yesterday than they had done on day one. Um, it started nicely for Middlesex swinging around, then again in the twilight, but in, in between it went very flat. Um, I think it was flatter yesterday. Uh, I think um, there wasn't a huge amount of uh, assistance. It wasn't swinging a great deal, but the divots were causing problems for the batsmen. Um, the one thing that perhaps has evened it out a little bit between Middlesex and the MCC is there hasn't been a great deal of spin, as perhaps mm. um, we'd anticipated, certainly having seen that North v South game as we did where uh, Crane was really ripping it last week. Uh, but that hasn't been uh, a big factor between the two counties, the strongest spin attack of the MCC. As in comes Helm, bowls, and uh, that one lifts through to the gloves of John Simpson, uh, beating the edge of Overton's bat. And that wasn't too dissimilar to the ball that picked up uh, James Franklin yesterday, actually, mm. the left-handed Middlesex captain. Um, on this occasion, the right-handed Overton, but a ball with bounce and movement, uh, having just seen one that didn't get up a couple of balls before. The thing is, if they do bowl spin to Overton here, you'd think that he's just going to tuck into it, as he did with Ravi Patel last night. He hit him three mm. sixes down the ground. But we thought, we, uh, well, certainly I thought, having seen that match last week, that it could be Crane and Leach uh, and Lyers, who caused a lot of problems in the middle mm. overs, um, or the middle of the day. But well, too threatening yesterday as here's uh, Helmy bowls, and this is driven with an open face to back a point. No Liam Plunkett as part of the bowling attack, so it will be Overton and um, Gregory yes, again leading the charge. And um, yeah, that just puts a little bit of pressure on them. If Middlesex can wear those two down, then perhaps there's a chance for Middlesex. Yeah, you wouldn't think they'd bowl immensely long spells, those two. They, they both bowled beautifully yesterday. They've got the ball swinging and uh, swinging in different directions as well, which is always tricky for the batsman. Um, but yes, you'd think Crane and Leach will have quite a lot of work to do, especially as the sun's out today, so it should be a little bit easier to bat. Helm to Overton. Bowls and uh, just withdrawing the bat inside the line of that one. It's the end of the opening over on the third day here, and the MCC are 145 for seven, uh, so leading by 200 and 98. Um, right, I've got loads of tweets to get through, but um, <laughs> perhaps um, the tweet from Derek in Hurstpeer points here, which is actually the latest tweet to come through, um, sums it up best of the feeling of all, and we will go through the others because they discuss it more at length, all the issues that they have and perhaps hopes as well for some uh, of the new competition. Derek says, glorious weather here today in West Sussex, lifting the gloom of yesterday's cricket news. Not me, I'm afraid, says Derek. Um, our octogenarian uh, listener and contributor as DT uh, so often, well, calls him on every time he tweets, poor old Derek. Um, but um, equally, Derek is not the demographic that the new um, competition is, is targeted at. Indeed, yeah, it's, uh, they're looking for a new audience, as they say, and to future-proof the game, which sounds like jargon to me. Um, but there we go. With James Harris comes in to start his first over of the day. He's up to the stumps to bottom Mason Crane. It's full outside off stump, and it's left alone. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of them to get to. And I, 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 you know, they, it's not very repetitive, but one, one of the themes in particular is... This one, Ash Thorne, who says, as a Derbyshire fan, you have no chance, in capitals, whatsoever, of me supporting a team from Nottinghamshire, or based in Nottinghamshire. Um, hashtag say no to franchise cricket, he says. Well, franchise is a word that we were all slapped on the wrist uh, in the last year to say stop saying franchise, because it's not, it's city-based. Uh, but that's his point, he's not going to base uh, support somebody. Harris is in again, and that's full, and Crane's off the mark. He's guided that down to third now. It's his 21st ball, and they've taken a single. He's not going to support somebody based in the city of Nottingham. Well, it's, it's odd, isn't it, because uh, we're, fran we're told they're not franchises and they're not city-based, uh, even because they're, they're regional. So, theoretically, Notts and Derbyshire would be the same region, same part of the country. I think the theory is, essentially, that if you were starting county cricket now, 
if you're starting domestic cricket now, you wouldn't draw up the funny 18 that we have. Here comes Harris again to Overton this time, and it's full outside off stump, and he leaves it alone. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't come up with the funny 18 teams we have now, and it's important to remember actually that 18 the 18 counties we have don't cover the country fully. No, you know the, the minor counties are are already disenfranchised. I think lots of county fans are feeling, I mean, franchise isn't work, but they they do feel disenfranchised by the mm. new competition. But already there are huge swathes of the country, the, the you know the southwest, the number of players from Devon who play for Somerset for instance, because they're not a first-class county, as Harris comes in again. This is fuller and straighter. But Overton's just had a little drive outside off stump, and he's missed it. It's gone through to the keeper for no run. Um, so, I mean, it's not like county cricket, the 18 counties are completely comprehensive across the country. The theory is that this will be a more TV-based uh, competition that people will watch it on TV and then go along and that everyone will be f able to follow wherever they live because it'll be more readily accessible and available will, will it I mean that's one of the arguments that's also one of the arguments against as Harris comes in again to over 10 years bat on ball for the first time to Harris this morning he's just driven back back to the bowler you know the the, the mat, let's say a team in the southwest is based at Bristol for example is that well, they're, gonna available? Be they're gonna be based in Cardiff and yeah they'll, they'll play a game at Bristol mm -hmm. But that's not going to be readily available to those in Devon or Somerset. No, but Devon and Cornwall already aren't mm. sorted, are they? They'd mm. have to drive to Taunton. But the, what I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is mm. it'll be on TV. Yeah. So they'll okay. actually be able to yeah, watch it. Yeah, it's accessible it. in that sense, yes. You, you can watch it free. <laughs> eight which eight games, we understand, is the desire. As Harris comes in again, he's beaten Overton outside of Stump there. And that's the end of the over. It's 146 for seven with one from it. Um, let me give you a few more of the tweets because people have taken a lot of time this morning to respond to this. There's been enormous number mm. that have come through. Mark, um, who's a Gloucestershire fan, some pundits are also strongly in favour, it must be remembered as well. The pundits certainly are. Um, definitely awaking passions for and against, says Mark. Um, Yes, I mean, there's lots of different arguments. The, the, the arguments for are perhaps the ones at the moment that we could summarise it quite quickly, I suppose, that it's going to bring in a new audience. And one thing I'd say this morning on the majority of these tweets that have come through, so many are like our, our friend in Derbyshire there, who says, I'm not going to go to support a side or follow a side who are based in Nottingham. Um, there will still be a T20 blast. Um, and that rivalry will still be there. And the, the threat is against the long term of that that some of us are concerned for, isn't it? So here's T Helm starting the new over. He's right arm over, two slips in place, bowls and a little dabble from Crane through it goes to Simpson. Um, Malk says, with tests and T20 removing players, yet running alongside the Royal London One Day Cup, will it make it more like a glorified second 11 series? That's something that certainly we've been discussing the last few days, isn't it? That in a sense, yes, it will, because obviously you're not going to have your best test players, but I assume at that stage you'll still have your county pro that you will have recruited in for the season, unless they are also a T20 specialist, in which case, which well, you'd be assuming. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be one thing, you know. Um, the T20 Blast will recruit in 20 specialists still. It's Helm Bowles and a dabble from Crane again on a length. So here it goes to Simpson. I think, I think the Royal London One Day Cup is. I mean, it, I already see it as a second-class citizen. It's not covered by the media mm. apart from BBC Radio. No one, no one's terribly interested in it. No one goes to watch. Um, that's the brutal truth. It's far. The attendances at Royal London One Day Cup games are far worse than uh, Championship. So it's not like it's summoning huge crowds. And I, th I think the feeling is there's not much there left to defend. The problem is that England will want to win World Cups after 2019. Mm. <laughs> so they're going to have to produce 50 over players somehow. Helm in bowls and this ball's driven away as far as cover. There's no run. Uh, Jamie Cook says literally the only thing they need to do is get it all on main free to air uh, main free to air channel. They're not going to get it all on. It will be sold um, to uh, the highest bidder, which will be a subscription channel you'd imagine. Um, but they do. They will be. A, there will be a certain number. Eight, I believe, is the number. What we all believe is the number um, that it will be to free-to-air competition uh, television, and that that is quite crucial. You know, having that accessibility because again, that should bring in to them say, right, well, we've seen it on free-to-air television. Let's go and wa watch it. Let's participate in the sport. That's the theory. Helm, pass the umpire bowls, and uh, this is run away down to third man for a single by Crane. Moves him to 247. It's, it's hard to disagree with Jamie, isn't it? Uh, they, 
some uh, free to free to view t uh, cricket. It's, it's we haven't had any since 2005, and it feels vital. Um, one thing I will say is it's 2017 now, and you, you, the scape, the, the sort of landscape of media is moving so fast. We don't actually know what whether people are, you know, people are already turning off their TVs, mm. particularly young people. And I, I, I would, I would not even go as far as Jamie. I would say you just need some, whether it's streamed online or something. Mm. Helm bowls, and uh, run down to third man for a single by Overton. He moves to 26. More patient approach from. Uh, Overton this morning. Um, well, that's been moose, isn't it? You know, there's so many different um, ways now that it could be um, streamed. Harrison. Uh, we've seen that in football as well, um, where you know the Champions League has moved to subscription, um, but then there have been matches that have been free to air through through social media. The, the Harrison and his team went off to the US in uh, November, I think, to meet with Facebook and Twitter, who are all starting different streaming services now. So it'll be interesting to see. What comes of that? Helm bowls, and uh, this ball's pushed away into the offside. And a dot ball. Um, uh, Jamie was also commenting on the fact, because I said I, I, I was surprised that it would just be three overseas. I um, think that's plenty. And he says, yeah, that's enough. Current one already has more stars than the Big Bash. Would you say that's a fair comment? Um, the, the, the problem with the blast is that you, they can't hold down a star for 14 games. No one, you know, look at, it's brilliant that Middlesex have Brendan McCullum playing for them. Yeah. But he's only playing nine is is, is some, yeah. Um, but it's not all. So you know I, that that's a big problem. Whereas the theory would be that they would these guys would come in for three games, sorry for for the, for the eight game competition, three overseas, and they would stay for the whole time. BBL only has two overseas players per team because it wants uh, Australian players to get a chance. And actually, it hasn't helped their T20 team that much. It might have helped their depth, but they they still haven't won a T20 World Cup. Australia, which England of course have. Somebody wandering behind the bowler's arms laying the start of this over. Harris trotting in again, started his second over a day, over the day. He's bowling to Overton. It's beating him outside off stump. He was forward defending, really, and he's uh, it's just shaped away a touch, and the keeper's done the rest. Um, a football scout on Twitter says, I'm a Lancashire member, and I won't support or attend a franchise of Manchester versus Leeds. Love the big bash, but not here, please. I mean... Uh, there's the question, is there room for two? That's the next stage of the argument, isn't it? Is there room for two? And one thing I'd say is that the swell of emotion this morning um, in the response in, on Twitter from so many county fans is they're still going to go and watch the T20 Blast, but they will not watch the new one. Here comes Harris again to Overton. He's just in behind that defending, and he's got it behind point, and we've take, trotted through for a single. Crucially, how much will that dilute the attendances? of the uh, T20 Blasts um, for the counties, because you would imagine the counties will have in their overseas pro as usual for the season. They'll probably play in the Royal London One Day Cup, unless they're called up to the new T20 competition. They won't necessarily... But you're going to have really gun... The, well, the plan is to have gun overseas T20. The so they, yeah. they're not likely to be the ones that the counties have in for a full season anyway. So well, th th those, those overseas pros are still going to be playing in the Royal London One Day Cup, you'd have thought. Here's Harris again to Crane this time. It's full and straight. And he's just defended that. That played during the day with the test playing, test, test playing also at the same time. So uh, England's test players obviously aren't going to be playing then in uh, in this, but then England's one-day specialists will be playing in the new competition. Mm. Um, so you, in terms of diluting, then you're, you're going to have what is it? Three overseas in a squad of 15. So you've got 12 to make up per team for eight eight teams from the other counties. So yes, the cream of the crop of tw 2020 will go. Hundred players. Yeah. Here's Harris again to Crane. Up to the stumps now. It's full and straight, and he's defended that to cover. And, and one of the things about this is none of this is taking place until the year 2020. Uh, so there are three whole years to work out these issues. I mean, I don't know how squads are going to be made up by then. It's, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, how do you build a... How do you, as a county chief exec, sign up an overseas when... Uh, an ECB run mm. tournament could then pinch them for, for four weeks of the I mean, summer. What, 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 what it'll probably see an end to is the T20 specialist for the 2020 blast, you'd have thought. Mm. Here is Harris up to the stumps again to Crane, and he's just defended that behind point, and they'll come through for a single again. 
Well, it will certainly end the cream of the crop for the T20 Blast um, because yeah, well, they will be held back for the July-August competition. So it will be a second tier of overseas T20 players, which will still be a high standard if they're recruited in. Like Middlesex recruited in McCullum this year. That won't happen. The, the McCullum of yeah. 2020 will be playing in the new competition, so he's not going to play in the Blast as well. You wouldn't have thought. No, you wouldn't think um, so. And it's also you, we just, a major we don't, competition. We don't know these things at the start. Well, I, I think we can assume that, though, can't we? Um, well, uh, if you're a T20 special, if you're a pure T20 specialist and all you do is T20, then I don't see why you couldn't play in both competitions. The timing's right. As Harris is up to the stump, bowling to Overton, who's pushed him into the leg side for one. It's full and straight. Um, part, of, part of it is obviously bringing in these overseas to bring in the fans. If the T20 bars, there's no point bringing in the overseas because they're not going to bring in more fans. The more fans are going to go to the new competition. The fans that are going to come in for this are the ones who want to support Bear County, their players. Charles Dagnall tweeted me on it as well about the only having three, not four overseas. Um, he said, uh, you'll most likely get them for the whole competition as well, rather than the chopping and changing there is now. Well, that's absolutely true. So you'll have the yeah, identity of those teams. That's, uh, you know, it was the classic example two years ago where Somerset signed... Gale for four games. He scored 100 mm. in one of them. One of them was rained off. No, not a single ball of it was seen by anyone but the 7,000 people who were in the ground. It, yeah. just, it just showed that it, it made, un unfortunately, it made the Blast all look a little bit Mickey Mouse because yeah. we had, they got this brilliant player in Somerset had done so well and then no one saw any of anything that happened. Helm begins the new over. 151 for 70 bowls and this is driven away only as far as point by Overton, um, from a Derbyshire fan on a Nottingham-based team to a Nottinghamshire fan, Rob McGregor. I'm a Notts fan and am unlikely to attend a Nottingham City-based 2020 game, to be honest. Um, but, that, but again, that just goes back to the, potentially there is room for the T20 Blast then. If, But it's got to be... Uh, uh, the T20 Blast is going to have to go back to the 2020 Cup model. Uh, of being a shorter regional competition knock, uh, and a group competition then going to the finals day knockout. I just don't... I, 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 as someone who hasn't got a great allegiance to I'll bet you Tom Helms coming in. He's past the umpire now. Bowls and... Uh, that's bowled him! Off stump out of the ground. Lovely ball which uh, has Overton tentatively forwards uh, but misses it. He hangs his head backwards because, uh, well, he hasn't swung his arms this morning like he did last night. It's probably frustrated now that he wasn't able to make a big contribution again this morning. Three sixes uh, for Overton in his 28. But the eighth wicket falls with the MCC on 151. Three sixes and no fours, I notice. Yes. Um, sorry, what I was just saying was that uh, as someone who doesn't have... I'm not a county member. I don't have a deep attachment to any county. I love the county game. But I don't... I just, I just see it as a new cricket competition. I find... You know, it turns up and I'll go and watch cricket. It's, it's cricket. I don't, I, I wouldn't go, car. I like going and watch it, watching Middlesex at Lords, but I'll, I'll never ever go and watch anyone else play at Lords, another team. I, I can't, can't, I can't yeah, quite I, get I my think, head around I that. Think, I think because of the fears that county fans have for what it means for their game, i.e., will there still be Middlesex, Surrey? Will there still be um, Lancashire, Yorkshire? Will there still, you know, if, if the T20 blast falls so far behind that in the end it becomes a nonsense still having the T20 blast, I think there's enough there to work with for the counties that they can still have the T20 blasts. Yep, but I it's got to be treated properly and not exhausted as it has been at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a second-class competition. It's going to be, mm. the, the theory is, it's a second, second level. Um, yeah. It's, the problem is, as I've said, I, I, I wouldn't have gone down this route. I would have gone two, <laughs> two divisions. But yeah. uh, they... I, I just want, once it starts as a cricket fan, I'm going to be someone who, who, who is getting behind it. I'll be there on the, at the first game. I'll be really excited by it. It's a long time away, um, but it's just it's, it feels it's such a it is it is sad, obviously, that people feel threatened by it. Helm to Leach, the left hand of the new batsman. He uh, has a little waft at that one outside of the off stump. Through it goes to Simpson. Um, Ad says, where do the England players fit into this? Well, the Test players won't. The T20 specialists will. Um, they'll be in the new one. And depending on availability, you know, availability they'll, whether they're in the drop blast. In for a game of the blast. The, no, the, I'm talking about the Test players. Tests yeah, are obviously going to be happening they might, it. Mm. They'll drop in for a game or two, I would think. Well, it depends, because you're not going to drop in for a game or two probably before a Test series starts, are you? Because you're not going to mix up the... Well, they, they drop in. Because that's one thing they, that they players... They do that in the blast, though. But players have told us that a lot, that they do not like, as here comes Helmy Bowles to Leach, and this is played into the offside. There's no run, 151. 
for eight to the MCC. They do not like mixing up red and white ball cricket. No, and that's don't. one thing that this whole strategy is supposed to eliminate. You have the block of championship, then a block of 2020 blast, then a block of Royal London, and then a final block of championship with the new 2020 competition sitting in the evenings above the Royal London, um, which at the same time you're likely to have test cricket played. Again, I mean, there's, there's, there's no scheduling done. But that's the, that's the best understanding that everybody has but worked from... If there's, if there's two weeks between a test match. Here's a short one. It's pulled up into the air by Leach, and this will be the end of the MCC innings. He's gone. Caught at cover. 151 for nine, and that is all out because Liam Plunkett cannot bat because of a uh, calf strain. So uh, let's just wrap up this innings before uh, we've got a good 10 minutes now to <laughs> really get our teeth into it. Um, the tweets and more of the conversation. Uh, we will have Angus Fraser up with us at 12 o'clock, but um, as I'm sure you've heard by all the reports that you've listened to, the counties are un under strict instructions at the moment. No comments, they've been told uh, at this stage um, as to what it all means um, because as you say we don't quite clearly know exactly what it means but we have a good idea um, but the counties aren't, aren't, aren't allowed to comment on that just yet and the votes still got to take place but it's understood that that will now be a formality um, because enough counties are on board um, to pass it through so um, the MCC here let's wrap up this card and then we'll turn our attention back to the new T T20 talk um, Marlborough Cricket Club all outs for 151 uh, so that's a lead of 304, so not too much damage this morning for Middlesex. 305 to chase, so they've just got a bad time in this game. But we, ha we did see indications this morning that the pitch um, is a little bit up and down. Indentations uh, is the suspicion from the players that's causing the uh, indifferent bounce. So Crane was left three not out, and at the last to go, Leach caught Gubbins off the bowling of Helm for a fourth ball duck. Uh, three for 30 for Helm from 11.5. He's been impressive in this match. He picked up two for 46 in the first innings. Um, wasn't the pick of the bowlers in terms of his return there or his economy, but just the general feel of Helm. He looks like mm. he really is made to go on, as Stephen Finn said um, yesterday. He repeated it, didn't he? You know, this guy's made to play for England. Um, you just so often, you just don't hear that anymore uh, from players putting that kind of uh, praise onto young players' shoulders. So, uh, yes, it was a tricky start against the innings. 23 for two, the MCC found themselves with Lees. LBW to Podmore for nine. Also, LBW to Podmore for a duck. Um, Lithe opening the innings, held it together for the most part. He made 42 before he was caught helm off the bowling of Patel. Uh, ben Duckett, um, a very brief cameo in this innings, having made a 50 in the first. He was caught and bowled Harris for 13 uh, from 14 deliveries, two fours. Uh, Clark, unable to follow up the heroics, the top score of 89 in the first innings. He was bowled by Harris for two. Uh, ben Cox, LBW to Podmore for 17. Uh, Lewis Gregory held Middlesex up last evening because there was a chance for Middlesex to really rattle through them last night and keep that well below 300, the score. But he made 32 uh, before he was bowled by Helm. And then Overton this morning uh, with a brief addition to uh, his overnight score. He was gone for 28 before he was bowled by Helm. Uh, Mason Crane not out on three and Lord Leach. Uh, the last to go there caught by... Uh, Nick Gubbins, I don't think I've got the up-to-date um, figures in front of me. I can tell you that Helm was 3 for 30 from 11.5, bowling mm. figures that is, and Harris 2 for 34. Uh, yes, there they are now, uh, the full figures. Uh, Podmore, uh, 9 overs, 3 maidens, 3 for 25. Again, very impressive from him. He picked up 2 in the first innings uh, for the young seam bowler. Helm, 3 for 30, 11.5 overs. James Harris, 10 overs, uh, 2 for 34, following on from the 3 for in the first innings. For Harris, I think he'll be pretty pleased with the way it was um, coming out here at uh, here in Abu Dhabi uh, after a difficult year last year. Uh, James Franklin, number 25 from four in the MCC second innings, and uh, just the seven overs for Ravi Patel, one for 32, uh, following on for his uh, three for 83 in the uh, in the first innings. So uh, yeah, just over 300 to the chase. You're listening to BBC Radio London and Five Live Sports Extra. Will McPherson, the uh, young cricket writer of 2016, is alongside myself, Kevin Hand. Um, and um, this gives us a clear break for a few <laughs> minutes to, to go further in, into the conversation. Indeed. Um, lots and lots of tweets, which I'll try and get through. Um, as I say, we, we've seen it from both sides of the coin there in... in in not, in a, for a Nottingham Bay side, neither Derbyshire nor Nottinghamshire fans, fans want both to, both yeah. saying that they uh, they'll attend, um, and understandable. Um, and 
plenty of messages. We've just discussed the uh, Royal London One Day Cup. Derek Payne, uh, little incentive for existing Royal London One Day Cup and T20 sponsors to renew for second-rate competitions. Well, that's what will have to come down in the shake-up, and there are ramifications for Middlesex as well um, in a unique position that they are where they play at Lords and the MCC pay Middlesex to play at Lords, and then they take all the gate receipts, the uh, you know so on and so forth. They look after the marketing. All of these deals, deals will have to be renegotiated. And the, I mean, that's why, quite crucially, one thing I can talk about with Angus Fraser when he comes up is the 2020 blast. And clearly, they've recruited in uh, Daniel Vittori. There's still three years to go. Nobody's going to give, give up on the blast. They're going to try and win the blast in the meantime. But you know, there is a long-term strategy that. 2020 cricket is very, very important now to counties, and they're not going to give up on the T20 blast themselves. They'll still be making plans to improve in that competition. What I will say is that, as you've just said, there's three more years of a blast mm. uh, before the new competition comes in, and there's, that means... <laughs> and, and the county is going to want to win it. Well, if you if you feel this strongly, then go vote with your feet. Go I show how mm. how much you support the T20 Blast and go along and watch. Yeah. Which, they, which, which to be fair, they have been. The argument, the, 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 well, the answer is, well, we have. We've been going because the the increase we're hearing year upon year in gate figures for the Blast. Exactly. So the, the, the onus is perhaps on the county to make sure that they get this T20 model right. My feeling is, my instinct is, they've got to go back to the T20, the, the 2020 Cup model um, of a north south. East and Midlands division, um, and a shorter competition. What was it? Four home games. We were discussing it overnight, weren't we? So for Middlesex, potentially three home games at Lords, the Thursday night fixtures, mm. Essex, Surrey, um, and Kent. So the big pull, and then another played at a, at a, at an outgrounds potentially, where you know whether it's kids for a quid or something on a Saturday afternoon mm. for Middlesex at Uxbridge, trying to get five thousand inside Uxbridge to watch, which is a healthy return. You know, the five thousand is the same gate that you have at Taunton. So um, you know, if you can pack it out, then again, for sponsorship and TV deals, if you have got 5,000 coming into Uxbridge and you are still able to get a good number in at Lords, then that's that's for the counties to renegotiate. So there's an onus on the counties now to make sure in the next three years that the Blast is continues to be a success and continues to get people coming through the gates. What the Blast has been doing is it's been getting people through the gates, but what the ECB feel is that it's the wrong people who are coming through the gates. So I said it yesterday, I'll say it again, the average age at Bla at, across the Blast is 40 set, between 47 and 48. Mm. Uh, and only 13% of the people who go and watch the Blast are under 16. And that's partly because it costs so much for an under 16 to go. Whereas in the Australian Big Bash, it costs about, uh, well, it's five, $5 for an under 16. So it's about uh, three pounds, two pounds 80 or something. The pounds obviously plummeting. So um, <laughs> that's changing regularly. But it's, uh, you know, it, it, that's, that's the feeling that the wrong people, that while well, attendances might be rising by however much at, at year on year, which is just great. They're, they're not cracking kids. Well, they're, that, they're yeah. not finding and, kids. And just to throw in three or four more uh, tweets, Steve Milner, um, as a Yorkshireman from Barnsley, you will not find me supporting Leeds. They're not going to be called Leeds, though, so you don't need to worry about no, that. No, but it is going to be. But it's it going to be team be... based at Leeds, which is exactly what Yorkshire are. Yeah, yeah, but they're representing the county, aren't they? Um, I suppose yeah. you can say they're representing the region. When have they changed the, the flight path, by know, the way? Yeah. <laughs> That's extraordinary. They're, they're going to be called something like the White yeah. Roses. Yeah. Um, or the White Rose Warriors. But, uh, I mean, or Steve does add, uh, let me finish. Uh, although I, I, I would welcome a new Big Bash style competition, just not keen on the City style branding. Well, we don't it's necessarily not know that style, it, it's, yeah. not, it, it's, it's emphatically not, they're not going to be called Leeds. Mm. We're 100% well, certain yeah, of that. Yeah. That's but one that, of the new things. But, we but know. equally, they may not be called it, but that's key in the branding that people don't associate it as, sure. as, as that's what it is. But I think people are. Uh, people are like, sort of not reading the small print if they think mm. it's going to be Leeds. They, they need to. Yeah, it's not but you, you understand the sentiment. It's not going to be Not Nottingham. No, but you understand the sentiment. Um, I do. And that's key to the branding when they do brand it, that, um, that they don't do it that way. Let me just uh, throw in another one. Matt uh, says, Gloucestershire member, won't be watching Bristol, what, uh, West, whatever it's called. Mind you, I am not the target audience. Um, and, you know, that's exactly the point, really, isn't it, of this new competition. Can they break that new market? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that, they've got three years to get this How right. do they do it? They, How do they break the new market? They, well? they, um, they need on, it on, you, could, you have to answer the whole question right now. How do they do it? <laughs> they, they need it to be uh, free to view. Mm. They, they need, the problem, one of the problems with the Blast is, the first, you, you don't just stumble across the Blast. Yeah. You need to have Sky. You need to pay a shed load to have Sky. And then you need to watch it, and it needs to be... You need to feel it's a good enough product to go and watch, whereas what's happened in Australia is everyone tunes in every single night of the summer on Channel 10, which is a, a free channel. Everyone has it. And they all see this competition and they go, oh, God, 
I'll go and watch that. And then yeah. they look it up and they go, geez, I can go for 20 bucks. It's 12 quid yeah. as an adult. It's five bucks, two pounds something as a kid. And it's, it's totally accessible. The ECB have three years to get this right. And if they cannot get that right in three years, mm. it's, it, 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 you know, it, yeah. the mind boggles I mean, I, they can't I, do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's been so long in the making, hasn't it? And that's one of the concerns that we know really... <laughs> You know, you're voting on something that you're not really clear what the answer is to. Mm. Um, uh, that's slightly a concern. I mean, Echo, <laughs> I think Mark's wrote about it, didn't he? There's echoes of, the, Vic, of Vic, a wider, a wider um, issue here. Vic's written, again, very nicely today. He's a, a piece on The Guardian, which I'd encourage you to go and have a look at. Uh, but he's, he's got a killer payoff in his, line, in his piece today. And he says it worked in Australia because they didn't have an existing... Uh, fan base for domestic cricket. Mm. Nobody's ever really mm. gone and watched Sheffield Shield cricket. Whereas mm. in England, we've got this, you know, we get really quite healthy crowds at County Championship. And if you don't believe, you know, the yeah, one man and, and his uh, dog thing is a cliche, yeah. but really for, for, for something that takes place when people are working and, you know, it's an awkward time and it's quite a, quite a big commitment. We do get really good crowds for, for Championship, I think. You know, you'd see, you'd particularly at Lords, a couple of thousand every day. The Oval's the same. I mean, some are worse attended than others, of course, but... Generally, championships tend to be pretty strong. They never had that in. Uh, they never had that in in, in Australia. Addy, Addy, Addy follows up. He says, "I can't see the England players playing personally. I hope I'm wrong. I, they don't do it for the big bash either. So ECB probably the same thinking. Um, as you say, potentially there's drop in. But I, I'd, I'd agree. I think the Test players won't drop in. Um, I mean, maybe there's a." It's the old game, because of course, Roots and Stokes, if you want to really push your competition, you're going to want those guys playing. But that's, that's all going to come out in the scheduling, isn't it? Mm. Uh, Football Scout follows up. Uh, I've yet to speak to a cricket fan who thinks it's a good idea. The success of Big Bash, Big Bash is as much about the commentary teams. And I have to say, one of the things that I've always enjoyed <laughs> has been the coverage. Uh, but that is, that is all part of the branding that yeah. they've got to work on. I mean, don't worry, the BBC will have that sorted. We've got that sorted. Middlesex's second innings is starting. Lewis Gregory's running into Nick Govins, taking first strike. And he's driven that through the covers. He's going to get at least one, two, three, four they're going to get. That's a beautiful shot from Nick Govins. Just he's 301 more to win. <laughs> Indeed. The target is 305. Four of them are on the board, and that's beautifully played. Um, I've, I've had a tweet from, from Leslie. She says, take a look at Surrey cricket prices for kids at T20 Blast, plus season tickets for adults. Great value. I would disagree. I've paid to go and watch Surrey on a Friday night in the yep. T20 Blast, paid 30 quid, yep. which is more than twice as much as it cost in Australia. And it's going to be that here comes Gregory again. Up to wicket to Bodder Gubbins. That's it. Swinging into the left hander, and he's defended that well. He's already got some movement though, Gregory. Well, well played by Gubbins. I, I personally don't think it's great value, and I don't think there are that many kids there. I, anecdotally, that is. I, the, the crowd at Surrey Cricket on a Friday night is. It, it's adult. Mm. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's adult and it's boozy, and, and yeah. I think that that is the story of the whole blast for me. Yeah. Um, possibly will continue to be. I, th I don't think you're going to eliminate that boozy element of the T20 blast, i.e. or that the other one becomes a kids event. I can't imagine that because Thursday night at Lords is when they go in. So mm. much like Middlesex will want to play Thursday night at Lords in the T20 blast, so this new competition, it, should it be staged at Lords, which you imagine it will be, the number one ground, um, HQ, there'll be matches there surely, then they'll, they'll be looking to play Thursday night as well. Gregory's going around the wicket to Gubbins. He's got three slips, and he's, that one's gone down the leg side, and Ben Cox has done well to stop that. That's swung across the left-hander, and there's no run. Um, Rob McGregor adds, the population concentration of Australia um, makes the, B -B, uh, the Big Bash a um, much different beast to anything that we can have here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We, we discussed this yesterday. 60% of uh, the Australian population live in the six cities that are covered by the BBL. But this is where this is where we're, the. Sorry, we're, we're going to have eight cities, or sorry, seven cities, as Gregory comes in again to Gubbins, and he's flicked that through the leg side, and he's going to get four. It's an in-swinging delivery to the leg left-hander, or is it going to just hold up on the outfield? There's going to be a race for the fielder, and it's made it to the boundary. Sec Gubbins' second boundary, eight for none, chasing 305 Middlesex. Um, Rob continues. I think it's tr uh, the tribal elements, not my team, and I have a connection, uh, and I have a con uh, connection to them as such. That'll be s uh, significant for many existing fans, and I guess that's the hope that the T20 Blast, the, the counties mustn't lose faith in the T20 Blast. That you know the history, the century, uh, uh, and more of history of the counties will still bring in those fan fans to the T20 Blast. 
Here comes Gregory again. Eight for nine. He's going round the wicket to Gubbins. He's just left that alone outside off stump. And to clarify, says the idea, uh, just for example sake, someone like Lum being pulled out of the Knots team for this new competition is somewhat jarring too. Um, that, well, he won't be pulled out of the T20 Blast. He will be pulled out of the Royal London One Day Cup. So the cream of the white ball players, particularly 2020 specialists, will go straight from the Royal London teams and be put into the T20 competition. Indeed. Gregory is at the top of his mark. He's running up round the wicket to the last ball of the first over of Middlesex's chase. And Govins has just turned that to square leg when there's no run. Eight for none after one over. They're chasing 305. Will Robinson's been in touch. He says, hands on hearts, guys. <laughs> Big question. Yeah. Do you really have faith in the ECB to get this new format right? Kev? Yeah, yes. Um, what, my, one of my biggest concerns in... Um, worrying about this new competition was not for the new competition but for the counties and for the T20 blast I think by the reaction that you see a lot from the count uh, from a lot of the county members uh, those that are taking the time to contact us they're still going to go to the T20 blast as long as it's not devalued too much um, now it will have its own separate block as you say there's no reason why you can't recruit in a T20 specialist and a top quality T20 specialist for the blast but the biggest names are going to be paid the biggest money in the other competition. So there's a lot of competition pay-wise to get those guys to come over and play that competition. And, of course, our summer is now a busy summer around the world with the IPL, um, the CPL. Here comes the opening over from Overton, who is into bowl to Sam Robson. His first ball faced. It's left alone outside of the off stump. And through it goes to the keeper. Yeah, I Three think, I think that's a good point. I think um, my, my worry isn't so much about the new competition I think it'd probably be great cricket um, but what the fear is what it means for the counties as you say Overton bowls outside the off stump that's left alone wider delivery three slips points cover mid off mid on mid wicket and long leg I've had a Leslie's been in touch again mm. uh, it was Leslie who said that Surrey's prices are brilliant yep. for T20 and I sort of knocked her back and she's she's correcting me she says I did say season tickets will £144 for all home T20 and 50 over games but the point is we need we, that's a whole commitment to a season mm. we need someone to dabble turn up for one game and then get hooked over some bowls and that's edged along the floor down to the vacant third man a thick outside edge by Robson pushing forward uh, and the first boundary for him so he is off the mark and Middlesex are eight without loss uh, why is uh, Gubbins no no sorry they're 12 without loss Gubbins is on eight and Robson <laughs> is on not that, that scoreboard is going to haunt me <laughs> that scoreboard will haunt me for the rest of my career you need a nice clear Lord eight, scoreboard yeah, back, exactly. don't you? eight naught three nine uh, yeah it's impossible um yeah, that, uh, these are the things that they're going to have to divide up. Whether One thing I'm not clear on is just how you have a clear strategy between the two. Let's hear Overton bowls, and it's edged again by Robson, out of reach of third slip. A uh, cry of anguish from Overton, and uh, that is four down to third man. Um, it didn't carry, but... Um, he was caught at third he... slip in the first innings, wasn't he, Robson? Was it Lees to Lees, catch? third yeah. slip, yeah. Um, but, I'm not sure it would have carried to a fourth slip, would it? No. Um, but um, nonetheless, a victory for I think the bowler. Well, the point I was just trying to make Morally. there is I don't know why uh, anyone would look at the blast and go, oh, I'm just going to turn up to that. Mm. Here's Overton, bowls down the leg side. It's when, you, the when you can't find it, and then it costs 25 quid to go and watch. I, I, if I was, I wouldn't, you know, to take a sport that I'm not terribly interested in. I don't know. Basketball, I've never had any interest in. I wouldn't go, oh, you know what? 25 quid a ticket, I'll just go and watch um, a basketball team that are based near my house. No, I wouldn't do that. It's got yeah. to be cheap. It's got to be accessible. Yeah. In comes Overton, and this ball's worked through square leg uh, by Robson. Yeah, that's one of his key scoring areas, isn't it? Talk about the hard, fast tracks he grew up on. He's really good <laughs> at working the ball. The timing's usually immaculate through square leg. He picks mm. up a couple there. Uh, end of Overton's over. 20 without loss. And Robson has moved to 10 as Gubbins will have strike on 8. It's a cracking start by Middlesex. There are uh, four boundaries already. Plus that two for Robson there. It's just it's one of his trademark strokes. He's, he's an excellent player, Sam Robson, especially given he's sort of a bit like Alistair Cook. He's, it was an economy of stroke play when it, when it comes to Robson. He doesn't have, he doesn't have a vast number of strokes, but um, the ones he does have, the flick through mid-wicket, the cut... 
and recover drive are uh, very effective for him. Gregory is just about to start a new over. He's at the top of his mark. He's going round the wicket to Gubbins again. He'll no doubt be trying to angle it into his pads. And there's a, there's a mid wicket quite close in as Gregory comes in. And that's Gubbins forward defending that. And I think it's just held up a little bit that because it's got him. He's defended it high on the bat. There's no run. Uh, Jonathan in Malta says, I've been a member of Surrey since 1972 and I will not go anywhere near this pathetic dumbed down franchise rubbish. Again, franchise is a word for a while a word. Yeah, that we've been told to take out. But again, the sentiments is, we understand. Uh, Laura says, lots of people saying the same. There's no consideration for how important your county is to cricket fans. Uh, that, that, that depends just how relevant the blast can remain to be. Here's Gregory round the wicket. Govins to forward defending outside of stump. And the Royal London Cup because the relevance of that one is probably the one that will be hurt the most in terms of those players being removed. The relevance of the 2020 will be hurt the most in terms of it will be the second competition. Even though you'll still have your players as you would, um, they won't be affected. Um, Genuine question, will 50 overs of cricket still be playing? Be, well, it, being this is the in, point. In that, you know, there are a lot of people who are very, very upset about the fact that the list A is the one that's going to suffer the most in terms of it's going to become a second 11 competition. The one thing I'd say to that is there is hope for the Royal London. Gregory's in again to Govins around the wicket. And he's forward prodding at that and he's mm. just missed it outside off stump there was a couple of arms in the air in the cordon as, as Ben Cox took it cleanly but there was, uh, there was no edge and I wonder will there be any release of players they're 15 man squads aren't they so it doesn't actually sound that many to me 15. three uh, from eight teams so three overseas 12 players then brought together whether it is from their region or whether it's some sort of pick I think it's in another be, way well no but one of the things i think they're planning is for there to be a draft or an auction yeah, style auction. situation which will actually add to the drama yes, in theory yeah, it's yeah. marketable that event as gregory comes in again to gubbins and he's flipped that through square leg he's going to get two here the man at fine legs coming round. it was a little bit uppish for a moment but there was no one there to take the catch so over not just this morning but over a long period of time i mean there's a lot of reaction to the t20 itself this morning but over for, for a long period of time now people have been getting in contact saying this is you know, disgraceful because of the list A. You know, you think of the Sunday League, how popular it was. Um, the 40 over competition sat nicely, even in recent years on the on a Sunday afternoon. So the Royal London now is going to be in a block, um, but it will still have a great relevance for the players. The Royal London, because if you're not in that T20, then you can make the step from the Royal London to the T20. Here's Gregory coming into Gubbins. He's in behind it firmly, defending up to mid on. And also, you qualify as things stand at the moment for the. Uh, through the MVP system for the North v South. That may have to be uh, have a rethink because otherwise the North v South might not be as high a quality if all of the top white ball players well, the in the North, country... The North v South as well is, is, is on, the three year. on the table till 2019 yeah. and this all starts in and 2020. So, so, I mean, but knows? I think it's crucial for the Royal London Blast... Uh, the Royal <laughs> London One Day Cup, that um, the North v South does continue beyond then to, to make it relevant. Mm. You know, you, you take it seriously because you'll be in the North v South. Here's Gregory, who played in that Royal, uh, sort of that North v South series. He's been driven by Gubbins again through cover, and he's going to get four more Gubbins. He's playing nicely here. That was very full outside off some, and that's four runs. The score is. 24 for none at the end of the third over. And we think it was a su success, the North v South, and it's mm. got lots of legs in it. Um, so, you know, the next couple of years, it's something that, that it didn't even look as though it need, needed that much fine tuning. Perhaps there were one or two. Uh, the MVP thing will be uh, f focused on, I'm sure of it. Um, but equally, I, I think it's very important, especially now for List A cricket in, in England, that um, they do have that pathway. If you're an MVP in the Royal London One Day Cup, that you, maybe it won't be to the same numbers, um, but that you do qualify from that for the North East. As the, as the field of swap ends here at the end of the over, Rob dinsey has been in touch. He's sent me two tweets. He says, Somerset fan here. My club will lose out on a micro level from this, no doubt. But the next generation argument is important. Questions remain over whether the ECB could organise a round of drinks in a brewery. But fingers crossed it's a huge success. And I, I, I think that I, I really respect that attitude from Rob because mm. he's a county fan who's, who's, um, who's ground isn't going to get a team. They might get one game for the Western side, but they're largely going to be re re based out of Cardiff. Four slips in place now for Sam Robson. As Overton's in, beginning his second over, it's outside the off stump and left alone. Now uh, they've got the covers on offer to Robson. I th and I, th I think the, the point I'd make is that Rob, while, while, while Rob might, you know, Rob might support Somerset, who knows who his, who his kids will support, you know, whether they'll support the t a team they see on TV and then, all these things. So, and you know, we've had lots of people in touch about, oh, I'd never go near that team. But I just, 
I wonder when it starts, whether people will still be the same. As Overton comes in, he's been turned into the leg side by Robson. We're going to run one. That's good fielding at square leg. And there's one run. Um, Don Topley. Good afternoon to you. Good morning in the UK. Uh, one thing I've not heard discussed, 18 teams dilute the product of a T20. Uh, the top eight make the quarterfinal, means 10 teams are infinite poor side, uh, poorer ability. Uh, having the best, playing the better players with top overseas means much better product, surely. It will be. Uh, our T20 wasn't great. Uh, no, it wasn't great. And, uh, uh, but, but the feeling it wasn't great was because, again, it was underfunded, it was mismanaged. Um, I think I, I do. Well, the, the interesting thing is, I think um, I think 18 teams is <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? Mm. It makes it difficult to follow. Overton, right arm over he bowls and onto the pads. This is worked towards uh, quite an advanced backward square leg there, mm. but uh, no run. Um, but, so just looking for that uppish little turn around the corner from Gubbins. But talk to um, players who've played in the BBL, for instance, from England, and they'll say, well, actually, the quality isn't that dissimilar. Mm. But what is dissimilar is the amount of pressure they feel playing each game. Each one feels like it's really important because you've only got eight each to get through to that final series. Everything matters, whereas you can coast a bit when you've got 14. Overton, bowls, and this ball's pushed into the onside. No run for uh, Gubbins. Uh, Don, Don Topley, um, Essex commentator and Hampshire. Um, follower as well now with Reese's move down there. It says, less county cricket is a plus. Um, players are tired, um, the bowlers are worn out, and I know 70,000 members, a very small number, he says, are unhappy. You, well, you wouldn't even fill Wembley, the, big, the football stadium, with a number of county members we have. Forward goes Gubbins to uh, Overton, back up the track to the bowler. Uh, and that's the point of the new competition, isn't it? That's the, pro, that's the other side of it, is the pro argument. The biggest concern is the... Um, you know, this protection of the counties as well. Um, because you don't want to lose all of that history. Um, no. you, as a T20 competition, you want the Blast to do well and list a cricket in this country still to do well. Overton, or well, not in this country, but in, <laughs> in the UK, here's Overton Bowles and forward goes Gubbins pushing up some mid-off. I've had another really good contribution here from Rob Dinty, who's saying he's a Somerset fan who's, who's actually quite keen on the new competition a minute ago. He said, to follow up, I took my fiance to a Western Storm Kia Super League game last summer in Bristol. She'd never been to cricket before and had a great time. I'm now going to, to some of the Women's World Cup games this summer. This is what the new tournament needs to do. And I think Rob's exactly right. Mm -hmm. He's nailed it. Uh, Laura says, um, it's not like we're, uh, who uh, tweeted a moment ago, it's not like we're being old fashioned. It just, just doesn't make sense for cricket here. Th that's why I think the bigger gamble is on the new competition, isn't it? The only thing, how much do you devalue the 2020 blast in the meantime um, for those outside of the uh, the members uh, and the regular attenders, those that do come in on the Thursday night to fill lords? Gregory is at the top of his mark. At the start of a new over, it's 25 for none. I think this is the first time he's going to be bowling to Sam Robson. He's over the wicket, and that's swinging, and he's defended it forward. He's forward defending, and that's well played into the offside. There is no run. Um, Rob McGregor again, alienating existing fans means you need enough new fans to replace them and increase attendances. That is tough. Well, that's the crux of it, isn't it, for the new competition? Um, that's what they have to crack. They've got to find a way to do it. They've got three years, as you say, to work out how they're going to uh, get people coming through in their droves to watch uh, these new eight teams. In comes Gregory again. Four slips for Robson. It's up to the stumps, and he's just leaving that alone, and the keeper does the work. No run. Um... Matt Nichols has been in touch, says, disagree with Don Topley. Standard is comfortably as good as the IPL and the BBL. Mm. They look better because of the pitches. Uh, might be true, but one of the reasons the pitches uh, are dodgy in the T20, T20 Blasts is because we have 14 games. Mm. Too much is asked of the pitches. They become sluggish and tired, and the cricket suffers. The weather also doesn't help, <laughs> which is uh, an, an inherent advantage of Australians as an Australian there, Sam Robson, or Australian-born Sam Robson, leaves Gregory alone outside his off-stump. Uh, Laura, county teams should be seen as a unique selling point to cricket here that BBL, IPL doesn't have. Um, is it really going to work? I really don't think they've thought it through, but we shall see. Um, I'd sooner uh, go to watch Middlesex any day. Um, Big news, actually, just quickly. 
on county cricket news. Leeds Council have brokered a deal to save Headingley stand development and test cricket and at the ground. Great news. In comes Gregory again to Robson. He's cut that hard. He was talking a moment ago about how he's got just a few shots, but he plays them all very well, and that's, that's one of them. He's behind point. There's four runs. Well played. 29 without loss. Chris Reed's going to retire as well at the end of the year. More big county news. An institution. That's sad, 20, but very good news 20, about... 20 seasons. Yeah, uh, but very good news about Headingley. Um, excellent news. Um, you know, the whole structure of county cricket is certainly in the spotlights, isn't it? And, uh, mm. Gregory is at the top of his mark again. He's got two balls left of this over. He's coming into Robson. He's just hit him for four. Up to the start. And that's going to be one there. He's just flicked back to the man at mid on. They've scampered through. Looks like it's Ben Duckett there at mid on. He's been fielding at first slip rather a lot. Oh, no, it's not Ben Duckett. It's uh, Jack Leach. One run, anyway. 30 for none. 305 the target mm. for Middlesex. They didn't lose all last year. They would not be a happy bunch to lose this game. Even if it doesn't matter directly for the county championship. Um, uh, Laura has followed up. I first got into cricket by watching test cricket on free-to-air telly. It's the accessibility, not the format, that's important. Well, we all, that's, I mean, that, so that, many that of us. That certainly is agreed. Um, the will the T20 the new T20 be the right product to be on free to air. Here's Gregory, last ball of the over to Gubbins this time. He's forward defending very firmly, 30 without loss after five overs. It, um, you know, T20 does seem to be a strong way forward for bringing in kids, because of course we all used to play T20 as kids in the, on, on an evening. It just wasn't this, it wasn't, it wasn't in fours and sixes, yeah. yeah. Um, so undoubtedly that will be one of the best things to come out of it. The, the argument is, did it have to be this way to put cricket back on free-to-air television? Could there have been a way of putting the NatWest on? But again, as you say, the NatWest didn't work. There's that Chinook that we two, two of them, yes. Oh, yeah, that we heard yesterday. We didn't spot them yesterday. You were right there. Your helicopter identification is very impressive. Double blade, yeah. yeah. Overton's in, bowls to Robson, and oh. lifts that one past the edge. It's tricky out there again, isn't it? There is seam movement. Uh, there is bounce. We've seen one or two keep low. A little bit of swing. We are into the sixth over. 30 without loss, Middlesex. Chasing 305. We're on day three here of the Champions match in Abu Dhabi. Five live sports extra. And BBC Radio London together for this one. Indeed. If you want to get in contact with us, it is at Kevin Hand BBC at Willis underscore Mac P. This ball's left alone by Robson outside of the off stump. No, it's great to hear from so many people, and it, it shows how much uh, is going on on either side of a debate, doesn't it? It's, uh, it is uh, certainly inflaming passions. Yeah. You can see why. Thank you for all of the tweets. I've not got through even half of them yet, but I'll try <laughs> and filter through a few more, and obviously it's leading into further debates between those on Twitter, so I won't read out the full extent. We'll just try and get the, uh, the gist of all the varying arguments. Overton is past the umpire, balls, and uh, so it was worked to mid-wicket by Robson. There's no run. Tony Mays uh, says, is the county silence bought? Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess the answer, really, uh, the, the answer is yes, in the sense that it's their paymasters that have said it at this stage. We will not comment on it. This on Angus Fraser, who will be joining us in just over five minutes. Um, but like all counties, um, he has been told quite strictly, no comments, as I have been told, obviously, by Middlesex. You know, if you can sit there and do a Paxman and Howard standoff uh, of trying to make him comment, but no comment's going to be the answer that will continue to come back. Uh, forward goes Robson, pushing up to mid-off. Off Overton. Tim Jenkinson says, uh, any talk about which broadcaster will be picking it up? Does free-to-air mean BT Sport on their low-bit rate freeview channel? I think um, this is a good question. BT Sport, I think look quite likely to get the rights because they have a very strong record of um, sharing. Mm -hmm. You putting... Over some bowls, and this is cuts by Robson. Back with a point. Four more. Putting bits 34, that of their, uh, the stuff that they have rights for on free-to-air TV. They have they've got the rights to the Ashes this winter. They've got the rights to all Australian cricket. And I think some uh, who are better versed in 
sports uh, rights and the like see that as a sort of dip of the toe into the market before coming in heavy at the next rights deal, which expires in 2019, mm. and going for you know the crown jewels. Um, here's a few more expansion points on it. Um, Daisy says, regarding the new T20 competition, surely more, surely money would have been better spent improving the current competition over the next five years. That's, again, for three years now, underfunded, mismanaged, the T20 blast. Here's a, a bouncer from Overton, ducking underneath it is Rob. Somebody left his back hanging slightly behind him, didn't he? He got uh, very low the down there, didn't he? He, he was did. almost on, uh, you know, sort of on his knees. Uh, 34 without loss, Gubbins. 14 and Robson 20. Uh, Theo Knott says, I am 23, I am the target demographic. Well, he, he is, but it's a new demographic. You're already a cricket fan. You, yeah, if you're I tweeting no us, intention. you're already a cricket fan, yeah, which means you're actually not the target mm, demographic. I have no intention of attending any of these games, especially as a Somerset resident. Um, yeah, so, it's be yeah, difficult it's, to get to. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, Matthew says, I thought they said significant free-to-air coverage. Eight games out of 36 is not significant. Um, I, I did think that as well, because then, you know, what eight games is it? Is it the is it Tuesday night fixtures uh, deliberately staged for the free-to-air um, to have their games? I mean, yeah, I, I wouldn't say. I'd agree mm. eight is not he significant, it's, but it's also said, eight more than we have now. Yeah, that's true. He says it's more like a taster. Uh, we'll still have yeah. to pay to follow the competition. Agree. Um, Liz Mitchell says cricket has been back on free-to-air TV with Channel 5 showing the Big Bash. Uh, did it engage new young players? And who had the rights? BT Sport. Mm. They, they did a deal with Channel 5 to get some of their product out on, uh, on free-to-air TV. We're going to see a change of bowling here. Lewis Gregory's bowled three, but his Somerset teammate Jack Leach is going to come into the track. So a couple of... Helmets are coming out and some shin guards going on. William Davis has some free-to-air cricket on TV at the moment. Uh, William in Galway says, Ireland versus Afghanistan on the TV and Kevin Hand, MCC Middlesex on the laptop. It's an audio-visual overload. Who needs T20? Said. Also, <laughs> who needs David Townsend? Because David Townsend is there commentating for the ICC at the moment on that game. Which, uh, yeah, pictures of that one. There's pictures of this one, of course, available as well. But... Uh, uh, well, he's got them both on, in fact, yeah. Uh, ah, but he doesn't say who he's listening to. He's got Ooh. both on, so it could be he's listening to DT, but well, tweeting us. If he's just tweeting to keep us, sweet. he must be, uh, he must be slightly thought, engaged so. in, the, uh, in what we're chatting about. Trevor Morris, a regular tweeter. Um, but most, and I, I do apologise to regular tweeters, because most of the ones I've read <laughs> out have not been regular tweeters. But, but, but um, you know, obviously this is a much wider debate now. Um, ECB are clear they don't care about current fans. The feeling is mutual. Well, that's going to be something which will come out in the wash, really, because how much is the T20 blast protected? How much is the Royal London One Day Cup looked after? Because that's the current fans. Um, well, to and be fair, the Royal London One Day Cup, there are not many current fans going to watch it. That's the, that's no, the but brutal equally, truth. There, but, very but equally, it's not looked it. after. In the, in the view of the current fans, the Royal London One Day Cup is not looked after. It's not played on good pitches. It's not scheduled well. Um, so, you know, when it was on a Sunday afternoon, Angus Fraser wrote a piece in the Middlesex programme um, when the... 40 over competition went back to 50 overs lamenting the loss of those Sunday afternoons at Lords when there were good crowds coming in to watch it and that's only a couple of seasons ago mm. Jack Leach is going to bowl over wicket I've just seen him warming up and he, he chucked a ball right handed which is interesting he's over the wicket to Nick Gubbins who's forward he's got a short leg and a first slip that's what threw you on his batting technique last night <laughs> indeed yeah that was neither was a reason that was um, embarrassing but that, that, that is quite a crucial point it's an angry tweet from Trevor Morris uh, and, and understandably, but that is crucial, cru crucial that the current fans are looked after because, you know, you would be daft to disenfranchise your... Leach is in again to Gubbins. He's driving this time up to mid-off. They're not going to take a run here. Leeds is feeling... I've got an angry tweet here as well. Is, Dave, it, is it against us? No, it's... Oh. it's um, and it's the other side of the argument. Yep. Dave Hansford's here. He says, vital that cricket evolves. County cricket following is not big enough. Cricket is a marginal sport. Evolve or die. Yeah, there's no doubt that it has to evolve, but it's how it evolves, isn't it? And I think that the T20 hasn't given the chance to evolve. Here's Leach, and Gubbins is down the track. It was a full toss, and he's just flicked it to Midon, who does the field, and they've won... They've run one, the not one run. The T20 <laughs> blast, that is, hasn't been given the chance to evolve. Um, it's been you know, left almost on the shelf while they've been trying to sort this out and get it through. Um, so there has been wasted time already to this point. Um, and, well, I guess where they've tried to evolve it as well, they've failed, i.e. extending it across the season. Leach is going to go round the wicket to Sam Robson. He's had an interesting message about Leach. He's coming in again. 
for defensive. But there are big failures from the T20 Blast um, in terms of the management and the funding, which surely they'll have learnt the lesson for. I just feel sorry for the Blast and the counties that they were almost the testing ground where it's been extended across the season, becoming the Friday nights. Here's Leach again. Robson's just pushing that to cover where Duckett fields. Will but Rose being in touch? He says, Leach always throws right-handed. Yeah, there we go. He bowls with his left. He's one of them. He's like a George Bailey who can chuck with both. Will. So even the MCC are glued to this debate <laughs> at the moment. Leach comes in again, round the wicket to Robson, who drives to, to mid-off, there's no run. They, of course, are one of the voters as well, the MCC, Middlesex and one the, the MCC. Yeah, they're, um, and, and, and the minor counties as well. Um, but the MCC and Middlesex both voting with uh, interests on Lords, so it'd be interesting to see if they'd voted the same way. Middlesex's stance to this stage, although we can get no comment from Middlesex now or any of the other counties, but their stance to this clay stage have been quite clear that they were against it, Middlesex. Mm. Um, and uh, they were against it as it was proposed um, to this stage, but obviously we'll have to wait a couple of weeks now until the vote is... Um, a show of hands happens. Yeah, until it's done. They've got, is it 23 days? 19, it's about 19, 20 days uh, for the votes, for you to place your votes. Um, but we understand that it's going to happen relative, i.e. they'll get the, no, the number of votes they're required quickly enough that it won't be a long, drawn-out process that we have to wait to hear the outcome of the vote. It's uh, pretty much assumed that it will go, go through on this occasion comfortably for the ECB. Here comes... Overton to Gubbins to begin the new over, and that's clipped through mid-wicket. Has it got the legs? Uh, it's a slow chase from mid-wicket, isn't it? Heading back, uh, they've taken two, and they'll settle on that. Gubbins is on to 17. Uh, I'm going to try and rattle through a few more tweets. We've got so many coming in. I don't know whether we should actually delay Angus Fraser from coming up because, um, well, in all seriousness, it's there's so many. He's coming, isn't it? That uh, he, he is. So uh, I wonder, I might text Fletch. Uh, let's see, can we see him down there, Gus? Can't see either of them. Both distinctive figures. Yes, um, but again, I think we'll be having this debate for much of the day, won't we? <laughs> um, Overton, bowls, and this is full, pushed up to mid-off. A dot ball. Uh, Ash Thorne says, one question um, that I didn't hear ask, uh, answered. Um, will the England players be available to play? It depends on the scheduling of Test cricket at the time. The 2020 players, of course, will be, but we understand Test cricket will play alongside it within the evenings, then the new T20 competition in the Royal London is what the counties will be doing at that stage. Good one from Katie Scott here, which we'll get to after mm. this. Uh, Mike Taylor says the uh, key question is who has told him not to comment? I assume he's talking about Angus Fraser as this ball's full and goes past the edge through to the keeper from Overton. And uh, drawn into that one, the left-hander. Uh, Overton left disappointed. Him, yeah, bold. they bowled well this morning. They're unlucky not to have a wicket, but Middlesex equally are batting quite well. The ECB have told the counties they are not allowed to comment at this stage, is what we have all been told. Uh, and it was on the BBC News, on BBC One last night, Dan Rowan, the sports editor of the BBC, in his piece. Uh, likewise, I think Tim Bresnan was, had commented, hasn't he? But that was obviously before the word went round. Do not, because players, uh, I've been told for Middlesex as well, are not allowed to comment. Players, players, just quickly, are, are, are very keen on the competition. As far well, as, absolutely, as, yeah. as far as I can see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here comes Overton, he bowls, and uh, this ball is left alone outside of the off stump by uh, Gubbins through to the keeper with great relish. Angus Fraser has just entered the commentary box. <laughs> um, Will, thanks for now. We will come back to uh, the huge number of messages that we have got this morning. Um, I can't remember another event that's got quite so many messages coming through from county members all across the country. Uh, it is a subject, I'm afraid, that the counties are unable to, are unable to comment on at this stage. That's their employees, including directors of cricket uh, and so on. As here is Overton Bowls, and this ball's eased to back or point. Uh, by Gubbins on 17. So, yes, uh, county officials, uh, players at the moment, told by the ECB they're not to comment at this stage while the voting is still to be done. So, uh, uh, as I said to listeners, Gus, we're not going to put us through a Paxman Howard situation of me uh, constantly throwing questions and you just saying no comment for five minutes. We're not allowed to comment, and that's the, that's the end of it. So, uh, cricket here today, let's begin with. Um, Middlesex have made a fine start after getting themselves into a bit of mess, which I'm sure will cheer you even more. <laughs> Good morning. Good afternoon. No comment on anything. Here's Overton. He bowls. This is pushed up by Gubbins so to mid-on. What the thought of spending the next day of my life with you is not something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> how, could it, how, could I, how could it be better spent? It could have been DT. It could have been DT. He's yeah. not here. He's, in a, he's, he's watching Mercer and Sterling and co playing for Ireland. Is he? Where's that? Um, in India, in India yeah. Um, so he's got the four-day game there to commentating for the ICC. On that one. Imagine the ICC and Paul Owing, David Townsend. Extraordinary decision by them. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. How are you? Um, you've had a yeah, busy few days. Uh, you know, obviously the things you can't talk about at the moment. Um, well, there's a lot going on, isn't there? And uh, I suppose every county is now taking their cons council, really, and sort of 
Watch this space, isn't it? Really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, slip and a short leg. Leach is left arm around the wicket. Uh, 37 without loss the score here. Uh, forward defensive from Robson into the offside. There is a T20 competition that I have been told I can talk to you about, and that's the blast. Daniel Vittori was here for Middlesex. And, yeah. uh, obviously, Middlesex at the moment, like all the other counties, will continue to take the T20 blast very, very seriously. We do, and it's, uh, I say, it's a good competition. And uh, someone like Daniel's only going to add to it. And uh, we're very keen. There's a lot of flight on this from Leach. It's pushed away into the offside, no run. Having sort of announced that he was going to come over and, uh, and be our 2020 coach to get him involved with the side, so that the first time he's not with us is at the back end of June, and he's got a week. But I think the three, three days he spent with us here was really beneficial just to familiarise himself. Leach bowls. This was just short of a length, pushed back by uh, Robson, watchfully played. And like most New Zealanders... He's a cracking bloke, mm. really good, solid, calm, just one of us, really, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just sort of fits in, and, 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 and he'll be a really good addition, and I think everybody's looking forward to working with him. Well, I don't think I know Yeah. everybody's looking forward to working with him. Leach, bowls, and this ball's turned to uh, square leg, and there's no one. He's already made a big impact by the sound of it, just in terms of the small, short conversations he's had so far with the players, uh, from what they tell me. Yeah, just checking in, getting to know people. I think, I mean, when we when we sat down and, and, and spoke to him for the first time, he had a pretty good idea of the squad. Leach to Robson, driven to cover. The players, what they were doing, and, and that excited him, the, the quality of player we had. And I suppose in 2020, that's something we've, we've felt within that we've n not been far away uh, and we've had the quality of players. We just haven't been able to put it all together. So hopefully... Here's uh, Leach Bowles, it's onto the pads, but a jet gas drifting down. It was an optimistic yelp, 37 without loss. But that is a key point, isn't it, that the T20 blast um, has grown and grown and grown in relevance. We've seen huge gates increasing for the T20 blast, and obviously it continues to be um, uh, of great import to Middlesex and of growing import because you've invested more and more money into the last couple of years with overseas like Brendan McCullum uh, and now with a specific overseas 2020 coach. Yeah, well, I say you've... It's like one of those things everybody says, oh, what are your priorities? And mm -hmm. your priorities, and it sounds glib, it's to win every game of cricket that you play. But, um, and but if sometimes we it's like, well, what, what's your favourite? It's like asking which one of your children you love the most. I mean, <laughs> you, want to, you, you want to do well in everything, yeah. don't you? So the fact that, I mean, and you would, have, you would say that we have, with, say, Chris Rogers mm -hmm. signing as our overseas player, yeah. and the, sort of the, the, the greater limitations that were in place then uh, for sort of bringing players in and out meant that you'd made your bet a little bit and that was more leaning towards four day cricket over to begins new over to uh, Gubbins this pushes back up the track to him uh, there's no run but again moving on from that Adam Vosge was with a slightly more mm. um, a, a white ball record mm. and uh, obviously uh, George Bailey middle of last mm. summer so they're sort of with, you, with your first class or I say your, your, your first class or your overseas player that's going to spend most time you there is a that's an ability to play white ball cricket mm. there as well. But, but, you know, with Brendan, Mitch McLennan obviously coming over. Um, this one's outside of the off stumps. Gubbins through it goes. Uh, really had a swing at that one, uh, Gubbins from Overton. Um, but, you know, go back eight still, years. We're still, I mean, which I've got to sit down and sort it out, but we've got a, a second 2020 player, I think, uh, sorted now. So I've just got to write the contract up and hopefully get it to him. So we'll have something to um, announce in the next, in the next week or so. Excellent. Um, Although getting on email with him, he's not the best at returning emails. <laughs> not that that gives anybody a clue. Well, I was about to say, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm as bad as anybody. <laughs> Here's uh, Overton to the crease now. He bowls, and that's a length delivery left alone. I mean, take it back eight years. Middlesex's circumstances are a little bit different, but when you first sat down with me, um, you know, Middlesex had come back from the Stanford Super Series back then, you know, and mm. the, what was a growing year of 2020 cricket? You know, it was when the first competitions around the world were starting to pop up that was going to be an annual event obviously for uh, a great many different reasons uh, that wasn't how it turned out to be but Middlesex were languishing towards the division of uh, the bottom of division two at that stage and you said right first things first that is, I'm putting a stop to that Middlesex are going to focus first and foremost on getting championship cricket right again because there was a lot wrong with it as this is down the leg side through to the keeper and a culmination of eight years work saw Middlesex claim the title next year so Middlesex have to play, have had to play catch up a little bit haven't they on the on the on the 2020 in the last few seasons a little bit, I suppose. I mean, the landscape is changing all the time, and that doesn't diminish the, the importance of first-class cricket to a county mm. and, the, and the desire to win the county championship because um, I think you sort of see the scenes and the, and the, the sort of the follow-up 
of a, of a side winning the championship. I mean, right, it, it's not always one in such dramatic sort of style, uh, but, was, but was considerable, wasn't it? Um, this ball short and hooked away down towards fine leg by uh, Gubbins for a single. 38 without loss as he moves to 18. And the joy that it brought to the club, I mean, right, a, a sort of a club like Middlesex, which I suppose is a success. So they've, we've won one-day trophies as well, but it's been built on, 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 on mm. being a, a very good four-day side. Uh, but I say, you, I mean, you want to get that right, and I, I suppose there's a little bit. I mean, the, the best sides in T20 are the best sides for a reason because they play the better cricket and they get it right more often. But there's a, there is a little bit more. This ball takes the edge and through to the keeper. Now, did it take the edge or was that just nipping back to take uh, the thigh guard? Yes, it's gone past the inside edge, taking the thigh guard, and uh, the keeper takes it in front of slip. So a big yelp from uh, Overton. Not out the reply. 38 without loss. Gubbins has 18 and will have strike. Robbins, uh, Robson has 20. So a side like North Ends have won it twice in the last three years, I yep. think, isn't it? Because they they do things right. But yep. there is a little bit more of a lottery to it mm. at times and I suppose getting your mind around there is a sort of randomness about it because you sort of sometimes just used to look at the first over and there was a leading edge and it, if it went to hand you stand a damn good chance of winning the game if it just went out of reach for four over gully then yeah. almost the opposition were away and little things like that seem to sort of set a tone for the next hour and a quarter yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah. Which, is, which is what it can do so it's so instant so immediate um, and how you start. Leach bowls down the track comes Gubbins. This is lifted wide of the mid on fielder, and uh, it's not going to make it. It's going to pitch and stop um, just before the boundary. Right? Gubbins uh, moves to 20 with a couple more. And Middlesex of 40 without loss. Uh, being positive in his approach to the spinner here. Gubbins was actually there was one of the biggest differences between the first innings of both of these sides was the positivity of Duckett perhaps. Um, I think that's something we were, were sort of had a chat this morning and there were sort of, I mean, unfortunately MCC are a bowler down, so mm. Liam Plunkett's not bowling and if you put the spinners under a bit pressure it means the seamers come back a bit earlier. And the squall's hit over the top, now mid-wicket has just dropped a little bit deeper um, and to Gubbins' credit, he really did close the face on that one and work it fine at that deeper mid-wicket for two more. You're a bit more convinced about that shot than <laughs> I was there. It, well, he wasn't to the pitch, was he? And in the end, he had to work it more into the onside, or are you saying it was a completely useless shot? No, no, it wasn't. A, I mean, he's got two runs through it, but yeah. it might have been a bit more controlled than it looked. But yeah. But going back to 2020, I mean, we're obviously sort of... I think... I think time to struggle, you know. What's 2020 there for? Here's Leachy Bowles. And this ball's worked to mid-wicket by uh, Gubbins. Just beats the first fielder and the second one, the deeper of the two, will collect as Gubbins gets a single move to 23. I mean, all you hear about 2020 is money. Yeah. That seems to be the sort of second mm. cent, the second word after 2020 is money. And it was sort of there as a format to allow counties to generate money. Leach bowls and forward goes uh, Robson. So what is your, pri is your prime motive to, to, to have a successful tournament and get people through the door mm. or to win it? How, what does success look like in 2020? And I think yeah. that's sort of, it's still a little bit of a question at times. I sort of, what are, we, what are we trying to get out of 2020? Are we trying to fill Lords? There's a bit of flight and uh, Robson comes down the track. He's going to lift it over mid-on. Is he? No, he's gone. That's a nonchalant catch at mid-on. Fine catch indeed. Robson wasn't to the pitch of it. Didn't get the leverage at all that he was looking for. The power and the first wicket falls for Middlesex. They're 43 for one as uh, Gubbins, uh, sorry, Robson departs for 20. Leach taking the wicket. Yeah, good catch that. Um, sort of, it's all about getting yourself in the right position, isn't it? If you sort of sometimes when you, you've got a twist and turn, uh, you can sort of almost tie yourself in a knot. Uh, but uh, didn't panic. Watched the ball into his hands and uh, took a comfortable catch there. That was Lees, wasn't it? It, took it. it was Lees, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we're just watching the replay down in front of us at the moment. Even still, the camera's just as far away as we are, so it's quite difficult to identify um, who it was. But, um, you know, I'll take you back to a conversation that we had a few years ago that stuck with me as well, where, um, you know, there was a, an expansion at that stage, I think, of the uh, T20. Even then, I mean, we had Gil Crystal Mourner over, so yeah. we've sort of, it's not something we no, sort of pay lip service to. No, but, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, but that was the beginning, really, wasn't it, of Gil Crystal Mourner, I think, where there was a bigger investment in overseas mm. players. Uh, it wasn't for the want of trying, I don't think, in the year or two before that, but that was when you got those bigger players in. Um, and, like I say, it's still evolving now. 
to the fact that Middlesex bring in a specialist 2020 coach to, uh, to work with the players. And it helps, obviously, now that it is in a block, the T20, the, the blast. Yeah, I, I, I suppose there's greater expectation on everybody now, isn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, more demand. Uh, and it's very... I mean, all right, people might sort of say, oh, look at the, the volume of cricket that you play now compared to what they used to play 30 years ago mm -hmm. or the number of days cricket is less, but... I say the pressures on the players are higher than they used to be because there's greater expectation and count members and pundits are, are constantly judging what you do mm. and it's hard for someone to be fresh, upbeat, enthusiastic about every tournament um, and therefore, I mean, it's the same thing we sort of mentioned with the captains, having three captains last year and so you're giving the captaincy to, to sort of different people. Uh, so that they bring in a, their ideas, their energy, they're, they're more enthused by and hopefully that sort of goes through the side and the same uh, to some extent uh, to, with, with the coaching too. Mm. Um, so never you get to a certain stage of the season and, and sometimes, well, where are your priorities? Mm. You've got a four-day game doing well in the championship, you've got a 20-20, you've got a bowler who's bowling a lot of overs. Leach bowls and uh, this ball is turned into the onside by Gubbins. 43 for one, it's the end of the over. So, Robson, it was it was Lees indeed that took the catch at mid on off Leach. He went for 20. 43 for one, Cobbs and the new batsman. Shame that Robson looked good there. He did, yeah. Just didn't quite reach the pitch of it, did he? Because uh, even no. the shape of the shot looked good, but in the end, it was only a soft lob up, really. Yeah, and I think that, well, the view, as I said before, we do need to be more positive against the spinners. And, and again, positive before the twilight comes in. Yeah. Uh, because. Uh, a lot more seems to have happened during that period, well, for whatever reason. David Milan was saying yesterday it almost felt like twilight all day because of the overcast yes, conditions. Yes, it, it was a lovely day for bowling yesterday, mm. wasn't it? Cooler. Because I, I, I was wondering yesterday whether it would have been the spinners, because they, they do have a whole load of spinners down in this side. Even Tom Allsop's been bowling out here, uh, not in this match yet, but I did wonder whether that would have been the, uh, the difference. And yesterday there wasn't that much of a threat from the spin at that stage. It was the seam that did more damage. It'll be interesting today now, as you say, taking on the spin. Uh, whether they do find more success. Lewis Gregory has changed ends, replacing Overton. He's right arm over, bowls to Compton, first ball, played defensively to mid-wicket. Um, he talks about the point of 2020, whether it's to win it, put the um, well, obviously, people on the I seats. mean, you want to win, mm. so, but it's... You sort of think, well, so are we getting players to get people through the gate, or are we getting players to win yeah. the tournament? There, ca there can be a difference. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying we've gone there, but, but, but you sort of think, well, yeah, oh, well, we'll get him, because he'll, yeah. he'll put another 5,000 on the game, but actually he's yeah. the cricketer we're looking for on our side mm. at that moment in time. Mm. Those are sort of some of the, at times, the decisions that... He's uh, oh, on outside of the off stump to Compton. He looked to drive. In the end, must have just nipped away a little bit more from him as well. He was left searching for it. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I go back eight years ago, Clearly, Middlesex uh, had just won the T20s, so were in a decent position there. It was a unique coming together of players, that team, though. You know, there was that bowling attack, the five-man bowling attack that came together of Nanes. And I wouldn't say more through luck than judgment, because that does a disservice to, you know, those that recruited them in. But Nanes, Henderson, Murta, Kartik and Udall, they were a big, big part. He had big hitters of um, Shah, the emergence of Morgan and Milan. As in comes Gregory Bowles. This is pushed up to mid on, and there's no run. But it, it was really the key to... Um, <coughs> to get the championships side right, because equally that bowling unit wasn't effective in the county championship seam attack particularly. Um, but the likes of Danny Evans, Stephen well, Finn were coming through. So th yeah. that was a priority at the time, putting the championship side in well, order. Well, it is, and I think, I, I say, you... And that's not going to change. It's members' championship, isn't it? A lot to other members who yeah. contribute towards the funding mm. and the way that the club is run considerably. This ball's played off the back foot by Compton and it has been put down. Didn't yes, carry it, it, did, did it not carry? That was why I hesitated. Um, the, well, we've got a replay, whether it, how much of an idea it will give us because it's from this end as well. But, um, yeah, hands on heads. But as you say, the, the lack of disappointment suggests it didn't carry. It was only a very brief hands on head from a few uh, for Compton. But, again, that ball seems to be moving a bit out there from Gregory. We'll see the replay now. Just nipped away and... Uh, just short? Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, just short of slip. Was uh, Compton playing? Well, uh, 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 a ball he could have left, really. Yeah, here's uh, Gregory into the crease. He bowls and uh, full of one that Compton's forward to, driving to cover, and there's no run. Um, but, but like I say, there was a conversation equally at the time, whether it was that year or the year after, when there was some sort of expansion, whether it was in the T20 blast. Um, and we talked about you know, the, the growing importance of 2020 even back then. And, you know, whether one day you'd see a situation where 2020 took over from 
test cricket um, as an important uh, as the most important thing because of the money. I think it was probably the money we were talking about back then as well. Um, but it's certainly it's grown in importance once more since those days. This is uh, full delivery and edged out of reach of third slip. I'm not sure how much he knew about it. It seemed from uh, Lee's I there think that he got his hands to that, so it was a sharp one. Seemed to blast through his hands without yeah, him did. particularly it knowing did. a great deal about, uh, or certainly being in a position to take it again. We'll we have the luxury of a replay in a moment. Uh, it has gone for four, and Compton's off the mark. It's the end of the over, 47 for one. Uh, our Middlesex chasing 305 to beat the MCC. And uh, here comes the replay now. Um, yeah, it was his right shoulder, really. He got his two hands up to his right shoulder, and it burst through the fingertips by the looks of it. Yeah, the slip fielders are quite close. Gregory, say, not a quick bowler, skillful swing bowler. Uh, but the slips are quite close because the pitch hasn't got a great deal of pace and bounce in it. So I want to try and make sure, as we say, we, there was an edge, a couple mm. of balls before that didn't carry to slip. Uh, but that one is flashed out hard and it's uh, almost ripped through the hands of the third slip and gone for four. Uh, so just going back to our point of what we were talking about a few years ago, the one question I'd ask you on that in terms of the importance of 2020 for bringing new fans in um, nowadays all around the world. You know, you've seen the, the, the BBL. For the 2020 blast for Middlesex as well, 2020, we see cage, cage cricket, street cricket. Um, here is Leachy Bowles. And down the track comes Gubbin to this one. He's got enough on it to get it wide of the uh, mid-off fielder and go over the top. Again, it's going to pitch and stop. Um, and they will take two. 49 for one as Gubbins moves to 20 through 25. Um, it is... So it, they're it, playing with a pitching wedge at the moment. Yes. Yeah. An eight-iron or a seven-iron. Well, they haven't quite made the, made the <laughs> ball, have they? They haven't quite made the pitch of the ball um, on a few of these shots, have they? Leach... Does seem to be doing well with the length. We're seeing the replay of that one again now. And, yeah, he was closer, actually, to the pitch bit on that occasion, wasn't he? As uh, Gubbins works it to the deeper of the two mid-wickets for a single 50 for one. Middlesex 50 up in there at run chase. 250 uh, for more to win for the champion county. Gubbins on to 26 and Compton on to four. Uh, yeah, because back then it, it still felt as though the balance was there, that first-class cricket and test cricket was you know, still a way to recruit um, new fans, but I think you know the younger generations now are going to be attracted more to competitions like the T20 Blast and the others around the world, shall we say? As uh, Leach's left arm around bowls and Copton down the track now, just strokes uh, dot ball up to mid off. Well, I suppose yes, yeah, so I, I think they will, and uh, I suppose the short term f form games, and again when you're at schools and um, sports clubs or whatever like that something where you can fit a game in quite quickly that gets as many people involved as you can and I suppose 2020 uh, is far closer to the, your cage cricket and your other new this was played off the back foot by uh, Compton from Leach forms that are sort of developed uh, around the schools and around the counties are, are sort of in, well, so many varieties I mean, that's sort of one of the good things about cricket Tom Harrison was saying is the way that it can be sort of modified um, but Leach again Balls. Down the track comes Compton, hits him back over his head, and that's uh, a nice shot from Compton, probably one of the better ones uh, against the Sooners. <laughs> one again, it pitches and stops. Uh, they've taken two as mid off and mid on uh, just retrieve the ball in front of the boundary rope just down below us. Well, these sand based outfields, the ball doesn't bounce, does yeah. it? Sort of it's, it's like a sort of pitching wedge onto a green, isn't it? Just sort of dies. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, but again, I suppose a lot of the publicity it? in the game is, is aiming young people towards these forms, so. Mm. To some extent, it's natural that they might, they sort of migrate there. Here goes Leach. Bowls and uh, this ball's pushed back up to mid-off. BBC London have been fighting hard for the four-class <laughs> game, uh, the first-class game. I think BBC London were the first to do the four-day game because obviously there was always coverage of the one-day, the, the Royal London Cup as it is now, the List A game and the T20. But um, yeah, the championship. But you've got to be careful. You've London. got to be careful. You need to, I mean, say, somewhere the players have got to develop the skills. Yeah. I mean, there's also clear pathways for players now, isn't there? The Royal London Cup uh, to the uh, North v South. That's something that I'm sure everybody will be keen to protect in the future uh, because that looks like a very good pathway right now because that North v South appeared a good, uh, very big success. And as an England selector, I guess you probably had a chance to digest perhaps phone calls or pictures from the North v South on, on just how much of a success it was for, your, uh, for the coaches who were out here to see it as well. Well, we've certainly, I mean, as I say, all, each of the selectors, we were sort of given a number of players to, to monitor as such, and the video from that we can get on computers. So yeah. I spent this morning looking at sort of two or three performers uh, and make your assessments on how they performed during the three days. Gregory begins anew to uh, Gubbins. It's pushed to cover and there's no run. 
Uh, and that's a pathway from the Royal London Cup, basically you qualify, yeah. but oh, actually from the Royal London Cup for the North v, v South. That's something that at the moment looks to be a very successful com uh, concept for List A cricket. Yeah, I, I say, I, I think, I mean, it does. Uh, so I sit down and review it and, and mm. hear what Mr. Strauss has to say about oh, it. Has he told you something different to what he told us? No, I no, mean, uh, no, no, he's not. I, I, so I, just haven't, I haven't spoken to him about yeah, it. Because they, they were all delighted when we were interviewing them out here and a uh, few came up and joined us on the mic. Uh, this ball is full from Gregory and Ford goes Gubbins to mid-off. Um, they, they were absolutely delighted. They said they got exactly what they needed out of it, the coaches that were here. Um, and, and, and like I say, it made sense for me when I sat down that it was a pathway for List A cricketers to England, which just bridged the gap between... Um, the well, I didn't have to say bridging the gap. It's, it's the ability to find out a bit more about some players. Mm. So they're playing... When there's a greater concentration, obviously the, the quality is going to be higher. So how? Gregory bowls and this ball. Oh, turns around. Gubbins. He gets an edge, thick edge past third slip. It's going to go away for four. And uh, Gregory left leaning forward onto his knees, disappointed. But four more for Gubbins. He moves to 30, and it's 56 for one Middlesex. But I suppose I say you look at that and. You could, all right, I mean, there's some, there's some good county sides around, but sometimes there might be a couple of decent bowlers, high quality bowlers, and then the sort of intensity of it might fall away. But if all of a sudden uh, you've got a, a number, you can see, well, how good a bowler is Graham Ward Gregory? Uh, how good a player is, um, I'm trying to think, that Bell Drum, I mean, the Bell Drum has been on North East and people like that. And, and when they're facing better bowlers, you can, you can make a, a clearer judgment I would have thought. Gregory bowls and uh, up on his toes Gubbins plays this one out towards deep point for a single 57 for one. Sam Northeast joined us on the commentary and as I say I spoke to, uh, on the record to Andrew Strauss um, for a good period and the two of them have both said that the key to the North v South of them was that the Royal London One Day Cup for most counties was the third competition Yes. Um, yeah. and this was an opportunity to increase the intensity to have a look at those players because the Royal One the, Royal, the list A game at the moment in England, as we presently are, does fall behind um, the other two competitions. In terms of pitches, um, often the pitches aren't up to the standard that the players or coaches, I'm sure, would like us. Here's Compton, edges this one short of uh, Lee's at third slip off Gregory. And uh, pushing forward on the off stump, that movement from Gregory is really still testing out there for the right-hand left-handers. But you also look as well, we've got two major tournaments in the next three years. Yeah. So the Champions Trophy this year, the World Cup in 2019, they're 50 overs. Can we add to the, the group of players that we know as, a, as selectors that we can pick from? And you'd say, yes, some players have come through. Um, more, let's say, someone like David Milan, all of a sudden he's, uh, to say, Middlesex-centric here, but all of a sudden he's had the chance to play in the same side as Paul Farbro, so he gets to know him. Uh, Trevor Bayliss is around, so he can sort of see what he's about. So... Gregory Bowles, this is short and punched uh, through the covers by uh, Gubbins for four. It's a lovely shot. He moves to 35 for only 42 deliveries. Uh, 62 for one. I mean, go back a couple of years. But you, I mean, again, there was some sort of some thick comments made last summer about sort of whether the selectors required and the fact that now you know. No, but now, <laughs> yeah, you've, no, got, no, now no. you've got these yeah. video. The, every match is analysed mm. and programmed and the, mm. and the fact that Trevor Bayliss, after seven hours watching England mm. in a test match, will go home and then spend two yeah. hours in front of the computer <laughs> watching how the next, I mean, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. And again, on a computer, you get watching it, you get an idea, but you don't but get an the real feel. as well, yeah. So actually sort of seeing these players live, I mean, that's one of the great things about um, the selectors' trips that I've been to with the Lions. All of a sudden, you get to know the characters. Mm -hmm. you, get to, you get to spend some time away from cricket with, with them and, and feel what they're like and how they go about their business, what their attitude is, how they are around the group. I mean, there are lots of things you can't you, you can't see yeah. just on a computer yeah. screen. But also, you know, you, you've been there and played at the highest level. There's an instinct, isn't there? When you're at a ground and you see a player, you, you get a feel for, even if he's not performing in that particular match, whether actually perhaps this guy's got something about him. Yes, and but you also... His leech, sorry, he begins to knee over to uh, Compton, a solid forward defensive. But you know, I say we're sat in now looking at the whole ground, normally just looking at down the mm. pitch. What's the match situation? What's the environment? Is there a bit more pressure than you think? Mm what's happened. You, if you're there live and you're watching, you see so much more than you do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, TV coverage is, is magnificent these days. Leach is around the wickety bowls and this ball's uh, driven up towards the mid-off. How's his radio coverage, Gus? Yeah. <laughs> Just for some, better for some counties <laughs> than others. <laughs> 
you can you can say no comment on that one as well, Gus. <laughs> oh, to be a not supporter. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a trade one, yeah. You could have brace girdle. I'll, I'll go off. Not just not while no. you're doing so well, though. Otherwise, I've missed out on every derby. Here's, here's you're very good, Kevin. <laughs> here's Leach. Bowls. This is cut away to uh, cover uh, 62 for one. If Dave Brace Girdley's good tuned in, he's not going to let down, let that live, <laughs> live that one down that you selected knots as well. Um, morning to you, Dave. Slip and a short leg crouch down. Here comes Leach. He moves in now. Bowls and uh, this ball's clipped away towards mid wicket by. Uh, Compton and a single take and 63 for one. Um, I mean, that must have been actually, from a selector's point of view, one of the hardest things to do, select for all London One Day Cup players, because List Day has been marginalised to this point, hasn't it? Um, I say marginalised, not, probably not the right word, but no, it, has, it, it hasn't had the same precedence in the last couple of years as the others. No, I suppose. I mean, 50 over cricket's not had a good... Mm. Um, a lot of positive publicity, has it, in recent times? It's Leach bowls, well, that had a bit of bounce to Govins. He's played it well to... Short leg. It's deemed by many to be the ugly ducking. I mean, actually, yeah. I mean, as far as day's entertainment go, I think it's the best day of the lot because yeah. uh, you can turn up to a day's test cricket and you want to watch Brian Lara say bat. Mm. Leach bowls, and this ball's driven up to mid-on for a single by Gubbins, 64 for one. But the West Indies are bowling that day. Yeah. Uh, you could turn up to a 2020 and you want to watch Brian Lara bat at four. Mm. The opener's bat for 12 overs. He has to come in, has to have a hack at the first or third ball that he faces, and he, he doesn't get anything. Yeah. But in a 50-over game, you've got a good chance of watching players bat properly, bat for 35, 40 overs, mm. score 120. You see bowlers bowling the ball to get people out rather than hiding the ball, which is what you do in 2020. So I feel a bit sorry for the 50-over game because yeah. I, th I think it's a really good game. Of and, and equally, that is the one that the members do look to as well. Still, mm. you know, obviously you get the big crowds for T20, but much like the championship, it, it is, as you say, a day for the members to go and, and see that game. Uh, there was some talk about a couple of years ago about that potentially starting over, overseas, wasn't there? Um, well, they were talking about, yeah, it's sort of almost playing it now here, yeah. wasn't it? Sort of to start the, start every, the competition, every side get some games two or done. three games yeah. here, so just create a bit more space in the summer. Yeah, which I guess would uh, potentially still be something for the future as well. Um, 64 for one, the score here. Govins is on 36, Compton's on eight. Crane's on. Ah, uh, yes, a leg spin. How many overs have we had? 15. How much time have we had uh, this morning? Uh, so we've got 21 minutes until the interval. 20 minute interval. Uh, <laughs> it's sort of the, the games at this time of the year, they sort of follow up. I mean, like Middlesex bowlers, we're trying to get a certain work workload into each of them as a build up towards the season. So. A lot of flight from uh, Crane first ball. It's worked by Gubbins into the onside. So it's, it's part of the process to the 14th of April, mm -hmm. even though it's a first class game and you want to win it. but. Equally, you, you realise your big games start in the, in the middle of April. Um, you just wonder how Matthew Maynard, um, sort of, he's got three of his Somerset bowlers yes. here. This ball's turned back of the square on the leg side by Gubbins for a single off Crane. And Yorkshire, understand. Well, you've been up against the Yorkshire openers in the Somerset. Well, yeah, I mean, but understandably, sort of, Yorkshire have been very protective of Plunkett with a calf strain mm. this time of the year, and they've got a couple of other injured bowlers at the moment, so I gather. Uh, so I'd imagine Matthew Maynard had sort of. Look, yep, yeah, okay, but we don't want them to mm. <laughs> be flogged, really. We don't want Gregory and Overton to be flogged in this game because yeah. they're working towards their start of the season, too, and they haven't been so far. So, Crane, Bulls, and uh, on the back foot, Compton works this one away. That's a deep mid wicket for a single. They've got the four spinners. There's uh, still lithe and the then all soppy bold left arm spin the other day for uh, the MCC. I watched him bold very well, sorry to tell you. <laughs> Bowled some. Uh, I'd never seen him bowl before, but yeah, impressed the other day for the MCC. Right. You're not so impressed by him. Well, <laughs> well, he, then, bowled, he bowled in the UAE and it wasn't. Well, he'd probably get three or four wickets now. Be <laughs> careful. <laughs> Crane bowls and this ball's turned out to deep mid wicket for a single by uh, Gubbins. Moves to 38, 67 for one. In fact, he was bowling in the, one of the power plays the other day in the T20. You know, bowled quite early on. Did, did well in that. Did he? Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling me you're not going to be selecting him as a left arm spinner anytime soon. <laughs> uh, here's Crane, bowls, and this is pushed into the offside. And there's no, no, I mean, he very much is a part time bowler, but you know, Middlesex had um, Milan and Robson as two and three, didn't they? So uh, <laughs> I know when Robson came on the other day, I thought, blimey, it's a bit early for this. Isn't yes, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not suggesting but he's been bad. The silly thing is that Sam used to was a leg spinner. Crane bowls and uh, forward defensive from Compton. When he was playing great cricket, I think he was first picked for great cricket in mm -hmm. Sydney as a leggy, and then his batting's come through. But it's just because his action was so 
ridiculous. Yeah, the run up <laughs> and everything. He's modified that and he's yeah. been bowling quite a lot of overs in the winter actually for Eastern Suburbs. Okay. Playing at that beautiful Waverley Oval. And Paul Sterling is coming back as a leg spinner as well, bowling leg spin at the moment against Afghanistan and uh, throughout the winter. Gone from off spin to leg spin. Liam Livingston's gone the other way, hasn't he? From uh, well, leg he spin to off He bowls a bit of both, doesn't he? Livingston. Yeah, but it, by the sounds of it, this winter now, he's really settled onto, uh, onto off spin. I think, well, I think some of it depends on whether you're left handed or right handed mm. batsman. So he's, he's bowled at quite a lot of left handers, certainly in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe that's been. But. His leech to Gubbins, a forward defensive. Sterling is. He's such a shy young man, mm. but he seems unbelievably talented. Yeah. Whatever he seems to put it. I mean, he just runs up. It's always bold Austin and comes up his leg. He's got six for him, you think. <laughs> Leach bowls. This is pushed into the onside by Gubbins. Single taken up to mid on. This sort of wish he almost put his shoulders back and sort of, yeah, yeah here I am. But he's yeah. so sort of, uh, um, sort of shy about what he achieves. And again, you watch him bat at times and <laughs> play strokes. We were talking about him last night. Mm. Um, and then that hotel, and he's he's a talent. He is. Leach, it's around the wicket. He bowls, and uh, Cobton, uh, with a nice use of the feet, he's got enough on that one. But again, it's going to pitch and stop uh, just down below us. At long off, mid off, retreating. Cobton's taken two. He moves to 11, 70 for one. Uh, Angus Fraser, the managing director, is alongside myself, Kevin Hand, managing director of Middlesex. Uh, alongside myself, Kevin Hander on BBC Radio London and Five Live Sports Extra. Well, full credit to Leach and captain the MCC. They're not put in the field. They're, they're still giving England... Sorry, Middlesex is... <laughs> Ford goes batsmen Thompson pushing the temptation, back. aren't they, of trying to get it over them? Yeah. Well, they've got a lot of runs to play with, haven't they? Um, yeah. It's a big old lead. 305 the target for Middlesex. It's Leach balls, and uh, this ball's pushed up to mid-off by uh, Compton. 71 for one, he moves to 12. Um, but yeah, the T20 blast this summer for Middlesex, uh, I mean, clearly there's still a big investment for, uh, for Middlesex to win in that one. You talk about Sterling, he'll come back and be up there with uh, Milan, McCullum uh, and co. Um, in what is a block now, which is how you've managed to recruit in a specialist coach, as down the track comes Gubbins pushing back and there's no, in the last couple of years that wouldn't have been possible without the, with the Thursday, Friday night spread across the entire season. Um, but now it's more of a block at the moment, the T20 blast, so it can become more focused for the counties. It will be this, I suppose, it's like all these things, I mean, we think we, we finish a four-day game on the Wednesday and then we've got our first T20 at Cheltenham on the Thursday, so you're not, you're going to have to sort of combine the two mindsets for a, for a week or so beforehand, but I think, I mean, again, I, it can be quite difficult for some coaches, I know, sort of combining the two, um, say someone like Dan, who's used to just solely 2020, whether it's with Brisbane Heat or, or with uh, Bangalore as he is now, but the good thing about him is that he's he's aware, he's not expecting, he, he knows how it works, he realises that, I mean even at the IPL, India had just finished a test match um, they're going to have three or four days off and they start on the fifth, don't they, or something like that, so Crane bowls and forward goes Compton pushing into the offside, there's no run So he's going to have minimal preparation with quite a lot of his mm. uh, cricketers so I, I think the nature of the game now is the players have got to flick from one form to the other. Yeah. Pretty, they've got to be pretty adaptable. Yeah. Here comes Crane. Balls and uh, this ball's cut away. Uh, four four. It's a good shot by Compton in between uh, backward points and cover. Uh, gets it the closest to the two is the backward point, but got it hard and fast in front of him. Four more. Seventy five for one. And uh, Compton's on to 12. Middlesex certainly showing the fight that they did last year. Uh, to fight back with the ball. Sixteen is on. 16, thank Score you. Score would have been slow. Um, the, um, the fight they showed last year, uh, in so many occasions, and uh, I'm sure, well, we all expected that would be the case today, that no matter what the result, <laughs> there would be a lot of fight shown by Middlesex. So this here's Crane, Bowles, and Compton leaves alone outside the off stump. Well, you want to win a game, but you also want to make sure that well, you want as many of your players, your bowlers to have a good bowl, your batsmen to spend some quality time at the crease. And uh, you go back to England two days' time, with everybody feeling that they're moving in the right direction. Crane bowls, and this ball's cut into the offside. Um, talk about the blocks. This, this season, um, I, I'm sure it will be easier for the likes of Richard Scott. Um, 
you know, there is a clear block of championship cricket, isn't there? Um, clear block at the end, uh, and that does seem the way forward now. It's been kind of evolving to this point that it will be championship cricket at the start, championship cricket at the end, whatever to come uh, in the middle. We've got a block of Royal London and a block of 2020 this summer to commentate on as well, as this was cut by Compton's cover. I think there's one championship game in the 2020 block, there isn't is, there, which, yeah. was, uh, which had to be done. Um, but otherwise, that, that does make more sense, because for the players and for everybody, because um, it was becoming quite of a mix-up as uh, Compton bowls. This is turned to mid-wicket, a quick single. 76 for one, Compton's on to 17. Uh, quite of a mix-up between, between the different formats, all three different formats up in the air, wasn't it, at one stage? And, and again, that comes with expectation, doesn't it? I mean, so your, your, your members and people want you to be competitive yeah. in all three competitions. I mean, when I... When we were playing, there was often a Sunday league game in the middle of a three-day game, mm -hmm. and to be honest, it was a bit of a jolly at times. Yeah. It was a bit of fun, and the members and everybody didn't seem too perturbed if if you weren't performing in that, as long as you did in the others. But now people want you to do it in everything. So I mean, the fact that you have got this ability now to focus on something helps. The downside to the um, to the to the block of list A this summer is, you know, there might be those later in the summer think, well, actually, I quite fancy a bit of list A, but it's all done and dusted. Mm. Eight, and it's sort of, May. again, we're, well, we're looking at our thing. Uh, obviously, Ireland are playing during that period. England, they've got two games against England, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, every, all the sides are into their preparations for the Champions Trophy. So uh, there'll be a number of high profile, so we'll, we're going to lose Owen for most yeah. of it. I would have thought, well, he's going to go yeah. back to the IPL. Well, it's difficult, well. isn't it? Because there is the concern about it almost being a second 11 competition. Well, it, it won't be that. Mm. Here's, here's Leach, he's left arm around. There is a delay, sorry, I thought he was about to step in. Uh, Compton settles over his bat now. Short extra cover, cover, uh, and a wider, deeper cover as well. Here comes Leach Bowles, the first of those cover fielders. There's no run. Mid-off's been pushed a little bit further back, hasn't it? Yeah. There's Man on the drive, so... Um, no, it won't be that, but it, it, again, going back to what we were saying earlier, it doesn't quite have the rele say relevance. Uh, this ball's uh, cut to cover. It beats the fielder. Back with points. And, four uh, yeah, four more for Compton. Moves to 21. 80 for one. That's Compton's third boundary. Um, perhaps, let's say, put it this way, it doesn't quite have the same respect that the others get. I mean, I, I was furious well, a couple of years ago when yeah. Middlesex went up to Yorkshire and played that four-day game off the back of travelling around there to 2020 on a Friday night. I was like, look, this is the big fixture of the season. It hasn't been shown anywhere near enough respect. But that, I, I, we can't stop people talking. I mean, I'm yeah. answering questions here, but that's not the way you feel when you're inside. Mm. You're trying to win it. And you, yeah. every game's important. So, I mean... His, uh, there's a, there's a lot of push back by Compton. There's a lot of talk about everything now, and mm. you can't. I mean, so you're answering questions about well, the competition's the competition. We're trying to win it. I mean, what mm. people are saying and questioning it is irrelevant to us because it doesn't mm. enter. It's not weird. Mm. It's not weird. People are sort of making assumptions that you. Leach bowls. This is swept by Compton. That's Compton. going to be four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Middle to 84 for one. Compton moves to 25. Big pick up into the onside for him. Uh, sorry, go on, making assumptions that... That, that it's not important, it's irrelevant, mm. it's been dumbed no, down, in terms it's the second level and yeah. all these sort of things, but that's not the way that it's viewed uh, yeah. within. So mm. we know when we turn up to, to play whoever we're playing, that they're certainly this year, because it's well, you might have played three championship matches, we'll have only played two. It's early on in the season. People are trying to put a season's work together. Uh, they're keen to sort of continue. If, if they're in good form in the championship, they want to continue that form in the one day in the 50 over stuff. A little bit of if, lift there for Leach past the edge of Compton through to the keeper. If they're not scored runs in the early championship games, maybe the freedom be down to go there and play some shots will. Mm. Uh, but you're going to find that all everybody, I mean, all our squad want to play. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Here comes uh, Leach. Bowls and this ball is pushed back into the offside and there's no one. I think I said to you the other day, but uh, actually you just got off the flight, so I don't think you're too interested, but the... Um, <laughs> I mean, not interested in what you've got to say, never. <laughs> um, the, you know, it really um, sat into place when I sat here watching the North East South, just how um, it complements the Royal London, because a lot of people were saying, well, it means nothing. I said, well, actually, sitting here looking at it, well, it does. It? But that, I mean, uh, yeah, again, I mean, so follow, uh, followers of county cricket um, saying, well, who's interested That's in That's why it's difficult South? in my position, because someone says it means nothing. Well, so what? Yeah. I don't, I'm not worried what they say, because yeah. it means something to us. Yeah. Uh, but clearly, sitting here, I could see, you know, yeah. for the players as well, such a clear pathway from them, and it gave even greater relevance to the Royal London mm. um, for that reason. 
uh, which, as I, as I say, as Sam Northey saying about the pitches, Andrew Strauss yeah. saying that in, in planning, it probably is the third competition that counties plan for. Uh, so this ball from Crane comes back into Gubbins' turn to midwicket, no run. I suppose, I mean, last year it was in two blocks, the 50 over competition, so I'd imagine the pitch at the start of the season would have mm. been um, fine. Mm. Uh, it's just that when you, you come round to, I mean, I think all clubs have got problems when you get into Ju July, August, mm. sort of trying to work out what... This ball's down to the <laughs> legs. Are, has he nicked it through? No. Crane looks optimistic. I didn't think so, no. Uh, might have just clipped a bit of the pad it's on the way through. A few caught down the leg side, and there's going to be three of them. I don't yeah. really see many. The bounce has been a talking point on this pitch. Um, it's been a little bit of extra bounce in it, with the divots certainly yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. Our pitch guru, Richard Johnson, didn't get this one right. What did he call? Well, no, he sort of said, oh, it looks flat to me. And <laughs> it is, it's a good set. It's been a good pitch. Crane bowls and... Uh, Right into the onside by Gubbins for a single 85 for one. But he's got a sort of thumbnail like a screwdriver and sort of puts it in it to see whether there's any moisture there. Mm. He said, no, that's no, hard. And I thought there was a bit in there, but it has dented, so that's why maybe the odd little bit of indifferent bounce where it sort of hits the edge or the side of a, of a dent. And no heavy roller to roll them out. Crane bowls and uh, Ford goes Compton into the offside and there is no run. 85 for one. But uh, it's, uh, Scotty Richard Scott was saying he was sort of sort of almost doing a bit of a study in the net, sort of whirling to some of the batsmen and changing between a pink and a red ball. Mm. And the trajectory off the surface of a pink ball did seem to be different to that of the red ball. This ball's played off the back foot by Compton to you, uh, Crane. There's no the any theories on that. The red ball sort of skids on. I yeah. mean, I think it's if you listen to the white. I mean, listen to the ball on the bat. Certainly, when the players have been doing their fielding drills in the morning, the yeah. The pink ball's got a more, a deeper, sort of more like... Uh, this ball on. is cut by Compton. He played that well, Compton. He's only just getting a single for it, but it's a decent shot. Made room for himself for a single. 86 for Almost one. like a bowling machine ball noise to it, mm. rather than a higher, crisper sort of click that a, that, a, that a red or a white ball means. And I don't know whether that's got something to do with the, the substance that's on the surface of the leather that gives it its colouring. Uh, but it's got a real sort of plasticky feel to it unlike a sort of white ball where you can see that it's a it's a lacquer but it sort of does scrape off scratch off uh, the, the pink ball it, it almost seems very durable uh, the, the the surface of, which means it's almost like it becomes like a case of saying it's a good ball to bowl spin with Ravi Patel was saying but the seam is it gets a bit like an orange because it sort of gets a bit loose in this um, in, the, in the case it's there I'm not explaining it that well but um, uh, Stephen Finn was describing it. Um, oh, so Duke. So he was. So Scotty was sort of saying the the, the red ball skidded on, whereas the the pink balls tended to stay on the surface and bounce a little bit more. Because mm. they're, they're painted, the pink balls. Stephen Finn was saying to me, uh, it was on yesterday. I, well, I don't. know, It's almost seems like there's something sprayed. Sprayed. On. Yeah. Sprayed. A spray paint, then maybe. <laughs> yeah, sort of yeah. a resin of some yeah. description. Yeah. Leach, uh, just lay here before the start of Leach's new over. Middlesex, uh, 86 for one. Um, sorry, it's Shot not Nick. Leach, it's uh, Lithe into the attack for the first time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Lithe. Uh, bowls, this ball's cut away, back with a point for two by Compton, or run away. He moves to 28. Scoreboard, oh, my eyes are getting terrible, seeing the sixes and eights on that board. The windows are a bit dusty, aren't they? So it doesn't help. No. Uh, yeah, he's on to 28. 88 for one. Lithe. Step in again. Slip behind Compton. As he bowls, Compton uses his feet and meets on the toe end of the bat, a low full toss in the end. But when I was in uh, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, they were using pink balls there, but they were using pink cooker bar balls. Yeah. And they did, all right, the, the surf, this is quite a grassy Have you been out there? It's sort of quite yeah. a it's grassy surf. I mean, it's a, it's a brown, dry grass, not a live green grass. Lithe bowls, lots of flight, and uh, again, a full toss, driven down to mid on, no run. So it's not going to sort of scuff the, 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 the skin of the ball or the, mm. the ball up as much as a, a bare, dry, rough surface like they were in Sri Lanka, but a kookaburra ball, I think, scuffs up quicker, so therefore reverse swing would become an option at some stage of the game, but I don't think reverse swing has, has been an mm. option here. It's probably not been required because <laughs> you've gone to twilight, you've had the new ball, yeah. you've had a little spell in the middle... Uh, and then you go to the twilight where it seems to have started to do a bit more again. 
live balls, this ball's pushed to uh, mid-wicket. No, is there any difference then in the way it sprayed the cooker or the juke? I mean, that was what Finn seemed to be alluded to, that there seemed a difference in the way that it was. Yes, it does. It seems more... a, a sort of more rubbery, sort of harder-wearing mm. spray. Lithe. Tracking the length back slightly on that one, Cox <laughs> on the back foot, pushing into the onside. A uh, top ball. Where's the orange? There? I mean, the, the, the cooker I seen more of a die, so therefore it sort of scuffed off, and therefore yeah. the, the, the sort of pink cooker bra balls sort of tended to lose their colour or suddenly become. Forward goes Compton turning into the onside, no run into the over, uh, 88 for one. Like white balls get a sort of scabby green colour, but mm. just caused by the, the abrasiveness and the dirt and the, the grass and the whatever else getting in it, but these things haven't sort of uh, lost any of their colour whatsoever. Uh, and Middlesex have a day nicer at Essex this year. Uh, mm. Final thought from you, I mean, it's, uh, it's the first day nicer in county championship, uh, Chelmsford for Middlesex. And this is a, a good good example for us to mm. sort of get used to it. I think you chat with the players and it's it's a completely different experience playing. Everybody said, well, what do you mean? You turn up at the ground, you do your things, but you're used to... Well, lunch your is body clock, is lunch. Yeah, your body yeah. clock is... So that we start tend to start at 11 o'clock playing this form of the game and it takes a little time to, to sort of get used to it as you say we've got a 20 minute break first then a 40 minute break sort of for dinner as such getting your meals right i mean plants expressing energy so therefore they need to sort of uh, uh, get food inside them but when do you get your food inside do you sort of have a breakfast at nine o'clock all of a sudden do you want to be having a big meal Crane bowls, and this is uh, worked up to mid on by Gubbins, there's no run. A big lunch at one yeah. when you're in the middle of your warm ups. Yeah, I've seen a very stressed physio uh, <laughs> looking at what they're all but doing. But then you're sort of not having food for four and a bit hours yeah. potentially, which, all right, uh, you can live without it, but mm. for, a, for a sportsman when you're trying to. Ford goes uh, Gubbins pushing into the offside, well, especially in this heat. You're bowling out there and sort of getting rid of how many thousands of calories. Yeah. You, you, you need some food, but. Well, the difficult one for the physio is ideally it would be an early breakfast, a lunch, then the game starts, and then a light snack, and then the dinner in the 40 minute break later. But then, equally, they want them to have a sleep in um, so that they're not tired by yeah. the evening session. Because you come back, come back from the hotel, you're buzzing, you're hungry. Yeah, so they want to, yeah. So you're looking to, you're not getting back to the hotel till 10 mm. 30, 10, 10 30, have a meal, maybe finish your meal by 11 mm. o'clock. But the physio was saying that ideally, obviously, if you were to make the meal preparation is that they wouldn't eat at that time but that's, uh, that's not something you could say yeah so the full toss from Gubbins on, uh, from Crane on that one but Gubbins shuffles down and uh, thumps him away through cover and mid off and it's a nice start here by Gubbins and Middlesex he is on to 44 and 92 for one I'm tentatively staying is the score just in case yeah, that's you're right, you're right. Um yeah so there's, there's lots to think about in that sense as well isn't there really for all of the things that go on behind the scenes. Like yeah, I say, he's looked it's, <laughs> well, it's just new, and I, th I suppose for us, it's an advantage playing in this game because at least we've got a bit of better idea than uh, we would have had had it been the first time we're doing it at Chelmsford. Yeah. So I think that's well, that's the main reason why the ECB have uh, want this round of twenty, sorry, these round of pink ball matches, day night matches, so that the England players that are obviously going to be playing in that round of games mm. uh, can play yeah. and can try and get used to the time is because. Uh, it does feel different. Again, I suppose in this game, it's certainly like the twilight's become a tactic now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, it and the match time is get, brought forward. Yeah, yeah, and how you get to that time of the day in the best sort of shape mm. you can. Uh, I don't know whether that's intriguing, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I yeah. suppose it's something to sort of sink down and contemplate at the end of a game. But should a, an hour, an hour and a half period of the game mm. be different, sort of considerably different to. Crane bowls, and this is uh, punched <coughs> off the back foot out to uh, Wards. Uh, in fact, it was a little bit more edgy than I realised. It's down towards a fine third man. Um, deep points retreating to collect. They've taken two. It should be that more different to the, to the rest of the game. But there again, I suppose cloud climatic conditions change in England. All of a mm. sudden, it's sunny. The cloud comes over. It starts swinging. So is it any different to something like that, really? Yeah. But I suppose you know you're going to get that every night here. So yes. There's, there's yes, always yeah, yeah. going to be a little period yeah. here where the bowlers are going to have something to work with. Uh, Crane's coming around the wicket now to Gubbins, the left-hander turns to square leg. There's no run, and uh, well, it's Essex, the first home game. It's first up against Hampshire, isn't it? And then Essex, the first home game away to uh, Hampshire, first for Middlesex in the defence of the title. Yeah. And home to Essex um, before heading uh, well, that, we, that, that we game. We go well. We go back here. We come back from here. We arrive 
Thursday evening. Uh, we've then got a NatWest Cricket Force day, so getting half the no boys. rest for the wickets. No, getting not of the whole squad, but getting sort of uh, eight or nine of them to local Pinna, Pinna Cricket Club near myself, which is uh, uh, the Middlesex sort of chosen club this year. Um, weekend off, Merchant Taylor School on Monday, two-day game against Durham. Um, Wednesday's our sort of press day. Thursday practice, Friday. No, what am I talking about? Yeah. No. Wednesday, then Thursday, travel to Fenners, uh, where we play Cambridge University. And then the following Friday, we're into, into the Championship. Live bowls, and this ball's uh, worked away back to the square. Uh, for a single for Compton, 95 for one. Um, and a final nice thought, uh, which one thing I haven't said about last year, you did what Gat didn't do, and really. What was that? You won it at Lords. <laughs> have, you, have you rubbed it in a bit with Gat? You never did that, did you, Gat? Lifted the air, uh, whatever any of the victories under Gat were, uh, were away. Yeah, I don't know, it's dangerous doing that with Gat because his numbers always outdo yours. <laughs> 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 he always used, to, always used to have something to come back at, you know. I was half surprised he isn't out here, actually, because he's on the executive board nowadays for Middlesex. He is, he is. Um, he must be busy. <laughs> um, <laughs> food's a bit expensive here. <laughs> <laughs> Although the buffet at the hotel's very good. Live bowls in there. This ball's pushed down to mid on for a single by uh, Gubbins. He moves to 47, 96 that's, for one. I mean, just saying, that's been one of the, the nice things in the last two or three years of seeing Gap around more again. Obviously, one of Middlesex's great cricketers. Yeah. I mean, always will be. They've done so much for the club, and then obviously went into coaching, didn't work out, and sort of. I don't know, so you go with there's a bit of not animosity, but a bit of a parting of the ways as such. Lithe bowls, and uh, this ball's eased to back a point for a single by Compton. It's seven for one. Yeah, it's but seeing the Gap ECB. back in the thick yeah. of the club, Middlesex now, and sort of involved in a lot of things we do is brilliant because he's such a great bloke and. Such a huge figure in the club. It's not, even though he gets on my nerves every now and then. Well, now. I was just about to say, he's. Uh, it's lovely to have him around. <laughs> he's lithe, he's right arm around bowls, and uh, this ball's pushed back up the track. David Townsend, of course, was Mike Gassing's ghostwriter, so you've got DT on one shoulder and Gats on the other. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of a difference there, though, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> in gravitas. <laughs> Live bowls and uh, this ball's cut away out towards uh, cover on the boundary, 98 for one, but probably a similar tirade from both, isn't it? <laughs> i.e. they, they, yeah, they, they don't stop. One you can not listen to. One you listen to and one you... <laughs> it's white noise. <laughs> um, Gus, thanks very much. I'll let you go. Uh, and I appreciate Pleasure. you coming up today because obviously... Uh, uh, it's a difficult day with everybody having to say no comment to everything. Um, <laughs> but uh, we've navigated it reasonably well, I think. Uh, as Lyle will step in as the last ball of the over coming up uh, to Compton and uh, pushed back into the offside. 98 for one in the over. So best of luck for the, the season ahead. Yeah. Uh, assuming that there isn't another day to this match, we'll get you back up tomorrow morning. Mm. <laughs> so you're not coming to Fenners then, are you? No, I might have a relaxing week that week. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what attracts you to here rather than Fenners? <laughs> Can't think. You can explain that. <laughs> See you later. Thank you very much, Middlesex's Managing Director of Cricket, uh, Angus Fraser. Much appreciated uh, his time and patience. Uh, and uh, 98 for one. I'll be speaking to Dave Brace, Girdle's agent, see if he's available for next year. To, uh, <laughs> that's never going to be lived down, Gus. Thanks for that. Uh, welcome back, Will. Uh, he's Thank gone you. out with a big smile on his face. <laughs> uh, slip in place. Here's uh, Crane Bowles, and uh, this ball's pushed back up the track. 98 for one. Could have been worse. He could have spoke, said sorry, I suppose, couldn't he? He could have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, interesting um, chat and thought um, around always interesting to listen to, the matter, uh, around the matter of the day as well as uh, obviously I should repeat as we did at the start of the uh, interview as forward goes. Uh, Gubbins pushing up to mid off a quick single that um, counties are under pretty strict orders at the moment. No comment at this time on the uh, new T20 uh, as the votes will start to come in today and over the next week or so. Indeed. Middlesex are in a strong position here, aren't they? They've done well, very well, haven't they? Very well 99, indeed. Govins has 49. I didn't want to over-talk to how strong the position was because I just thought a wicket will come and I'll have Gus staring daggers into the side of my head <laughs> as I'm commentating. They need 305 to win. Crane has two slips in place as he bowls to Compton. This ball's worked. Uh, back to square on the leg side, a quick single taken. And that's the 100 up for Middlesex, 100 for one. And that's the fifth, uh, 31. 
for uh, Compton. So the 100 up, yeah, 205 to win. Pressure on uh, the MCC who are a man down in their boat. Yeah, the for a bowling attack this afternoon, won't it? Um, Overton and Gregory having to do all the, the seam bowling. We've got some good spinners. Leach got the one wicket so far. He, he's looked very tidy. Crane hasn't yet got a wicket of mismatch, but we know what he can do. In he comes to Gubbins, who just drives to cover. There's no run. Gubbins has played nicely. He's looked patient and mature, but also got off to our anything loose. Here comes Crane again to the stumps. He's a little bit down leg side, and he's just turned it to mid-wicket, where Ben Duckett does the fielding. There's no run. Um, Don Topley was just backing up one of the questions I put to uh, Gus. Ca uh, in 2016, counties crossed boundaries of each format over 24, t 24 times, i.e. switching between codes. There's Govins just driving. That's going to be his 50. It's full from Crane. He's just driven it out to the man at deep cover for one. It's a uh, 67th ball. It's 50. And he's hit six fours. He's played very nicely. And uh, they're actually coming off for lunch now as well. Tea, of course. Uh, the, the first break of the day is uh, they're coming off for now. The score is 101 for one. The champions in a very strong position against the MCC. They need a further 204 to win to uh, chase down 305, which is uh, quite a tall target. Hard ask, but they've made a very fine start. Nick Compton comes off with uh, 31 from 46 balls. He's been in a sort of fairly sprightly attacking mood, Compton. Gubbins has 50, brought that up with a final ball of the session. He's played very nice. He looked the, um, we could argue he looked the pick of a batsman in first innings as well, but he, he gave his way, wicket away in uh, uncharacteristically loose fashion. Uh, he obviously was the leading light of the Middlesex batting lineup last year. He got, he made 1,409 runs, I think, off the top of the head, my head last year, Nick Very Gubbins. good. 400s in that, having never made 100 before. Um, and he'd, he'd dearly love one here. I think, to uh, Middlesex didn't lose last year. And David Milan was quite bullish with us last night, wasn't he? He wasn't... Um, he said, they're, yeah. they're, they're not going to lie down here. It might not no. be a, a championship game, this, but they uh, they hold that unbeaten run quite dearly. Yeah, they're, they're not stressing, are they? But as you say, they're not going to lie down, I think. Exactly, was a, yeah. It's a summary on what it's, he said. It's a record they want to hold on to. For sure. Uh, well, thanks very much. Um, we'll hear from you after lunch, um, immediately after lunch. Sorry, Gus and I were knee-deep in things out there, weren't we? But uh, now, during this interval, we can hear from England's new test captain, Joe Root, who will uh, captain his first match in July against South Africa. Last night on Five Live, he spoke to Phil Tufnell, Michael Vaughan and Mark Chapman, who asked him if he noticed any differences in the way his teammates treated him since becoming captain during the recent West Indies one-day series.
And welcome back to Abu Dhabi, the uh, Vaughan and Tuffers show there for listeners on Five Live Sports Extra. You're also listening to BBC Radio London uh, with Middlesex in a strong position uh, in, after the uh, first session of this, the third day. A big target for them, 305 to win there, 101 Four one. Nick Gubbins with 50 to his name, brought up just before the interval. Nick Compton with 31. Sam Robson, the man to go this morning, uh, caught Lees off the bowling of Leach for 20 after uh, Middlesex uh, wrapped up that uh, MCC first innings for 151. Liam Plunkett unable to bat and uh, also unable to bowl due to a calf injury after a strong first innings from the MCC of 332. Uh, I'm Kevin Hand. I'm delighted to say John Stevenson's alongside me, and I'm very guilty as well of never having John Stevenson on anywhere near enough when I'm at Lords because um, we always say it, we pass by each other at the back of commentary boxes, say hello and say, John, you must come on soon, and we never do. Um, so uh, it's taken me all the way to uh, it's taken me all the way to Abu Dhabi, but I've eventually um, got you up onto the mic. So uh, good to see you. How, how's the trip been? It's been really good, very interesting actually, uh, spending some time with some very talented young players. Mm. Um, I've been very impressed with the way they've approached things and uh, you know, the game's developing really well here. It's going to be a very interesting day, so it'll be a test of both sides really to see what happens as the day progresses with the sun going down. I think there's going to be a few twists and turns hopefully. Well, 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 absolutely. You've got the, uh, the three spinners. Four, I was telling um, Gus, with all soppers. Oxy bowled in the, uh, at the Emirates T20 for you the other day. Gus was looking at me out of the corner of the eye. You know, they've got three spinners, not four. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody yeah. well, Tom Allsop. But, yeah, that, that potentially when I was looking at the lineups, I thought this could be the biggest difference, the spin options that the MCC have. Yeah, that was potentially one of mm. our strong suits. Um, we've, we've had a bit of a setback, obviously, with Liam Plunkett mm. playing virtually no part in the game. Yeah. Um, and that really influenced our decision last night to bat again under mm. lights. I think in any normal situation, we would have stuck Middlesex back in yeah. and had a go at them. But uh, we backed ourselves, yeah. thought we'd have a bat, and uh, obviously we couldn't keep putting pressure on the, the young bowlers. So we're in the situation that we're in now, and um, I think it's going to be an interesting finish to the game. How many years have you been leading the MCC out here now? This is the eighth year. Eighth year, yeah. 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 Uh, this is the first year, though, of course, that the national selector, John Whitaker, uh, had an input as well. Yeah, we decided... Uh, James, sorry, James Whitaker. Yeah, yeah, we decided we were going to approach things slightly mm. differently, collaborate with ECB, uh, pick a team uh, out of some of the players from the North-South competition, because mm. they're already out here, and a few England lines. But the original lineup has changed significantly, and uh, we brought four or five players in from elsewhere, Lees and Lythe and Overton, and uh, actually, the team has remained pretty strong anyway. Yeah. So I was very pleased with the team we put together. And uh, the fact that they're so young and talented has been a bonus. I mean, it's just great to see these young lads progress. Well, they're giving the undefeated champions a 2016 real run for their money, aren't they? And actually, going into that uh, innings, we're looking heavy favourites, I'd say, the MCC. But Gubbins, uh, who has been a star for Middlesex and bailed them out, and likewise Compton, you know, they were two of the big... Two of the big stars when it came to Middlesex having their backs up against their wall, the wall last year. Nought for three at Nottinghamshire. Springs to mind, Gubbins coming back. Uh, and Compton, uh, likewise, doing a, a good job in the chase at, at Trent Bridge that day. So, um, yeah, the, <laughs> it's put Middlesex very much to the test. And they're still a long way from the target. 204 is a long way, as we've seen. When wickets go, they really do go in this one. It's going to be uh, Adam Lyth to continue after the interval. He's right arm around the wicket to Gubbins, who's on 50, and uh, full delivery dug out first ball. Um, so, yeah, to push Middlesex this hard, um, you know, not many were able to do it last year. No, I'm really pleased with the, the situation we've got ourselves into. It, it would be nice to finish it off, but whatever happens, I'll be proud of the performance of, of the team. Um, they've, they've really put in, they've tried hard. There's no l l sort of lack of effort, mm -hmm. despite the fact they're not playing for the counties. They're really putting in and being very professional. So whatever the outcome of this game, I'm very proud of them. Gubbins right behind this one, pushing back to... Uh to Lythe, he's got a slip, a point, a deep cover, extra cover, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, deep square and um, a short fine leg. As forward goes, uh, Gubbins pushing out towards uh, deep cover and a single is taken. Actually, that's very much 2020ism, isn't it really? That was a fielder at 45, <laughs> it's the proper description. Um, 103 for one uh, is the score, uh, 102 for one scoreboards. Quickened up after, uh, after lunch, you're listening to BBC Radio London and uh, Five Live Sports Extra bringing you coverage of the champion game here in Abu Dhabi as Lyth bowls. Down the track comes Compton, hits back over the uh, uh, bowler's head, and that's a lovely shot for four for Compton. Um, so, yes, uh, a 
pink balls, floodlights, uh, and in fact, you, you, you were the one that initiated with Angus Fraser to bring the match start time um, 30 minutes forward, just to negate that twilight period. Yeah, when I was reflecting on the start times, um, and I thought, well, if we're going to if we're going to reflect what we're going to do in England and what they're doing in Test match cricket day night, let, let's start at two, switch the intervals around, and um, and just um, try and mitigate that. Oh, Compton looks to use his feet again. He's got himself in trouble here. He's going to be stumped, is he? Oh, dear. That's a horrible mess. But I think he is OK. It looked for all the world. And as they all continued to look at the square leg umpire, I think the MCC did think they had Compton there. He gave a little shuffle to Lyth, having done so the ball before and hit him back over his head. Lyth dragged the length back on it. Uh, Compton got tucked up. The ball got through to the keeper. Um, the middle stump was removed by the keeper. I wonder, had he removed the bail in, in getting around? Is that what was the reprieve for Compton? Compton, because it did look, even though from a very bad angle that we're at, that um, Compton was out of his ground. Uh, what say you, John Stevenson? It's a bit of a mess, that, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever know. Um, but uh, we need a little bit of luck, I think. Um, a breakthrough, 106 for two would look a lot better. But um, Lies bowls again. Compton works into the onside. There's no run. We might just get a replay of it now, I think. I think this will be the uh, delivery. We're quite lucky out here with the replays. No, that was the shot down the ground. Uh, no, I think we're going to be denied a replay of the, uh, the attempted stumping. Uh, we shall endeavour to try and find it if we can. There's a replay system available for this game, which is absolutely brilliant. Imagine how much easier my life would be at Lords if I yeah. had this. Uh, 106 for one. Uh, one day county cricket, I'm sure, will uh, come towards having all the technology uh, that is available. But, um, yeah, so um, the twilight period was the, uh, was the issue, wasn't it, to bring the game forward? Yeah, well, the two nights we practice here, I noticed that twilight was around 20 past six to seven, the, the real twilight zone. So to bring it half an hour forward actually dealt with that, and it all made sense, switched the intervals around, as I say, and it seems to work quite well. Yeah, because clearly in that period running up to the second interval of the day. Um, the ball's doing a bit, uh, yeah, is which doing. is the beginning of twilight. So if they had, if it had been an extra half an hour there, mm. it could have been done by now in this game, <laughs> couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, it has which is not what anybody would have wanted. No, I think that actually the Duke pink ball has done a little bit more than uh, the cooker bar, I mm. think, in the past. But also, there's a little bit of grass on the pitch. We left a little bit of grass on, and um, it's a really good pitch. And it's actually made it very, very interesting. Um, we've got... Dilip coming up in a little while. He's the managing director of, um, of uh, Dukes, so he's behind the, the pink ball for this one, which uh, will be used for that round of matches. Will's going to have a chat with him uh, in just a little while. As here is Gregory opening up after the interval, and it's left alone by uh, Gubbins outside of the off stump on, on 51. Um, is it eight, uh, I said how long have you been leading the MCC out here? Is it eight, is it eight years out here now? That, yep, this that, is the eighth year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is a long time, isn't it? So obviously, there's been a lot of talk about it as well, and you know based at Laws as I am for half the season. There's always talk about, oh, I wonder will it move next year. Mm. There has been some talk, hasn't there, about whether that might be a, a possibility, that it will, it will be on the road elsewhere? Yeah, I think we're going to go back after this game and have a, a re review of the game and, and the destination. Mm. And uh, we'll make a decision once we also talk to ECB as well because of the collaboration with North-South. Mm. Which itself is on the move by the sounds of it. Yeah, that might be on the move. So yeah. I think it's... a discussion to be had when we get back to Lords, have a chat with Andrew Strauss and Gus Fraser and see where we take it. Could Gregory come back Bowles, here. This one outside the off stump. Could go elsewhere. So yeah, yeah. I think it'd be interesting. It's an interesting concept. Yeah, absolutely. And that, cause part of the com concept is spreading cricket where, where it is, which clearly has been done here. Um, you know, even on arriving the day before the North-South game last week, um, there was a lot of talk about the Cricket Academy that's out the back here and the nets that 300 kids on a Friday night, I think, um, 300 more than that, uh, plenty more than that, that turn up to the nets out the back locally. It's developed massively. I mean, I'm just looking out here. Um, this one's uh, full and driven away out to a deep point for a single by Gubbins. Eight years ago, none of this was here. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have the two ovals over there, the, no floodlights over the academy. Um, and all the counties that come over here, um, so, I mean, when we first got here, no, there was no one really playing much cricket. Yeah. So it's developed massively. It has, yeah. Um, equally, the ICC Cricket Academy is down in Dubai now, isn't it? And that's um, you know, massive again for the amount, the, 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 the participation there. Um, but certainly there was a lot talked about the participation here that it really has had an effect. Because um, one of the theories with the Caribbean was actually that perhaps the Caribbean needs a little bit of a jolt itself and maybe the MCC could help with... Uh, taking the match there, um, but up, up, up for review because the North v South, by the sounds of it, 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 it's here this year 
because it works for it to be here this year. But it's again, that one is very fluid as well. That could be that could be going to a number of destinations by the sounds of it next year. Because there's a few tours around as well at uh, this time of year. I think next year yeah. um, that it might tag onto us here is uh, Gregory Bowles, and this was pushed to point. Uh, by Compton, 107 for one. Um, but it has been a success here in, in, in the UAE. There's no doubt about that, is there? Definitely, and it's helped develop the whole concept of pink ball cricket, day-night test cricket. W without this, there would never have been any, any even any inkling of day-night test cricket mm. in the pink ball. So we've made some pro progress and I think helped the game. Uh, and I'm not saying that day-night test cricket with a pink ball should be played everywhere, but I think it it will certainly help stimulate attendances in certain areas of the world, and that's what we've, we've been aiming to do. Gregory's in, bowls full to Compton. There's a thick outside edge races along the floor to points. Gregory's just about to go up uh, in great excitement on that front. Um, and there will be a pink ball game this summer, won't there, for the county championship as well. Middlesex will be at, at Chelmsford, so not for Lords just yet. No, um, but as you say, there'll be a round of championship matches in June and then the first day and night test match at Edgbaston mm -hmm. in August, which really re is really, really exciting. And the ticket sales for that have mm. been excellent so far. Of course, for Lords, if it was to happen there, there is the agreement with the local council, isn't there? So it would have to be thought through quite extensively if there was to be... Uh day night one as uh, this ball's dug out by Compton up to mid off. Mind you, I suppose the floodlights are allowed for test matches, aren't they, at Lords? So um, theoretically, there yeah. wouldn't be uh, an issue. Theoretically, we could do it. Um, but uh, we have 14 daytime permissions, which we use for, t for test cricket. Yeah. Um, and we have 10 nighttime permissions. Quite a few of those are used for T20. Mm. Uh, but in theory, it could be done. But I think, see, Lords sells out. Test cricket, anyway, yeah. uh, during the day. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, of course. You no, know, at the moment, it's not really on our radar. I guess I was more thinking well, when I started the, the conversation, I was more thinking of Middlesex. Had it been Middles, you know, that round had Middlesex. I mean, obviously, it was worked out that it, they weren't, but in years to come, potentially Middlesex could. But then that would, uh, I suppose, take away from their uh, their day-night fixtures for um, one-day competitions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a tricky one. Perhaps not just yet, then. Perhaps no, not, not just yet, at no. Lords. Um, yeah, one again. There will have to be. <laughs> No, it worked out. Um, slight delay before the start of the new over here. It doesn't look as though it's going to be live. Is it going to be Mason Crane changing it? Yes, it looks like Mason. Yeah. Um, conversation with the uh, over the field at the moment. We've got a slip for Gubbins, a point and extra cover. Uh, point's going to drop deeper uh, for the leg spinner Crane. There's a mid off, mid on. Uh, orthodox mid-wicket, a shorter, straighter mid-wicket. Um, deep square, and that fielder at 45, as Crane will be right arm over the wicket, just down below, it's 107 for one. Good start by Middlesex, but it's still a long, long way to go. And as we've been saying, when wickets have gone in this match, they've really gone. And a cluster as here is Craney Bowles. Oh, it's a beauty first up, lovely flight, and he's got him. Well, forward goes Gubbins, big forward defensive, battle a long way ahead of the pad there, um, but... Uh, unable to make contact, and I have to say it was a very confident appeal from Crane as uh, as Gubbins pushed forward. He's gone LBW for 52, 107 for two, and that's a huge wicket for the MCC. That really is. We needed that. Uh, Gubbins was looking very dangerous, and I'm, I'm very pleased for Mason Crane because uh, he's a lad with a lot of potential, and mm. that will give him some confidence. The flight was beautiful on that one, wasn't it? First ball for a leg spinner. That's the bane of the leg spinner, isn't it? Dragging it down or... Uh, full tosses as well, but that was an absolute beautiful first delivery. He's such a natural leg spinner. His, his action is, isn't copied from anywhere. He mm. can see that uh, the way he approaches his bowling is so natural. He bowls at a good pace. He lands it in the right areas. But also, equally as impressive is the way he thinks about the game. You talk to him about cricket, he's got some plans. Mm. And for a 19, 20-year-old, it's pretty impressive. Mm. And uh, benefiting, of course, from work with Stuart McGill this winter. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's just got to be left to bowl. Bowl and bowl and bowl, and I think he'll, he'll become a star of the future. Yeah, uh, again, he bowled beautifully in that North v South match. You wouldn't have seen that, would you? Would you have been in, were, you, were you here for the North v South? He weren't, no. Uh, he bowled really well in the third game um, and was getting a lot of response out of the pitch, actually, which was two to the left of the one we're playing on. And I have to say, when I looked at the squads and saw the, uh, the difference in depth for the spin department um, and then the three, four, uh, if Gus will forgive me all sub, uh, options that the MCC had, um, I thought that was going to be the big difference, but there hasn't quite been the turn on this pitch as there was uh, on the other. 
No, there hasn't been much turn. It's just an excellent surface, and I don't think it's really going to turn much as the game pr progresses, mm. or how much is left of the game yeah. anyway. So our spinners are going to have to bowl really well and tight, do a little bit of a holding job until the sun goes down, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, and that was the story for Middlesex on the first day, wasn't it? A holding job by part-time spinners as well, uh, Milan and, and Robson. Here is David Milan, so it's another lefty for Crane to have a look at. Uh, same field, slip, going to crouch down. Looks like that mid-wicket's just moved a little bit sh um, shorter in, closer in for uh, Milan as Crane is in, bowls, and uh, Milan forward pushes back to him again. Beautifully flighted and well landed by Crane. This is his sixth over, one for 19, 107 for two. Crane moves in again. Looks like we'll be seeing him again in a few weeks for Hampshire. And so down the track comes Milan and clips him. Uh, back with a square on the leg side for a single. Uh, Middlesex have clearly tried to be very positive against the spinners today. We saw it with Leach earlier. There was a lot going over the top, wasn't there? And Angus Fraser had said, yes, that you know that was one of the things that we saw. You know, They've only got the two seamers now with the injury to Plunkett. So mm. if we can take on the spinners. And we're aware of it, but what I've been so, so glad to see is Alex Lee's leaving mid on and mid off up. You know, yes. I, I think it's a really good gamble to take. You, you see the mid off or mid on going back straight away these days, and I just think, you know, give it a go. And Compton and Gubbins chipped a few into the outfield mm. and took a chance. Yeah, yeah. It's good cricket, and that's and, and that was motivated by the fact that the t mid on and mid off were up. Yeah, Gus was impressed with that when he was up here. Uh, here is Crane. Oh, he does drag that one short. Um, real long hop, and it's a little tuck around the corner from Compton on the sweep to uh, move to 36, 110 for two. Um, yeah, yeah, young young side, as you say, um, for the MCC, uh, but an excited one. It had, they have really played some good cricket because in the Emirates T20, they went down their um, two-day competition now with uh, three matches on day one, three matches on day two. As the fixtures came out, the MCC would play their two matches on the second day. Uh, as this ball swept, uh, you know, it's almost hooked away, wasn't it, that one by Milan for a single out to deep square. Moves him to two. Um, the MCC managed to qualify for the final <laughs> three matches in a day. Um, so they really have, and it was quite a strong competition that day. There were Lancashire and Durham and uh, Warwickshire and the two teams from Pakistan as well, Lahore and mm. the Sami Foundation. Yeah, it's disappointing that the final was mm. rained off because we were in a pretty good position there. And uh, what I noticed about our young team was how f fearless they are. Mm. And uh, that they just the, the attitude, the positive attitude was, was great to watch. Crane bowls as well. Bold now. Compton's back right up on that one. It's gone through everything, uh, including the keeper. They're going to run a bye. Um, is it a leg bye he's going to signal? I think it went through everything. Yeah, it is a bye. Uh, 111 for two. The score that is the end of the over. Compton remains in 36. Milan has two. Uh, one more over, John. We'll, uh, we'll step aside um, for Will. Um, you've. <sighs> Ryan Higgins was called up late. You mentioned the chopping and changing of the MCC side. Ryan Higgins was called in the Middlesex uh, all-rounder and impressed greatly from a Middlesex point of view. I'm sure that uh, listeners would love to hear how he got yeah. on. I, I, I really like Ryan Higgins mm. as, a, as a cricketer. He is a 100 percenter. He's got a big smile on his face. He batted brilliantly for us that day. Bowled well, lots of variation. Um, and uh, I mean, these days, to have a, someone like him in your team who can bat high in the order, fourth seamer, third or fourth seamers, yeah. he's going to have a good career. He just needs to be given the opportunity and a great attitude. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing. He's got to, I mean, really, he's got to put pressure on the skipper, hasn't he? James Franklin uh, for Middlesex at the moment for that role. Um, Eskenazi next in line for the bat for Middlesex. He talks about his variations as here comes uh, Gregory beginning his seventh over. There's three slips behind Compton, who's down the track and thumping this in between cover and mid-off. Imperious shot that by Compton. 115 for two. Um, bold approach from Middlesex. Compton's on to 40. You mentioned his variations, Higgins. It's the accuracy of his variations that's key, isn't it? Very impressive. <coughs> yeah, he was uh, he was probably our best bowler on the day. And as you say, every variation he tried was, was spot on. Yeah. Um, so we, we enjoyed having him in the team. We also had to recruit Jack Burnham from Durham yes. when Liam Plunkett uh, fell ill that day. So you know, we, we had a few challenges that day, but managed to get to the final. And... Uh, as I say, it was a bit disappointing. We couldn't finish up, finish the job off. Gregory Bowles, this one pushed to cover by Compton, and there is no run. 115 for two. No, a shared trophy there, wasn't it, between yourself and Lancashire? But uh, an opportunity here. Another couple of wickets on this scoreboard now, and all of a sudden, what was a strong position at the interval for Middlesex becomes extremely nervy with twilights approaching. <laughs> I love the ebb and flow of yeah. day-night 
test cricket or four day cricket yeah. with a pink ball it, it's uh, it just adds an extra mm. dimension to the game and, and today is going to be no different I mean I, I, even if Middlesex go into twilight two down we'll still have a chance depending on how many runs uh, there are to get and uh, it will create another He's Compton on the back foot playing into the offside. Challenge for both bat bat batting side and bowling side. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Gus actually, as far as Gus is ever enthused, was quite keen but uh, watching it. Oh, the learning curve of it. Obviously, you've seen it for eight, uh, you know, for a few years now. They didn't play last year, did they? Uh, the day night one. It was just a daytime mm -hmm. match. But uh, I think Gus has been very interested, and obviously, it gives Middlesex a step ahead ahead of uh, first ones this summer. Yeah, I'm glad he he's enjoyed it because mm. uh, I mean I've seen all sorts of scenarios over the last eight years of day night cricket here and you know i've seen oh compton he's down the track again drives this one uh cover drive which uh, this time he was more to the pitch of it so it's all along the floor for four but still expansive from compton nonetheless he's on to 44. Mm. you know i've seen the ball um the, the bat dominate the ball at twilight here um in the past if you got really two, yeah, why, yeah. why so well because the pitch was flat two, yeah. two men in um a tired bowling attack so it depends on the situation of the game because milan was saying yesterday it felt like a twilight almost all day because of the overcast conditions yes it did yesterday was extraordinary i mean the, the weather has been very strange this time it's usually like this every day yeah and today has been the best day for batting probably hasn't it yeah definitely. in terms of overhead here but comes um, a foolish one from Gregory and a quick single drop by Compton to cover my word. Well, it's his grandfather's name there, wasn't it? As he pulled, called that single, it wasn't there. And uh, fortunately for Darwin Milan, the throw misses from Overton at cover. Otherwise, that was easily three down. 121 for two. Yeah. Just mind their work. <laughs> that, uh, that's disappointing that didn't hit. 120 for three would have looked like very nice. Yes, yes, it would have been a problem indeed for Middlesex. Um, yeah, because day one, the pitch perhaps uh, the pitch played it's played better on day one than it did on day two. I'd suggest for the batsman, um, there was a bit more movement in it yesterday. Maybe that was due to the twilight. I think the the cloud cover mm. was the main factor. Day one, it just stuck in the pitch a bit. And yeah. I was really really glad that we got those runs on the board, considering. Yeah. Because uh, it was a little bit tacky the day before with the weather we'd had. Um, Here's Gregory Bowles, and this ball's uh, turned through square leg by Milan. Uh, for two off Gregory. I think the pitch is at its best now yep. to bat on with the overhead conditions. Uh, but as I say, over the years, I've seen all sorts happen. Uh, bat dominate ball under twilight and lights and then the reverse. Mm. Uh, but it all depends on whether you've got batsmen in and the situation of the game. Mm. If you bat first, get 500 and stick the opposition in under twilight day two, you're in a good position with a new ball. Yep. Um, but... Uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's great to watch and, and something different. John, thanks very much. Uh, end of the okay. over here. Um, thank you very much for the time. Uh, well done. It's been a very entertaining tour to watch. Thank uh, you. So we'll see you, we'll see you at Laws. I'll get you up at Laws soon. <laughs> um, Will's going to sit down alongside me. 122 for two, the uh, score here. So Crane to continue just down below us. Uh, one for 22 for Crane so far. And Milan has four. Compton has 45. Um, as Crane's in, I'll just start this over and uh, Compton eases away into the offside. Uh, after a few words from Will, it's going to be Dillip who will talk us through the Duke ball uh, and Indeed. the pink Duke ball that's here Indeed. as well. Uh, will McPherson. So Crane's at the top of his run again. He's into his seventh over now. He's got, got Nick Gubbins a short while ago. He comes into Compton who has thrashed him to mid-wicket there. But there's no run. Straight to the man. I'm just being joined now. Very delighted to say I'm being joined by Dilip Jadoja from, uh, from Dukes, who, uh, of course, provided the ball for this game. As Crane comes in again to Compton, and he leaves that outside of some. Dilip, welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Fantastic to have you here. Have you, been, uh, have you enjoyed this game? Yes, indeed. It's uh, something quite unique. Yesterday was very unique. <laughs> indeed, yeah. Lots uh, of wickets. But, uh, you know, my, my purpose of being here is to monitor the ball throughout the game in all the intervals and so on and uh, and also actually watching it behave differently under different conditions it's been it's been very interesting crane's just knocked been knocked by compton out into the deep for a single have you so you've been delighted with how the ball has uh, coped it's the first outing of the pink duke in this game absolutely and uh, you know i think it's interesting the, the, the challenge is to produce a, a pink ball that'll work in all conditions and uh, you know, a lot of working out to do, but it's interesting to see the pitch here and uh, 
you know, it's quite a nice green outfield and so mm. on. So uh, overall, I think uh, we, we've done well. And of course, I keep on monitoring it and s see if it changes in other conditions. But uh, one of the main objects, of course, is to get it to play even better in Australia. Sure. Crane's just bowled one down the leg side to the left-handed <coughs> David Milan. It's run away to fine leg for five wides, I believe, or four buys. Um, so the score is 127 for two. The ball is being sent back to Crane at the moment, running along that quite lush outfield, as we've said, which probably helps the ball, I imagine. It, well, it does, of course. Um, but the pitch is, you know, pretty dry, and uh, it's, it's got a bit of grass on it, but uh, it's a very dry pitch. And uh, looking at the ball, it seems to be, you know, standing up OK. Here comes Crane again. He's been thrashed away on the leg side by Milan. That's going to be four more. That was a poor ball from Crane. And that is the end of the over, 131 for two. So, um, Dilly, I was, uh, we have wrongly said on air, and we should uh, definitely correct this, that the, 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 the pink juke ball is, is dyed exactly like a red ball? Is that well, it's dyed through. As, as, yes, as you can see, I have a piece of leather in my hand, mm -hmm. uh, which you sadly can't see on radio. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's dyed through. Uh, I can but, confirm but, it but, is but dyed But it's... <laughs> it's, it's uh, it, the surface has is, is, is got to be slightly different to the red ball because, you know, it's a vibrant colour mm -hmm. and you need to protect that. And so we have a pigment applied to it. And so it looks pink the whole time. And I think everybody who's been here has been you know, yes. remarking on that. Mm. Um, and, it, you know, it doesn't absorb grease like a normal red ball. But on the other hand, you know, if they leave one side and work on the other quite hard, they'll get, they'll get that going for them. It, 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 this is early days, you know, Indeed. so it's, it's useful for me to see what they're doing as well. And I think that uh, as time progresses, the bowlers will work out some way of making... I think to just leave one side totally without touching it at all would be one way forward right. and okay. really work hard on the other side. Gregory's just bowled the first ball of a new over to Nick Compton, who defended to mid on. Um, there was no run. It's um, because it has swung beautifully. I mean, the, the man who has got it to swung best of all probably is the man with the ball in his hands at the moment, Gregory, who's running in again to Nick Compton, uh, who guides him very nicely down to third man, where there's no field. The man at backward point is chasing it, and he's going to cut it off. But they are they're settling for two. They maybe could have taken on the arm. Um, have you been pleased with how the, the way the ball has swung? Indeed, and, and I think what people have got to realise is, apart from the surface of the ball itself, it's actually the shape. Mm. I mean, our hand stitch ball has got a particular shape, which does give it that advantage. And if the bowler has any ability, mm. you know, to swing the ball, then the ball will swing. Obviously, sure. it will swing more in more favourable conditions. But I think the shape is what it's about. And I think, you know, I was pleased with the, the kind of shape. That, and mind you, yesterday in the... Uh, Last session, it did swing. Gregory's been wrapped. Sorry, Compton's been wrapped on the pad by Gregory there, but it looked to me like it was going down the leg side. Yeah, and and so this is the ball that will be used in England's first day-night test against uh, the West Indies at Edgbaston in August. Absolutely, yeah. And um, so, in, and it, it, how long has it how long has it been in the making, if you like, at Dukes? Uh, well, you know, we've been doing coloured balls for a long time, but uh, I was in Australia earlier in the year when I met up with the people running cricket there and, um, you know, they, they said the challenge is to produce a ball that will work in all conditions. Mm. So I thought, well, i better set my mind to it and, um, you know, got cracking and did a lot of work on the research with the leather and getting the, the, surf the dye and then the surface finish right. And it's not been that long in getting this particular ball. Right. And um, so, you know, the, the evidence is there. I think it's good. The... Um the, uh, y your red duke, yeah. uh, to just move off the pink ball for a moment, is mm. currently being used in the Sheffield Shield for the first time. With And they've brought that in, I think, my understanding is, as Gregory's just at the top of his mark again, I'll describe this ball as he comes in, past the umpire, bowling to the right-handed Compton, who has turned him to mid-wicket and there's no run. My understanding is they've done that because they want to be better equipped to deal with the swinging ball, because the duke ball swings better, I would say, than the uh, Kookaburra with its less pronounced seam. Yes. They want to be better equipped come 2019 when they would come for the Ashes. Well, that, that's the main reason given, but I think it's also f a fact that it's good for cricket. You know, yes. I mean, all forms of cricket, and I think that they're discovering that it does what it should do, and, and therefore the, the batsmen will have to start getting more skilled in playing a ball that moves. That's what top-order batsmen are supposed to do. You know, try and play the swinging ball, mm. and uh, and you know, and also not just the swing, but it's also a question of the ball 
holding its firmness. Yes. So that's not a bad thing for the batsmen because they can get purpose, you know, to get some runs. And I believe that Ed Khan wrote an article in Crick Info uh, saying, you know, he just scored 200. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was, you know, sort of highlighting the fact that he thought it was good for, for batting and bowling, and, and he enjoyed batting against it. So that, that's, that's reassuring. Yeah. Promising. Mm. Is he uh, just change of ends here? So scores 133 for two. Nick Compton has 48. Middlesex are chasing 305 to win this game against the MCC, and they're not going too badly. They lost their openers, Sam Robson and Nick Govins, but both made decent starts. Govins reached 50. Mason Crane is just about to bowl his eighth over. Um, and we've got Dilip from uh, Duke, who, Dukes, who've provided the ball for this game. As Crane comes in, Milan is on strike, and he is swiped him away into the leg side but he's only going to get one run because there's a man waiting on the fence and um, in terms of the colour of the ball in this game have you been pleased with um, the visibility from the outfit we've from this sort of height and I need to emphasise quite how high up and far back we are yeah. as you, it's a very long way from the action but um, it's occasionally been a slightly difficult to pick up at at twilight sort of time as Crane just comes in again. Yeah, it's interesting actually because I walked around the ground yesterday in, in you know, those mm. new conditions and you can see it a lot better f actually from the ground players level. Have said there's that. there's they no, said that. no doubt about it. Mm. Yeah. There's yeah. been no complaints from them about picking it up in yeah. the field or in the deep yeah. or anything like that, where it's just it's the distance we are here. I think yeah. just a very and long way you know, it's, it's kind of a brownie surround, isn't it, mm. to this ground, even though the ground itself is lush. And also yesterday, I mean, the light was particularly strange yesterday. The sun never really came out. It was quite yeah. hazy. and Yeah, it was, it was a dreadful day, really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I came to you know, the Emirates for a bit of sunshine. <laughs> no, no it's so made, up for, made up for a day. It's a beautiful day today. Yeah, a lovely day today. Yeah. Compton's moved to 49. He cut Crane out to the man at deep point, and Milan's on strike as Crane comes in again. And that's on leg stump, and he turns it to the man at backward square leg, close in, and there's no run. There's a, there's a round of county games as well, as you yes, know. Yes, of which course. Which is going to be very interesting. Um, you know, all around England, and I think mm. it'll be very interesting to see what the scores are and here, how the games go. Here comes Crane again to Milan. That, who pushes up to mid-off, who's quite a long way back, so they can take a single... There, that's at a... Um, it's an interesting time, those games, because it's, it's day-night cricket, but it's a, a very long time of... The days are very long at the end of June, aren't they? So yeah. the, the, the night element isn't going to be p no. that no. prominent. It's, were, right. were you, what did you make of that uh, you well, know, decision to ha have it then? Uh, well, I think in general terms, uh, probably the cricketing authorities wanted the players to have an experience playing with, with a pink ball, you know, mm. whatever light. But I guess... It's interesting here, the tactics, you know, of who do you bowl when is emerging now. That's 50 for Nick Compton. He's, uh, he's got down on one knee and he's swept Mason Crane out into the deep. And the man, it should have just been one, which would have taken him to 50 anyway. But the man in the deep on the, uh, on the cow corner boundary has let it through his legs. So <laughs> he's got four for that. And it's, uh, that's his eighth four. He, he's got 53 now from 72 balls. Middlesex are 140 for two. And they're doing rather nicely here. As uh, That's the end of the over as well. End of Crane's eighth over. He has one for 34. Yes, it's, um, those games are going to be interesting to see how um, the light works, um, <laughs> whether it gets dark at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because in, in parts of, the, of, in, of England, in, in the end of June, it's the longest yeah. time of year, it's going to be um, 10 o'clock before it's getting dark. And exactly. Now, somebody's covering the game. I hope I'm... <laughs> you know, I hope we're not still there at 11 o'clock in the pitch darkness, but um, yeah. that'll be uh, interesting to see how the ball goes. The, the ball, shape-wise, we've just been having a look at one a minute ago, and I, I would say it feels exactly the same as a... The seam is the same as a red duke. And exactly. We, exactly yeah. the, the thread is exactly the same, it's just dyed black. You Here's know, Gregory exactly again. Ooh, and he's beaten Milan outside, outside his off-stop. And the black seam, that, that not all pink balls have had black seams, have they? Is, it, what, is that just a visibility issue? Well, we've always had black seams, because right. I think you must have a contrast. You know, you've got to have a contrast seam, and black is the best colour against any other colour, mm. apart from It's the sheerest so, yeah. colour, isn't yeah. it? So, uh, Gregory's at the top of his mark again. He's coming in past the umpire, and Milan is on strike, and he's always oh, driven hard at that ball, and it's run away down to third man, past second slip, 
between second slip and gully, actually, he's going to get four for it because there's no third man in place. That uh, takes Milan to 10. Middlesex have 144 for two. This brilliant sunshine, I think, is... It's obvious the batsmen are batting. Yes. <laughs> <easier>. Yes. <laughs> yesterday, I mean, we had, what, what was it, 16 wickets falling yesterday? Yeah. Um, and not particularly because anything terribly strange was happening. And it was just overhead conditions and it, the ball was swinging and it was, uh, the pitch wasn't too lively. It was just, um, it was excellent cricket yesterday as Gregory comes in again to Milan and he's on the attack again, but he's missed it and he's been bowled. He's trying to pull it, but it wasn't short enough and it hasn't got up and he's taken leg stump, I think. Maybe, maybe with a little bat on the way through, but he's bowled him. So that's Middlesex, the, the third wicket they've lost. He was slightly streaky, the ball before. It ran down to third man for four, and they are now 144 for three, chasing 305 to beat the MCC. That feels like a big breakthrough for Middlesex. Sorry for the MCC, Lewis Gregory, the bowler. He's had an excellent game. He's made contributions with the bat in both innings. He took five wickets. He, he, I think he's a man who will be giving your... Pink ball rave reviews, Delete, because he um, <laughs> he had it hooping around beautifully in the first innings. Yes, he did, didn't he? Yeah. He's, uh, I think he's probably been the uh, best exponent on it. Now, out, coming out to bat now is Stevie Eskenazi, who is on a pair, but it's also his birthday. 24th, I think. Um, we've already had one pair in this match, Tom Allsop, of the MCC. Uh, Eskenazi... Gregory got Eskenazi in the first innings with a beautiful ball that just shaped away from him and he was caught behind. So he will be a little nervous walking out to bat. But as I said, it's his birthday as well. 24, I think, today, Stevie Eskenazi. He's one of their promising young things. Um, it's just a little break in play. It looks like they might be having a, almost a drinks break as they... Uh, unscheduled drinks break. Nick Compton is the batsman he's oh. joining. We're joined by Dilip from Dukes, which is fantastic because uh, it's great to hear about how these balls come into being and uh, the, the, the work that's gone into them. And, of course, the, the big day, I guess, for this pink ball is, is August, when, or the big month, when, when England play the first test at Edgbaston with a pink ball against the West Indies. Yep. They've already played a pink ball test uh, against Pakistan, I believe, in the, uh, actually, maybe even in this very ground. Yeah. Certainly in the UAE. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Uh, I think it was here. Eskenazi's just taking guard. Gregory has three, three balls remaining of this over. Um, yes, I think it does. It just takes a little bit of adjusting, doesn't it? I think it's more, yeah. not so much for ball, but the actual idea of batting at twilight uh, as the sun's going down. Yeah. I, I think as time goes on um, and more experience... You know, people have more experience with all the conditions. They'll be having different tactics mm. um, to take advantage. It's certainly they bring the quickies on as soon as the lights the come. The lights come yeah. down, yeah. You can and you see the ball swing yeah. around a little yeah. bit more. It's difficult, more, slightly more difficult to pick up, possibly. Yeah. There's just a couple of adjustments happening to the field here. There are Eskenazi's on a pair, and he's got four slips for company. There's no man at fine leg. There's no one at third man. There's a backward point, a mid wicket, mid on, mid off, and cover. In comes Gregory, past the umpire. Eskenazi's first ball. He's left it outside off stump. There's a nice bit of shape on that one as well, just away from the right-hander, which is the delivery that Gregory bowls. It, uh, it's, been a, it's been a very promising start, hasn't it, for this, uh, this pink duke or dukes? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased, and I'm now working pretty hard on a white similar technology right to get it dyed all the way through rather than just yeah and to have, uh, you know so you can ha have one ball for 50 sure overs. yes uh, i think that's an important step forward if you can do that here's gregory again coming in eskenazi still on a pair and he's let that one go as well there's one ball left in this over yes because of course at the moment the uh in white ball cricket or 50 over cricket at least there's uh there's two white balls that there's one from each end yep. which do, uh, do you have bowlers coming to you and saying that they think... Because I think you know, the people always complaining it's a batsman's game these days, isn't it? Particularly white ball cricket. And that, that just sort of keep the... Uh, Gregory's just about to bowl the uh, last ball of his over. It keeps him interested, doesn't it? As he's just coming in past the umpire. Alex Worf at the other end. Eskenazi. Oh, he's beaten outside off stump. That's a beautiful delivery. I think it's just left him. Just what we're talking about. Eskenazi's faced three deliveries and he's still on a pair. 
Um, yes, the bowlers. That is, replays just running through there. It's a beautiful delivery. The, um, yeah, but bowlers, you'll always hear bowlers say it's a batsman's game, won't they? So the sight of a ball swinging around nicely in this game will certainly encourage yeah, them. Yeah, I, you know, I think the, the evidence is there. The scoring, the, the scores are going up and up and up in the one mm. day, in, in the white ball game. <clears throat> Both T20 and 50 overs. And I think uh, we're, not, we're not trying to tip the balance totally the other way. We're trying to say the bowlers need a little bit of encouragement. Mm. And if there's a bit of natural swing in the, in, the, in the ball because of the shape and so on, that's a good thing. Mm. <clears throat> and Crane's just coming in to start a new over. Apologies. And Nick Compton thrashed him away into the leg side, and he's going to get four for that. It's gone between mid wicket and mid on. Compton moves to 57. That's his ninth boundary. He's playing very nicely here. He's. Um, I don't think Nick Compton wants to come back tomorrow. Is my sense. I think he's in a hurry to get this done today. Middlesex are getting towards halfway towards their target at 305. It's 148 for three. The score. Nick Mason Crane is at the top of his mark again. He's coming into ball the second ball of the over, and that is driven off the back foot by Compton, but only as far as the man at point, and there's no run. Crane is into his ninth over. He has one for 38. The scoreboard is a long way away, and it's just a good test of the eyes. I think Kevin Hans will be struggling a little bit. Here comes Crane, and Compton's defending that into the leg side, and he's going to pick up one. It's just a nudge. Midwicket comes around and does the fielding. Is this the first time you've been to this ground? Luke, it this is week? indeed, yeah, it is. <clears throat> and did you, um, have you been to the, any of the other day-night tests? Have you been to either the, the test match in Australia? No, unfortunately not. Um, I'm looking forward to attending one. And certainly the one at Edgbaston will be the first one. Yes, yeah, I think it's a very exciting development. Be, I think tickets are flying for that. They are. That event, because... Uh, Edgbaston is a famously uh, raucous crowd, and the, uh, the Birmingham locals don't, don't need any encouragement to watch yeah. some of the uh, cricket in the evening there. Here comes Crane again. He's got two slips now for Eskenazi, and he's off for Mark. That's beautifully played. That's a, that's a sweep down to fine leg. It's very fine, and he's going to get four. That's a nice way to get yourself off a pair. He just preempted that almost. He stepped forward, down on one knee, and got a chunky bit of bat on it down to fine leg, and he's got four runs. He, it's his birthday, Stevie Eskenazi has said, so it's nice for him not to bag a pair. That would be a horrible way to spend it. Crane is at the top of his mark again. Let's see, in he comes, still two slips, and that is cut, but only as far as backward point. There's no run. Kevin Hand is uh, re getting ready to come back and join us, perhaps at the end of this over. There's one more ball to come. And Crane's just delaying it slightly. He's drying his hand on the surface, which probably hasn't turned quite as much as we thought it might on for after the first day. It's been a good track. I mean, certainly Middlesex are halfway to chasing 305. It's now 153, so 153 for three. So it can't be that bad. Here comes Crane again, and Eskenazi's just defending a full delivery straight back to the bowler. Delete, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to hear about the pink ball, and it's been a, a very successful first outing, I think. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity. No, not at all. To make thank sure you. that everybody knows <laughs> that the leather is dyed through. Well, we've been, pe we've been peddling this information for two and a half days, so it's important that we, uh, we put that right. Thank Thanks. you very much, Thanks. Delete. Thanks again. Bye. So, the end of Mason Crane's ninth over. Uh, Middlesex are 153 for three in their pursuit of... 305. Kevin Hand is settling back in next to me. Kevin, welcome back. Hello. That was very interesting. It was fascinating. Did you enjoy it? that? I did, very much so, yeah. It's very interesting to hit. delete has got a little box of tricks over there. It's Duke balls. Yes. Duke balls. Pink, orange, red, all sorts. In comes Gregory again to Compton this time. He's running down the track at him, but he's not got any of that extravagant drive. I think he was trying to put that back over the bowler's head, but it's just dribbled out to backward point for no run. Uh, yeah, so 153 for three is the score. BBC Radio London, five live sports extra. Will McPherson and myself, Kevin Hand uh, on the mic, and Stevie Escalazzi on four. Nick Compton, very good. Uh, 58 for him, and. He's playing nicely, isn't he? He is playing really nicely. Here's Gregory again, up to the stumps to bowl to Compton, and he's just. He's middled that straight to mid on. 
That was whistling away to the fence, but for the fielder, which is, you know, doesn't really mean much, does it? No, indeed. Um, an enormous number of tweets still to get through from earlier today. We, <laughs> no doubt. We need to get We back did an hour it. of it this morning. And we didn't um, even scratch Angus the surface, Fraser, did we? Well, no, indeed. Before Angus Fraser arrived. Um, many thanks to John Stevenson and Dilip. Stephen Finn should be up with us in a little while. Back to that in a moment. Gregory in again to Compton. He's just leaving that one outside off stump. Um, uh, it's worth reminding listeners they may have tuned in midway through talking to John Stevenson or Angus Fraser, both unable to comment uh, on events yesterday evening. So, um, yeah, it's almost a, an on and off button, isn't it? <laughs> we, we can talk about it when we haven't got guests, because otherwise uh, <laughs> it becomes a one sided conversation because the guests quite, simply can't talk about it. Of course, the MCC, part of the vote. Uh, floodlights just starting to come on here, which seems extraordinary because it's the loveliest day we've had so far in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Cricket-wise, uh, when, when cricket has been played, anyway, um, glorious sunshine, long shadows uh, from the players at the moment. Gregory up to stumps again, bowling to Compton. Oh, that's a brilliant take down the leg side by Ben Cox, who really is a classy wicketkeeper. Just swung a little bit mm. and uh, ran away from Compton down the leg side, and there's no run. The amazing thing with this roof above us, um, as opposed to the one below us, uh, <laughs> with this roof... Um, <laughs> I haven't seen the sun any of the days when I've actually been here because uh, it's such an expansive uh, roof, but also the sun's quite high. And it just occurred to me when I saw the long shadows there. You know, if you're at Lords now, you sun going to be setting away to our right-hand side as we look on from the media centre. Gregory up to the stumps again past umpire Wharf, bowling to Compton. Oh, he's tried to leave that outside the off stump, but he's very nearly played on as he withdrew his bat from... Oof, over his head, he just caught a little bit of a ball and it nearly hit the stumps with some ums and some ahs from the MCC fielders. Lewis Gregory almost set off in celebration when he saw Compton's bat make contact with the ball. He's, he's now, he sort of walked beyond the cover fielder. I've had a tweet from uh, Angela Gillam. Mm. Um, Hello, Angela. Chiding me, quite rightly. She said, so as soon as you said Middlesex were doing well, Milan goes... Did you see what I was doing with Angus Fraser? I wasn't overdoing it on this no. one. I just knew that one of them would go the next ball. And, and there's a bit of more of a backstory to that as Gregory comes in. I'll to explain after this delivery. Compton has drilled him to mid-off this time, but there's no run. She says, please confine your jinxing to The Guardian. And the story behind that is that I have a, a reputation with readers of The Guardian County Cricket Blog for jinxing their favourite players. Oh. Uh, anyway, I'll say... I'll be at a game and I'll say, Compton's batting very nicely. And then five minutes later... He'll be wandering back to the pavilion. Curse. Commentators Text curse. Commentators curse. Commentators as well as uh, please, radio commentators. Please confine your jinxing to the Guardian. Apologies, Angela. I will try to do just that. <laughs> um, Mark in Madrid says, Hi, uh, can I just say how much I'm enjoying the high-quality video along with the commentaries? Camera follows the ball and, live, and uh, tech scorecard. Uh, yeah, no pressure, MCC, to keep this up <laughs> at Lords this year. Um, the MCC putting together the camera package and uh, coverage well, we've, of this. We've got it ticking away in front of us, and it does look mm. fantastic, doesn't it? it does, and yeah. you'll be, if those of you who are watching will be able to see how the shadows are lengthening. Mason Crane mm. is just starting a new over, and his, his shadow is twice as long as he is tall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little harsh, but... <laughs> I'm not, yeah, he's certainly a taller man than I am. So um, I, I, I was also going on to uh, those who live in glass houses, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah, my, I, it's a very glassy house, my Here he comes. Guy. He's right arm over and he bowls to Compton. Watch be pushed into the offside and there's no run. Um, Alex is a very long-time tweeter of the uh, commentaries. He says, I understand the concept of the new T20, but can't see myself getting emotionally attached uh, to a team. Uh, will give it a try, though. And I think that's the challenge for the ECB, isn't it? For exactly mm. that, those who are prepared to give it a chance. And there's his foolish delivery pushed away into the offside by Compton off Crane. But that emotional attachment... Um, that the members have for their counties and to some extent that the, the, a lot of those mm. that would come to watch the T20 all right not regular fans and some who aren't even watching the cricket but are there for the event um, there is something of an emotional attachment with the history of these counties a bump ball back to Crane from Compton um, and that's the great challenge really isn't it because nobody's going to have an emotional attachment to any of those teams no they're um, going to be brand may new maybe in 20 years time we might have grown one but uh, grown an emotional attachment but here goes Crane. Balls. Oh, did that take an edge? I think it did. It's put down behind the stumps. Compton looking for a dashing drive. Um, I think that's dropped. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that we heard two noises there. And the effects might have edged and are very quickly 
have a look at it now. Well, the bat's been too quickly for us to tell. Certainly, Adam, Adam Live's reaction at first, first slip suggests that Ben Cox might have dropped that. Compton survives on 58, we think, as uh, this ball's full and driven down to mid on. 153 for three. We had an email sent through to the uh, TMS inbox, which has been forwarded on to us by Adam Mountford. I'll have a look at that one in uh, just a moment at the end of this over. Got three balls left of it. You can do tweets in the over. You have to wait to the end of the over for an email. <laughs> Here's a short one to Compton. It's cut away out towards point on the boundary, or bit out towards point, and it's going to be four. There's a cover in position. He wasn't going to be able to cut it off. Backward point as well. So at the end of the over, the scoreboard's frozen, hasn't it? Yes. Um, let's see. The score is 157 for seven at the end of that over. For three. Sorry, for three. <laughs> 157 for seven. 157 wishful for thinking, three. well, wishful thinking. <laughs> um, I didn't realise it was the end of the over yet, so I haven't got the email open. I'll go through a few more tweets, apologies. Um, Paul Howden says they have three years rebrand to rebrand this, but as old people are stuck in the past, and I am 55 and only support Middlesex. Um, again, that's why I think the T20 perhaps does have a still a future because there will be those who will not let go of their uh, emotional attachment to the counties uh, whatever the format that it's in uh, also interesting hearing from gus on list a obviously was restricted in the questions that i could ask but uh, <laughs> i was pushing him on on the relevance of list a um and the uh he, he gave a good defense of a, the, he did. the format didn't he um and uh, i think he was getting a little bit frustrated with me in the sense that i was pushing it so much but obviously there were questions that i couldn't ask <laughs> so um yeah to get um to get a little bit more of an extensive answer on the relevance of list, list A as it currently is, because of course that's one of the areas that well stands to lose the most mm. with the new T20 and new 2020 in the evening. But um, yeah, he was a staunch supporter of List A, and that's where the England ODI players are going to come from. Craig Overton is into the attack, replacing Lewis Gregory. He's bowling to Nick Compton, who has turned him to the leg into the leg side, but he's only going to get one run. The scoreboard thinks that that was Stevie Eskenazi, but I can tell that it wasn't um, because of the distinctive characteristic that Nick Compton has that we've been constantly reminded of by his teammates when they've joined us on commentary. Nathan Souter and Stephen Finn yesterday said he looks like he's carrying a pair of watermelons under his arms. And you can tell it's him. You can see him at the non-striker's end now with his elbow out as Craig Overton's up past him and Stevie Eskenazi's perfectly happy leaving that outside off stump. Is that Finney down there at the moment doing the MCC? It is, yes. The, uh, the, 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 the video chat that we were talking about last night is... Uh, is it going to be another 20-minute documentary from well, the MCC's Will Rowe? He... War possibly Dan Vittori before he got up here. Possibly, I might have arranged that the man sat next, stood next to him, Steve, uh, Stephen Fletcher, as I'll tell you more after this ball. Craig Overton, left outside off stump by Eskenazi again. He might come and join you in ten minutes, just while I have a quiet little chat with his uh, the man sat in the seat, Stephen Finn. Oh, Fletcher's going to join us. I think possibly I might ah. have I might have set you up with another guest, ah. another Middlesex man. You might have uh, look at that. You might have set me up with a guest. I'm going to take Stephen Finn so you can have the press officer. <laughs> I might have set you up with a guest. <laughs> Will, I've been sat here for too long. Here comes Overton into Eskenazi again, and that's oof, that's got up on him, and it's hit him on the hip um, and just popped up into the offside. Eskenazi is giving no indication that he's in any pain, even though Overton is the kind of bowler who can cause a little bit of soreness for batsmen. He digs it in, he's pretty quick. Alex Legat, I think, responding to something you said earlier regarding branding. Uh, with no city regional connection, uh, don't you just end up with anonymous team names, e.g. Dolphins, Titans in South Africa? Yes, possibly. In comes Overton. That's left outside off stump again. Um, he also adds, um, and is that going to encourage people to go and see them? Personally, I think a team needs some kind of identity, which goes back to the emotional attachment, which was uh, another Alex, actually, uh, a different Alex that had just put a moment ago on Twitter. Yes, it, it is, that's a very interesting point. Um, the, I mean, I think that the idea is they're going to be represent regions, but not necessarily be identifying, you know, identified by name. So, oh, and here's a nice point from Paul Howden as well. Here comes Paul. Delivery. Here comes Overton first. Oh, Paul will have to wait just a moment. That's feathered by Eskenazi, but Ben Cox has got across well and prevented any runs down a fine leg. That's the end of the over, I think. And the score is 1583. Uh, Paul says if three Middlesex players play for each London side of potentially, of course, there could be three, you know, an East London, North London, I think and it's South going to be London. North and South. 
I think it's going to be so one base to so be Essex over. Is, one yeah. base to be over. The, one base. The to Olympic board. Stadium, of course, was that. Well, I think the, I think possibly the plan. They're just going to have a drinks break, so this is a nice little pause for us to have a chat. I, that would um, also bring in the. Uh, Essex crowd as such perhaps whereas Laws might not draw them in but anyway Paul says if three Middlesex players play for each London side then who do I watch? Uh, and that's something about the draft uh, auction that they're going to have to work out because perhaps the identity is crucial i.e. Um, that people if it's city based then you associate as best you can with those cities by, by the players being pushed into them. A little bit like the North-South here. I mean, it didn't really mean anything to whether the South beat the North or the North beat the South, but it was just something, wasn't it, for people to identify with. Grab hold of. Yeah, no, you're right. It, um, yeah, I think it, it will be a little bit of uh, following your favourite players. I can see Stephen Fletcher marching across the last. Um, I think, that, yeah, possibly following your favourite players to the team that they ended up tra being drafted by or purchased by, or whatever the mm. term's going to be. Uh, Mark from Madrid um, was saying a good point about the county championship cross. Uh, far larger than the popular belief, uh, the only time I, was, uh, I have sat in an empty stand, or an empty ground, sorry, was 1982. Um, P.S. It was Middlesex versus Gloucestershire, and I counted five people in the stands. Attendance is so much larger day after day now, and so cheap. Um, uh, yeah, that's the thing. The attendances for county championship do seem pretty healthy. You do occasionally still see the day, I mean... You know, obviously, it was much it was made of one man and his dog. What, 15 years ago or so? It's a bit um, of a cliche that, and not one that I really like. Well, no, exactly, and it's not true anymore. Yeah, it's, it's just not valid. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there was an element. You know, of a time where the, certainly the attendances could be a little depressing around the around the stands, but um, you do see such good numbers in for the championship now. Um, which we had another. And one thing on that, it will be very interesting to see how um, the timings of championship games last year largely games began on Sunday mm. this year certainly the early part of the season we're going to start on a um, Friday so Friday Saturday Sunday and then a climax on Monday for the yes hardcore support families hopefully will be flooding in on the mm. weekend I don't know whether that's wishful thinking but mm. you know and the Middlesex chief executive was a big fan of that Friday start to the championship he's got his wish so um, I think the key as well is these things have to be given time to work they went for the uh, Sunday starts um, with limited success, really. Um, but again, things have to be given time to work. Um, and I think there is um, something to work with in the Friday start. I, I personally found, I should say the Middlesex Chief Executive is here today, but um, there really is no point in getting him up on air when he can't comment on, no. on so much. I mean, you can talk around things with Angus Fraser because he's got plenty more to offer as a managing director of cricket. Uh, so you can talk around uh, the point, but really, um, as such, there's nothing that the uh, chief executive can say on that matter, and uh, that primarily is the number one topic mm. for chief execs and chairman at the moment. Uh, Liz Mitchell says, what Laura said on all counts, uh, she tweets to say, Laura earlier, who was uh, a big earlier? pro uh, county yes. uh, fan, um, and also quite anti a lot of the issues uh, that we've said. For, uh, to future proof cricket, uh, you need to make it a blue chip event on the BBC like FA Cup games, says Liz. Um, did have an email to get through as well which yes. of course now the drinks break is a very good time too we've got so many tweets from earlier and I feel so guilty that we haven't got through anywhere near that as, as Kevin digs out that email I'll just uh, give us a little run of the state of the game it's 1-5-8-3 oh, got, 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 got it don't worry yeah, they're yeah. just coming back from drinks break so. um, I'll be quick yes you're quick enough I'll be quick um Dear TMS, writes the correspondent, um, which is Christopher. Uh, we're not TMS, but um, <laughs> he sends it. And I wouldn't encourage people to email TMS today because they're really well earned day off, I'm sure, uh, rather than uh, forwarded on the emails to us. Do tweet us at Kevin Han, BBC at Willis underscore McP. Uh, uh, dear team, shall we say then? Uh, I've just heard you talking about the new City T20 uh, idea on air and how it's intended to attract a new audience. But in my closest city, Bristol, there are currently seven T20 matches a year played by Gloucestershire. So how is it that people who aren't interested in cricket currently are suddenly going to become fanatical cricket followers simply by having a local T20 team called Bristol instead of the current Gloucestershire team? It makes no sense to me at all. Regards from Christopher, uh, Somerset member and supporter. Here comes Crane. Uh, oof. Eskenazi's Mr. Cut there. Well, with a team in the West, which would be primarily played in Cardiff, uh, but maybe with a game or so in Bristol, Bristol, I guess they're hoping on just as the entire region drawing in, not just from Gloucester. It's been caught at mid-on. It's floated up by Crane. 
And Eskenazi's got after him, and he's... Sorry, is it Compton? It's Compton. It's Compton. Sorry. He's got after him, and he's been caught at mid-on. He's gone straight to him. He's got a slog sweep style stroke, and it's just... The field hasn't had to move, has he? No, uh, it didn't get hold of that one, as John Stevenson was saying, and Gus as well, when he was up here, Angus Fraser, that they kept up mid-off, kept up mid-off and mid-on. Uh, mid-on there was just retreated slightly to a deeper mid-on, and it was a very comfortable catch. Compton not getting hold of it at all. You probably heard the nasty noise off the bat. Mm, it's the captain, Lees, who's taken the catch. It's good bowling from Crane. He's just tossed it up slightly, and it was full. And Compton looks furious with himself as he walks off. Um, it's an interesting piece of batting, though, straight after the drinks break, with the twilight period coming... He's, he's tried to cut the first ball and missed it. And then the second, he's just sent straight to mid-on. And it's gone for 59. So two Middlesex batsmen have failed to kick on after getting 50. Nick Gubbins made uh, 52. And he also was dismissed by Crane, LBW. John Simpson comes out at number six. The hard-hitting wicketkeeper batsman. Nick Compton's not happy with himself, unsurprisingly. No, such a good innings, wasn't it? He was, he was very attacking, uh, but that's a big blow to Middlesex. You still need uh, another plenty. Wait one moment. They've got, they're on 158 for four now. And they're chasing 305. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it would be a region, wouldn't it? So they'd be hoping that they could make... They could recruit in um, families from all across. And the, the, well, I think the main thing they'd be hoping is that there, there would be some translation from the competition being on television to the new to uh, to fat fans wanting mm. to go along and watch. But as we as was discussed earlier, one of the tricky points about this is right now, from what we understand, there's only going to be eight games of the 35 would be on or 36 would be on TV. So you know that, that's that's a Palette wetter rather than a uh, rather than the whole competition like the Big Bash or the IPL. The rest would be behind a we we expect would be behind a uh, a paywall. So the left-handed Simpson is awaiting Crane, who's at the top of his mark. It was one slip, a short mid wicket, a cover, backward point, mid off, mid on. As Crane comes into Simpson first ball and he's down the wicket first ball. He's trying to drive, but he's only got it as far as the bowler. It's going to be a tricky period to bat this. It's still a long, way. And it's still a long way to go, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in this run chase. So uh, 52 overs remain after this today, so 16 more until T. Here's Crane again to Simpson, the left hander, and he's back and defending into the leg side. Simpson batted well in the I'm first. I'm thinking old school there, sorry, 20 more overs till T. Uh, Simpson, yes. 20 uh, overs till tea, you say? Yeah. Till dinner. Till dinner we've dinner. had tea, haven't we? Yeah. We've, had, we've had our tea. It's, uh, it's 20 past five, 21 minutes past five now, local time. So it'll be dinner next. It's taking some getting used to, I think, particularly for the players, as Crane comes in again. And he's turned by Simpson, who's off the mark, through square leg for a single. The man on the fence does the fielding. And there's one run. Uh, MB tweets to say, uh, why would you take away the context of a tournament that already has support? The IPL and BBL were dull TV for UK viewers with no geo investment. Um, as a Hampshire fan living geo in Scotland, investment. i.e. their um, locational investment. Um, Here it comes Crane again to Eskenazi, the right hand of his time, and he's forward defending, very nicely played. As a ha Hampshire fan living in Scotland, what is the re relevance of this tournament to me? Um, I, at least he was a Hampshire fan living in Scotland who was invested in Hampshire, uh, an interest in Hampshire. Um, but that, again, that, that, that's the evolution of the argument now. That's the challenge that the ECB face with uh, what they have. Um, Vincent, oh, it's another Hampshire fan who says, I am excited by the new league. I am a Hampshire fan and I think we need more kids getting into it or the fan base will die off. Well, Hampshire, are obviously, I say obviously, Han Hampshire are traditionally one of the teams that have struggled to get a big T20 audience, aren't they? Um, you know, they you've are. got the Aegeus Bowl, you've got this wonderful... It's great uh, ground, but it's seven miles and from Southampton and yeah, it's nowhere well, equally, near a train that's, that's somewhere that you would have thought... Um, you know, across the coast there, actually bringing them in if this uh, city base works. City based team, because you'd base one there, certainly. Uh, here's Overton into the attack. He bowls, and this ball's pushed to point, and there's no run. Um, this was one that came through just before the break, and apologies, couldn't get to it then. Uh, 
Pierre says, uh, the last time I watched Middlesex bats, Live and Lees were bowling. It was brilliant. <laughs> Best day of my life. Hail the champions, says Pierre. Well, apparently, um, Alex Lees was heard yesterday saying uh, that he might bring himself on to bowl at some stage because he's got two first-class wickets. I think they're both playing in this game. And some bowls, and uh, forward goes Simpson pushing into the onside. There's no run. For Middlesex. So, um, possibly he could be on as a... As a specialist, I see James Harris down below us. He's bringing his pads out into the cage. Here's one for you that I don't think is quite true, but I'll let you answer it. Uh, <laughs> lack of exposure, i.e. little or no terrestrial coverage over recent years, means cricket is now a niche sport in the UK. It's still the number two sport. And it's the second cricket... cricket Here's that over to bowls to Simpson. It's pushed up to mid-off. It's the second uh, quickest growing sport in the world. It, well, it is, but I, I think you... Personally, um, I much prefer the game of cricket to rugby union, which I also occasionally cover, but I would say I think you'd struggle to argue that cricket in the UK was a bigger sport than rugby union, given the fact that it, rugby union is a six-week period where it in the spring every year, where it's sort of the uh, much talked about with the Six Nations, whereas cricket mm. doesn't have that period. It has it sort of every couple of years with a home ashes, maybe. Around the wicket comes over some bowls, and this is pushed up to uh, mid on for a single I wouldn't, by I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a niche sport but I certainly think um, it, its relevance is declining and that's it, there's interesting parallels there with uh, the Australian introduction of the Big mm. Bash one of the reasons Cricket Australia was so compelled to bring in the Big Bash was because they did a study which found that <laughs> among kids it, 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 the game had slipped I think to the seventh most popular sport among children in Australia even where we consider it the national sport Here's Herbertson, he bowls, um, and this is left alone outside of the off stump, 160 for four. Uh, every time we mention this, <laughs> the Twitter inbox goes through the <laughs> roof. Um, people really do want to have their say on this today, and we will continue to try to get the balance right between play and the tweets, and our guests as well. Uh, Dan added, I fear that, the, uh, that even with the new T20, with its presumably free-to-air coverage and big stars, it may be too little too late. Um, i.e. rivaling the IPL and BBL. Well, too little, too late potentially for that competition. My fear was that it wasn't too little, too late for the NatWest T20 Blast, if done properly, as is Overton outside of the off stump. And uh, left alone by Eskenazi, one of the heroes with a bat last year. Uh, Katie Scott says current fans aren't just attendees. It's all the people who listen, follow and would attend if scheduled better. But I suppose as well, you know, we've been... Pleased, very pleased with the radio figures for the last few years, uh, how they've grown and grown and grown, especially with the five live sports extra coverage added to that uh, of the BBC local radio coverage of the counties, and the figures have um, literally blown us all away at times. I think that's just how much following there is. So there is the interest there. People just can't physically get to the ground. Actually, so I think there's a real, that's a really good point from Katie that the, the particularly Championship cricket, rather than hmm. the List A or T20 stuff, is, is has a huge following remotely. But it's just very difficult to get to, and you know, there's a lot of days of cricket to fit in, and I don't envy anyone who'd have to make the schedule. Um, here's Crane, bowling to Simpson, who's turned him round the corner, past the man at 45. And they're going to come back for two. Will they get a third? No, they don't look like they fancy a third, so they're going to settle for two. Uh, and actually, the end of last season with that extraordinary finish between uh, Middlesex, Somerset, and Yorkshire. Was, was a little view into quite how popular the competition was. You had 10,000 people pouring into Lords, and we, you know, all the websites who cover the competition and had their, broke their records, and the same with the BBC commentary. Here comes Crane to, uh, to Simpson. He's wrapped him on the pad, mm. but I think that's just going down the leg side, and the umpire agrees. He's given a leg by. They've scampered through for a single because it just popped up into the leg side. No, one run. It takes the score to. 163 for four. Um, well, when we started doing these commentaries, everybody said to us, are you mad? Look at how many people are in the ground. Uh, you know, it was said to us quite often. Mm. Well, what, why, why? You know, 13, 14 years ago when it, the internet uh, championship commentary started, um, why on earth? You know, you know, there's barely a thousand people in some of these grounds uh, watching championship cricket. Who on earth do you think is going to listen to it? Here's Crane again to Eskenazi, the right hand of his time. He's coming down the track to him and he's just driven to cover when there's no run. That's good fielding. But how wrong they were because mm. there's been a huge appetite that has grown with the che technology. Uh, I mean, the figures back then on a county-by-county -county basis I think were bigger because it was only Surrey and Middlesex doing it, so everybody <laughs> had to listen to those two counties. Here's Crane again to Eskenazi. He's just defending in front of his front pad. But overall, 
the uh, figures now, especially with the sports extra coverage added on top of it, uh, ha have really grown dramatically. So, uh, afternoon from Madrid, says ZK, uh, ZK Go, can't see how new T20 will attract new fans if they've decided Blast already isn't doing so. Here comes Crane again, and Eskenazi is using his feet again. He's drilled this to mid off. They're going to run one. Good fielding, I think, by Craig Overton there. It is Craig Overton. He's the biggest in the MCC team by some distance. Um, T20 Blast needed to be backed more by the ECB. Sad they've decided it's not the way forward. Well, that was certainly well, I think, my feeling. Uh, I, th I think what's happened here is that the ECB have just decided to take it out of the county's hands mm. and do it themselves. Here comes Crane again. Simpson's driven him down the ground. It was a beautifully timed shot. He's only going to get one because Leeds is coming across from mid-off. Um, the, the counties needed more backing, i.e. the backing that the ECB are going to give to the new competition so that, that they, they could have given to the counties. What the counties needed is subsidies so that they wouldn't have to charge 20, 30, 40 pounds a ticket. They could charge 10 or 15 or 5 quid or a quid for kids or whatever. Uh, and th that has ended up... The ECB have decided they'll do it themselves. Um, Peter Mead says you've had a great series of guests in this game with the players, David Townsend, Daniel Vittori, and a very relaxed Gus Fraser. Full marks from me, Peter. Uh, and we've got another good guest coming up as well. So, we'll, uh, well, oh, I've asked one. Matthew Jackson of Sporter to come up and have a chat with us because he's the man that organises all of the stuff for all of the counties out here, which is a logistical um, nightmare. But he's had a smile on his face all week long, uh, unbelievably. You were supposed to be off to interview Finn now, but the MCC are doing even longer with Finn than they did with Vittori yesterday. Unbelievable. Um, Matthew Jackson of Sporter, hello. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mic. Thank um, you very much. Uh, thank you for coming up to see us. Um, the, uh, amazing setup out here in uh, UAE now for county cricket ahead of the season, um, of which uh, you organise this game for the MCC and the Champion County, uh, and all the pre-season tours that happen as well. There's the 2020 competition down in Dubai as well, um, with uh, Durham and Lancashire, Warwickshire. Uh, the MCC all playing their part here. Uh, in the meantime, is Jack Leach change of ends? I was thinking it was live, but it's Leach. He's going to come in from the far end. He's got a slip in place behind John Simpson, who's on five. And Leach steps in now. He bowls, and this ball's cut away to backward points. Uh, there's no run. Uh, so, yes, uh, quite the operation. And um, yep. it started yep. much smaller than this for a little while, but it's expanded in a great way now with the pre-season here in the UAE. It did. I mean, you said we, it's a nightmare organisation, but it, it's actually been a dream this year. The, the counties have been very easy to look after. But as you say, we've had quite a few out here. Um, uh, I think probably we've had... Uh, Here's Leach. He bowls. This ball's pushed to uh, cover by Simpson. Probably had a, get it on for half the county cricketers yes. uh, in the country out here, yeah. not with, just with the counties, but also with the uh, ECB North v South series, which we also organise. Of course, sorry, and, the North South, and, yes. And the MCC as well. Here's Leach, Bowles, and Simpson's on the back foot pushing back. Because, uh, uh, yeah, the day I arrived, just before the final, uh, or two days before the final North South game, uh, you know, you walk into the hotel and you thought, well, if you're an autograph hunter, you've got half of county cricket out here and, you know, a good few England players as well. Uh, as well as the England management. Uh, we had yes. Trevor Bayliss, Strauss, yeah. Strauss, and etc. So, yeah, Worcestershire, Warwickshire, Essex, Yorkshire, Lancashire, uh, obviously Middlesex, Dublin, yeah, yeah. Uh, all out here. Um, so uh, county cricket really does, for the first couple of weeks of March, uh, tend to decamp out here and we, mm. we run them all around and, and, uh, and look after them. Has it mainly grown from the uh, MCC's um, championship game moving out here as Leach moves in? Uh, bowls to Simpson. This is driven wide of uh, mid-off for a quick single, 166. Uh, one si yes, 166 so for the, five. The, the MCC coming out here coincided with the first counties coming Eight out years here. So ago, they've, yeah. they've sort of grown side by side. Yeah. Um, and obviously the MCC tend to, to pick their side from county cricketers that are out here as well, um, mm -hmm. which they just extend their their, their pre-season to, to join the MCC. But yes, it has grown. Ten years ago was our, our first, ten years ago this week was our first county side coming out. Essex yeah. and Sussex came to this very stadium and played each other in a couple of games and that was the start of yeah. county So it was just two teams, that was, that was before the MCC came out, so it, it was, was just two yeah, teams came right, out and yeah. played a, a, a four-day game before the start of the no, season? No, they played a, a couple of 40-over uh, games. 40-over oh, was, was, uh, oh, yeah. was the format of the, the one-day games then. And that included a, a young Alistair Cook ten years ago. Uh, Grant and Andy Flower. Here's a uh, leach around the wicket. A reverse sweep from uh, Eskenazi. Fine shot for four. Back at a point. It, he moves to 13. Third boundary for Eskenazi. 170 for four. Of course, your son was on the books with um, Sussex. That's Callum, right. yeah, Callum, Callum Jackson. Jackson. Yes, he's been. And he also played uh, for Kent last year. 
So uh, he's been out here. Has he got a contract with Kent this year? Not at the moment, no. So, so uh, yeah, he's, he's out there looking for a county he, at the moment. Is, that's right, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a, a batter keeper. Uh, top, of a, top order batter and, uh, and keeps working. So. Yeah. Here's, uh, hello, how long is he at Sussex? I'm sure I saw him play against Middlesex. This here is uh, Leach around the wicket balls he, to Eskenazi left alone. He played against Middlesex this year at Lords uh, on Ladies' Day when there was a, a one day game, 50 hour ah. game between. Uh, uh, Were you there for it? Oh, yes. We brought the missus yeah. along. It's a lovely yeah, day, Ladies' Day, day at Lords. One family came along. It was, a, it was a great day. It was a nice day weather wise as well. So. Um, yeah, very good. So, uh, yes, but we don't just bring county cricket clubs out to uh, uh, the UAE. We, uh, next week we start uh, one of the largest international schools tournaments mm. out here. So we have 18 schools coming out, first week of April, playing 48 games, uh, mainly from the UK, top independent schools. Uh, Alistair Cook's old school, Bedford are here, uh, Bradfield, uh, teams from the UAE uh, and, and from around the world coming to play here. In, in so we, we moved from the pros to the uh, to the schools in, uh, in the space of a week. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, one of the reasons I asked you to come up and have a have a chat was, um, you know, because it, it is an expansion. The county summer now, isn't it? it expanded to the with this county championship match coming out here. But the pre-season is incredible. Pre-season starts pretty much in November, doesn't it, for counties now, which then evolves through to uh, uh, some warm season pre-season trading. As this ball's hit down to mid on by Simpson for a single. Off Crane, a change of end for the leg spinner as well. I think um, there's only so much uh, they can do in the indoor schools. Well, indeed, uh, and, indeed. Uh, but I think getting out here to, to play in some nice warm mm. conditions. Uh, we, we, we had John Stevenson up here um, just after the interval, and uh, you know, uh, as ever, there's always rumours about this, that, and the other. But potentially that this um, championship game could move to the Caribbean. Uh, it's yeah. been mooted for a while, um, as the sport's given a bit of flight by Eskenazi. He's in a way into the uh, offside, which should hold no food for you, I'm sure, because you just moved the whole operation to uh, right, wherever yeah. it goes, having worked with them so long on that one. But, you know, there's the potential it could go to the Caribbean um, and also, you know, there are other options. The North East South game, yeah, Sri Lanka was also mooted, wasn't it? Um, but the North East South game is highly likely to be somewhere else next year uh, as this is pushed back by uh, Eskenazi up the track, 171 for four. And again, it was uh, you that the ECB came for and said, right, look, we need this. Can you help us get it set right, up for yeah. this year? Because obviously that happened in a relatively short space of time in the terms of organisation. It was, it was. And, and we did everything from, from as soon as they leave the UK, we got them on flights. Down the track comes Eskenazi. Hasn't quite got hold of it. Midon's backtracking. He's not going to take this one. And uh, they'll pick up two, just pitches and stops again. Uh, Eskenazi moves two. I think that's going to say 15. Uh, but I'm not trusting those rounder numbers on, on the scoreboard over there. It's a long, long way away. It is 15. Uh, 173 for four. Yeah, we, we, so we, we moved the whole group out mm. to uh, the UAE, and some were coming in from Sri Lanka, hotels, yeah. transportation, food, grounds, the umpires, the, the whole works. Here's a uh, full delivery. He's the way to backward point, 173 for four. Yes, because it has been fascinating to see, as I say, um, just having come out here and experienced it, seeing the North v South, the transition of the teams that have come and gone. Yorkshire and Lancashire are out here at the moment playing Lancashire in a Roses left this match. Morning. Did they finish yesterday? I thought yeah, they were still playing today. No, that's right, it was a two-day game, so they left this morning. Uh, Cranes in, bowls, and uh, down the track. And York, Eskenazi York, York, York pushing to the upside. tomorrow. They do, yeah. yeah and, then, and, then, uh, and then these two teams the day after, having yeah. a, possibly having a day off tomorrow. Quite possibly, yes, yes. Um, which <laughs> I'm sure they won't mind the heats. Um, but then again, that pre like I say, the pre season now is so important because the, uh, the reason why the Caribbean is the other good option is because of the temperature at this time of year. Yes. Um, and also, America's been mooted over the years as well, hasn't it? Yeah, Actually, moving on to the mainland. Um, it's true. We've been, we've been looking at Fort Lauderdale uh, for in camp, Florida. In fact, I was there uh, just before Christmas um, and was really impressed with the facilities there. Yeah. Uh, Fort Lauderdale Stadium is, is something else. Uh, and. Uh, a big uh, cricketing loving, loving community there um, yeah. from the subcontinent, from the Caribbean. Mm. And do you have somebody who goes and inspects the, pitch, inspects the pitches for you as well? Yes. So Maybe we, your we, son Callum, you bring him with you. No, 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 no not him, no, but we, uh, we, we do have people um, and, and we have testimonials from other teams that have played on, on, mm. the, on the wickets and what have, what have you. So yeah. that's the most important And the Fort Lauderdale part. track in Florida, would that be capable of hosting the Champions it's match if it did move? They had a T20 between India and uh, New Zealand. Uh, at the end of last year. His leech, he's left arm over. Bowls and this ball's played away into the offside and there's no runner. Uh, sorry, was, uh, between... West Indies and... Uh, uh, they did, didn't they? That's yeah. right. Uh, West Indies and... Sorry, it was um, West Indies and India. Yes. And uh, it was the highest 
uh, scoring T20 international yeah. in history. Yeah, yeah. It was T20 played T20 or something. Was like that, that the T20? first international played on that ground? As this was pushed into the no, other side, they've had a few, Simpson. but uh, not of that no, level. No, 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 yeah, that level, so. the championship match obviously been a first-class game, four-day game. They'd yeah. look at the pitch as well for that, would, wouldn't they? In they terms would. of how yeah. how it would play, because the Caribbean was the first one that was mentioned. But yeah, the mainland uh, in the US as well has been. A trip to Fort, Fort Lauderdale next year. Come on, Gubba, you need to win the title again next year. Here's um, Nick Gubbins is at the back of the commentary box as this ball's pushed away into the offside. But 173 but, but, but for four. The key for counties is not just the weather; it's that 22 yards of, of, yeah. of, of wickets they're playing on and the and the uh, and the nets, and that's what they've got right out here. The push up the track by the, Simpson the, back the, to certainly all first class facilities they get yeah um, along with the, the top quality hotels and airlines it's yeah. a place because really the other one that Fort Lauderdale is a possibility for is the north v south I know for next year is uh, yeah. you know potentially that's one that could move to there as well as forward goes uh, Simpson back into the offside or played across both actually the Caribbean and and Fort Lauderdale possible you have to move people from Ireland to uh, the mainland yeah we could do that yes yeah <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure here goes uh, here goes Leach he's in bowls and this ball's turned away into the onside. What's the, what's the most difficult part of staging? I mean, virtually the first part of the, the county season. Gus was up here earlier, and um, the ECB had obviously been thinking about starting the Royal London competition. So actually a professional yeah. competition before the start of yeah. uh, uh, the summer, starting overseas, starting possibly here, um, and then playing the second half of the competition in the UK in two different blocks. Yeah. Well, as, as cricketers are happy when they've got full bellies. Yes. So making sure the food's <laughs> right um, and getting to, to and from the ground. They're much time. like the press, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah, like <laughs> the food's so okay, we're happy. It seems simple, but transportation yeah. and the food, yeah. um, but that takes a bit of planning and yeah. making sure and we generally have 20 or 30 bus movements a day, which makes sure everyone gets to the ground on time mm. and, and uh, they eat well and, and the rest takes care of itself. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, how many teams in total has it been from the counties out here this year? Eight, nine? Yeah, so including the two Pakistan Super Leagues, we have 11 teams out here. So we had two teams from Pakistan Super League, north v south, mm. um, plus seven counties. So. Here comes uh, Crane. That's the one thing you'd lose if you moved it to the Caribbean, because there's been the Pakistan teams coming involved this yeah. year as well. The PSL's been out here as well, hasn't it? As this ball's turned towards square leg for a quick single by Eskenazi. And that's the advantage 16. of the UAE, is, mm. it is the, the centre of the world in terms of getting Cricket. people here. And, yeah. and, and, and airlines, virtually every, every yeah. country can be used. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Daniel Vittori's flown into this one, hasn't he? And then flown out again right, yeah. for, um, for Middlesex. But, so I suppose, really, then, that looking forward in terms of where it could move, where the north south could go. Then for England, as you say, coming one way, it's the, it's the UAE. The other way, it's America, isn't it? As this ball's worked away, now it's a mid-wicket by Simpson. He moves on to eight. 175 for four. Uh, Matthew Jackson, I'm going to let you go, because Nick yeah. Gubbins has sat behind us to come and have Far a chat as well. Uh, good luck to Callum yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I'm sure much. Sussex fans and uh, Kent fans will look on to see how he gets on this Fantastic. season and uh, where he's off to. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully see you soon, whether it's uh, Fort Lauderdale or, or the Caribbean. <laughs> here, goes, uh, uh, here goes Crane Bowles. This is pushed down to uh, mid-on, and there's no run. Thank you very much, Thank Matthew you. Jackson Thank from uh, Sport, who basically uh, are the company recruited in to organise all of this. Um, the logistics... Uh, so on and so forth, and just where possibly the North v South game could go next year, or possibly even the Champions, uh, the Champions match. Uh, I know Nick Gubbins' eyes lit up there when he hurt Fort Lauderdale. Uh, here goes Crane Bowles, and uh, Simpson pushes this one to point. There's no run. 177 for no pressure to win the title again next year, Gubbo. Yeah. Good evening, Kev. Thanks very much. Yeah, as we actually had a trip planned to Cape Town this year because that's where we went last, last year. Yeah. I mean, if we could go back there again and have this game at the Newlands, that'd be fantastic. Okay, yeah, I suppose there is that potential as well. I mean, part of the remit for the MCC in terms of having it here or moving it to the Caribbean, potentially even to Fort Lauderdale in Florida, is this ball's an attempted sweep. Now, he's going to be in trouble here, is he? Uh, no, he's OK. Eskenazi, I thought that the line might be... Well, it certainly gave the umpire something to think about, didn't it, as he went for the reverse sweep. Just coming to that period now, twilight period, as we've spoken about. Mm. There's a long way to go still as well for Middlesex, way. isn't there? Yeah, this is um, setting up to be a bit of a grand sand finale. <laughs> well, Middlesex like those. Yeah, we're pretty pretty accustomed to those by now. <laughs> Here goes uh, Crane. Bowls, and uh, that's nicely pitched again, an appeal, but uh, on this occasion, Eskenazi was back and actually a long way across the extent that um, I don't think the umpire had much to think about on this. Uh, 177 for four, Eskenazi has 17, Simpson has nine, Nick Gubbins, the Middlesex opener, is alongside me and uh, got it off to a good start the last two days, um, but it... It, it is tricky out there. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit nicer when you bat in the day. Yeah. Um, a bit selfish of me to bat in the day and, and leave the lads to bat in the twilight here. So, <laughs> um, I guess uh, it's yeah. But the ball's nip that, that pink ball is nipping about. We had Dilip up from uh, uh, Duke, who's the man behind the pink yeah. ball and the uh, technology of it. 
It's a it's a strange one because when you bat, usually you, you get through the tricky period and then it gets easier. Whereas actually all day in my mind, I've been thinking, score your runs now because it's only going to get harder when the lights come on and twilight comes in later. So it's a bit strange. You know, the game's kind of flipped on its head and everything kind of happens the other way around. The spinners start and then the seamers come into game. Um, so yeah, without obviously Liam Plunk at the MCC, have lacked um, that extra third seamer, which, you know, they may have been forced to follow on if, if yes. Plunkett was fit. Yeah. So, but Leach and uh, Leach and Crane have done a fantastic job for them, I think. He goes pitch, which is starting to help them as well. The spinners. Mm. Uh, here goes Leach now. Balls and uh, this ball does get a bit of bounce on Simpson, who turns to square leg, and there's no one yet. Because on the first two days, that was the one area yeah. that I thought this could really be crucial for the MCC that they've got the depth in spin. Um, with all due respect to Darvi, Darvi Milan and uh, Ravi uh, uh, and Sam Robson. Yeah. Um, but they're not um, Leach, Crane, and. Uh, Lied as this is cut away down towards deep backward point by Simpson. They'll think about two. About they come. Simpson's on to 11. 179 for four. So just seeing Simpson cutting away out there like this in a run chase, it brings back <laughs> memories of last year, it, doesn't it? It does. I was actually quite surprised I didn't get a ball myself, Kev. I'll be honest. I've been working my legs spinning the net. So when he turned to Sam Robson on that first day in the 50th over, you know. I was, Four or five overs as well, yeah, I, wasn't it? I, I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, have you had a word? <laughs> Here's, uh, Here's Simpson on strike. He tries to, to see what out, long on. I was trying to work out what I'd done wrong. Yeah, I've been trying to bowl my leggies a bit quicker in the net. It's a bit like Rashid Khan yeah. in Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, lots to talk about him at the moment. No, he's a he's a superb bowler. We played him here against the Afghans in November, and he he ripped for us. Yeah. Um, it was a bit like England overseas <laughs> um, of old. So here comes uh, Leach. He's around the wicket poles. This is pushed back uh, into the. Just making sure I wasn't going crazy. That was the Lions uh, that you were uh, playing for at that time. Here goes Leach around the wicked game. Bowls and uh, push back into uh, the offside. Were... Go on, tell us about the Lions experience. Um, well, yeah, the Afghans here, that was quite fruity. That was quite a fruity contest. Because um, Ireland are playing today, aren't they? was more, more like war rather than cricket. Really? Yeah, they were, they were absolute madmen. <laughs> <laughs> Leach is around the wicked, he bowls. <laughs> this ball's ease back with a point by uh, Eskenazi. Soft hands, no run. Uh, 180 for four, Nick Gubb is alongside me. Oh, Gubb, I've missed you this winter, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while, Kev, hasn't it? I know. It's, it's gone quick. Well, you've been we all are. over the world. You know, it's glory now for you. <laughs> Here we are again. Get out and come and join you to, to drown my sorrows. So. <laughs> um, no, it was well batted. I mean, you'll be pleased with your return in this match. It's been a low-scoring game, but a couple of scores. Yeah, I think the big thing for me this year is consistency again. Um, it's what it's what was massive for me last year, yeah. um, especially at the start of the season, trying to get in each time. But I think once you do once you do get in, it's it's about going on and making a big score. So Ooh, we've gone off. Sorry. And welcome back to UAE. Apologies for the uh, interruption broadcast. I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, one job, Kev. One job, I know. One job. I know. Are you sure you didn't kick a lead under the desk no. there or something? Um, I think there was a four. It was the viewing figures peak. The listening figures peaked when you sat down. That was, yeah. the, that was the problem. <laughs> Go, oh, was there a four? Go on. I was at the back of the box getting phone calls. What happened? No, to the there was a, a drag down from Crane and, and Simo just kind of pulled it under edge um, towards fine leg for four. As Crane comes in again and. Simo pushes forward. He does when he does get in the right areas. He does give it turn. He does give it flight. Crane is, He's had a really good winter, obviously down under in Australia. Um, you know, and he's a he's a young guy, and plenty of eyes will be on this summer down at the Rose Bowl to to see what he can do and, and repeat almost what he's done this winter down in Australia. As he's in again to John Simpson, who drives cover. It's a good piece of fielding, and there's no run. Um, yeah, I think he got Pfeiffer in his uh, in his debut for New South Wales, and it was only Imran Khan who's who was the last overseas or something like that for them. Kev, I think you can correct me on that. Um, Crane into Simo and tucks it away for a single behind square. So we currently, I say we, Middlesex are 185 for four. 
Oh, um, we can definitely give it the Royal Wii when you're yeah. on, already playing the MCC. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's always pretty biased when I come up here. <laughs> no, no, no. We want to hear the truth of it, which is uh, your perspective. Nice. We've got the opposition perspective as well in this match. Uh, I think Craig Overton will be coming on for a bowl sooner rather than later as the artificial lights begin to take over. That's always a chance for caught and bowled there as Eskenazi came up the wicket. He's, pump, he's pumped it over, the, over Crane for four. He's definitely at the catchable height, that, but he, he got a bit, good piece of wood on that. And, um, yeah, Eskies look quite quite punch and positive since coming out. It's never nice coming out coming out on a pair on your birthday, but, you know, what, what a stroke to get off the mark as well with that paddle sweep. Screens into Eskenazi here, and he cuts away. Is this going to be another four? They're going to run three, I suspect. Simo's pretty quick. Yeah, and they're back for three. Good, good over for Middlesex, that. And, um, yeah, the MCC, you know, a couple more wickets in there and they'll be into our bowlers. But, you know, this is, this is a big partnership for Middlesex, definitely. Uh, we were just going to um, have a chat about the uh, Afghanistan match against yeah, the uh, Lions a, before we dropped out. So it was, a, it was an interesting game, was it? There was a bit of a suspect catch um, to finish their second innings. Um, well, that, that's what they thought anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Won't name names or anything, <laughs> but... Uh, People yeah, scrambling for score cards at home right now. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it, may, it may have been uh, the, the end of their first innings or mm -hmm. second innings. I can't quite remember. But yeah, I just remember our second innings. You know, I was opening the batting with Tom Walshock, who's actually playing for the MCC. And it was a bit of a bombardment of abuse from the Afghans, which I didn't quite understand. Um, it all sounded quite, quite fruity. Um, but but we, we certainly gave it back as well at the same time. So it was, it was a good contest. And everyone shook hands at the end and it was it was probably the way cricket should be played to be honest nice and hard on the pitch and grab a beer off it not yeah the, not that the afghans were drinking beers they're on the cokes <laughs> yeah um, um well it could be a few beers tonight for eskenazi's birthday if, middlesex, absolutely. if we can see this one home for middlesex he certainly won't be buying his leech he's left arm around balls and uh, ford goes no eskenazi pushing no, into the offside lads as well <laughs> there will be a few beers around They've enjoyed the trip, haven't they? Good camarader no, camaraderie. It's been good spirits. They've been, they've been great uh, on the field. But, yeah, it's, it's uh, a lot of cricket to be played yet. Each bowls for defensive from Eskenazi. We're very much into that, coming into that twilight period now. How long before uh, the interval? There's still 43 overs remaining after this. So this and 12 overs. I think, yeah, I think we're just about to, about to enter it. Um, quick return for the, for the seamers then. Here comes Leach, bowls, and Ford goes... Potentially, maybe a quick burst of four overs, maybe each. each yeah. um, that's how we did it. But you know, we were fortunate enough to have three out-and-out -out seamers and Franklin as well. So it's a tough job for Leeds with only two seamers with Plunkett out injured. Around the wicket again comes Leach. This ball's driven to extra cover. That's a, great a little bit of, of a yes no from Eskenazi, but they're okay. Uh, John Edwards says, "Be careful what you wish for with the Champions match in Fort Lauderdale. The entire state of Florida is full of DTs." David Townsend and Donald <laughs> Trump say. Um, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that would be uh, something. Florida, it was, it was that would be special. Fort Lauderdale. That's where um, George Best went to play, wasn't it? At the end of his career. This ball's cut away to backward points for a single by Eskenazi. Uh, 193 for four. Uh, yes, I'm taught that potentially the North v South game um, yeah. could be staged. How was that North, North v South? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. You were here for that, clearly. Yeah, the only thing they got wrong is they didn't pick Nick Gubbins. <laughs> like, what were they thinking? I was very happy. Just... Mind you, the South were 3-0 winners as it was. Yeah, exactly. They didn't, they didn't need me. There um, must have been a bit of a grumbling on the way past. So, so the North did not get paid. If you lose 3-0, you go home without, without any pay at all. It's uh, as Leach bars this ball. Dabbed away by Simpson, down to third man. He might get another three here. If uh, Eskenazi can get his skates on. Yeah, and he comes back for three. Um, <laughs> here he is, Will McPherson in the commentary box. Full of box of tricks as ever. Um, no, what was, I, what was I about to say? Uh, Fort Lauderdale, was it? No, it was about other than the North lads. Uh, yeah, throughout the winter they were always going on about how the North were better than the South, you know, with T20 finals day, all, all four teams on the North. So it was great for the South lads to go and, go and do a job on them and, yeah. and, and hush them up for a, for a year or so. Stephen Finn was part of that side, wasn't he? Yeah, he was um, old Finn dog. He stood behind him. <laughs> Jeez, he's, he's bowling quick these days. Finn, yeah, yeah, he's bowling nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's just... Only, <laughs> um, 
quite a fruity net against Finney the other day. I didn't actually get a ball in, in my half, so that was great practice for this game. Ooh, I was tempted to let Finn sit down here with you, but I can't trust you two on the area. No way. <laughs> No chance. Get Tim Murter listening in. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did we'll have a real conversation. Well, exactly. I did once have the experience of having Mercer and Finn on air at the same time during a commentary at, um, dangerous, very at Uxbridge, dangerous. never to be repeated. No. <laughs> that was very dangerous. Uh, here comes Crane, his right arm over, he bowls, and down the track comes Simpson. That's a huge shot back down the grounds. Really clean strike. Uh, for six, and that is the 200 up as well. 202 for four. And, uh, yeah, there really are such echoes of last season at the moment, watching Simpson out there and Eskenazi as well in all those run chases at the yeah, end of matches. He, I mean, Simo's the man you want in this situation. He's uh, not the biggest man, but he definitely hits one of the longest balls in our... In lots our of bottom squad. hand, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, lots of bottom hand. Here comes Crane's response. Lots of fly net, and Simpson just pushes back to the bowler. He always spends the longest in the shower as well, apparently. Yeah, all right, according to Finney, he always spends the longest in the shower. Who in time with him, Finney? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Mert's longest in the shower. <laughs> Tim Mert loves a long shower. He, he walked past the commentary box door open a minute ago, um, Stephen Finn. I couldn't believe he walked past. And then a couple of seconds later, he dragged himself back in. Here's a short one from Crane. It's dragged to mid-wicket by Simpson for 27. 204 for four. It was like, his, it was like he'd just got past <laughs> the door and thought, hold on a minute, Cubbins yeah. is on Mike. I'm not leaving him alone. No, you don't want to know what Tim Mert and Steve Finn get up to in the shower. <laughs> let's, uh, let's save that for after 11 o'clock, shall we? <laughs> On our road show, Kev. The, the two most annoying teammates, Finn and Murta? Annoying, but it's... it's a drive it's out to cover for a single by Eskenazi. Moves to 26th. Great for the camaraderie in the Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, Murta is... I think um, there was actually a prank played, not by Tim Murta, but, but, but by a person who isn't currently here, who may have taken a hat-trick uh, last yes, season against yes, Yorkshire. Yeah. A, a prank played on... Steve Eskenazi, which was meant for John Simpson, and um, his cricket bag's not quite the same. <laughs> his crane store. bowls and uh, he spills down the leg sides, no run. Um, yeah, no, Eski. Scissors involved? Or? He, no, he opened up his uh, bag the other day, the two side pockets. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure where this has come from or, or who's done this, but there were six bananas and six apples which had been there for oh. a week or so, two <laughs> weeks. Um, <laughs> Here again comes Crane. Drop short, and that's going to be cut away. But he only picks out the cover field of Simpson. He really so, tried to give that everything. I think it was a, a parting gift Ouch. from someone. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Eskies, Eskies someone, that, his... someone that slows the um, Middlesex overrate dramatically. Yeah, Is that exactly. the same? Uh, I'm only saying that because I always defend him no. massively in the Middlesex overrate debate. I always defend Roland Jones. However, we'll soon find out if he's listening because if he is, he will message if he's heard yeah, that. He is. I did actually say to him before Sri Lanka. Are you going to shorten your run up? Yeah. Because of the the heat and humidity, yeah. there's no point running in from the boundary, yeah. is it? Um, but he looked at me, pretty grumpily, and was like, <laughs> "No, do you change the way you bat?" And I was like, oh, <laughs> "Fair enough then." Um, well, we had a, where was it? It was the game down at Taunton last year when Simpson hit those um, winning runs. Um, he'd been called away for his first Test call up uh, for that one to the squad. Didn't make the team, but. Um, Somewhere towards the end of the match, he was tuned in on a golf course and somebody was having a go at his run-up at that point. Yeah, I think at which point I very quickly got a message and said, can I please tune in and not hear my run-up being No, uh, that was discussed. when he was, uh, he was selected for England in that. Yeah. Was it against Pakistan? Yes, it, it may was. Have been. Yeah, he was yeah. in the squad at Lords. And yeah. yeah, he was on the golf course. Jake, Jake Ball got the, uh, the yeah. nod, didn't he? Yeah. Was, yeah, it was a bit of a shame you know, for, for Toby because... He, you'd say that he's one of the best... You'd say he's one of the best county cricketers who well, have not the, played for England yet. The way that I always describe Roland Jones, um, for the listeners who perhaps haven't seen a lot of him, is that any opposition batsman you talk to say that he's just the hardest to face. Um, hits the ball higher yeah. on the bat than anybody and harder on the bat than anybody, even though he's not express pace. Um, he's he's just on you all the time, is what the other batsmen yeah. always tell me. He bowls, uh, as we like to say, a heavy ball. Mm -hmm. um, no one quite knows what that means. Nope. But, um, <laughs> I was I trying to find other ways yeah. to say it other than that, yeah. He's, yeah, he's always hitting my thigh pad and that's it's absolutely yeah. grim, I'll be honest. Well, I always tell the story of Ed Joyce, who um, the match down at Hove had a triangle of bruises <laughs> on his ribs from, Ro from Roland yeah. Jones. No, uh, it's, it's not, much, it's not f much fun, actually, facing this, this Middlesex squad of seamers in the nets because mm. there's a few fiery ones. James Fuller's another one. Yeah. Um, Finney, obviously, we, we and spoke. Helm, and Helm is the well. fastest Helmy, now of the lot, yeah. isn't he? he Which um, surprised me. So that, um, you know, a few of the guys had reported back that Helm is potentially the fastest bowler at the club now. Yeah, he, um, he's right up there with, um, with Finney. That's uh, extraordinary. James Fuller. And Fuller, well, yeah. Fuller as well, when he gets it right. Um, 
as well. Yeah, I, I remember in the academy, he held me rearranging my grill, literally in, in indoor nets at Lords, um, hit me on the grill and just m moved completely to one side. Um, so he's, he's definitely got some pace and you know, it's great to see him playing cricket because everyone's felt for him over the last few years two seasons or so you know when mm. he came back last year and had that injury at Hove it was yeah. it was gutting for everyone you know everyone yeah. was was very sad for him but it's, it's great to see what he's done this winter and there's a lot of talk about him you you have these players you know every year there's always talk about someone the new that was you last new, year yeah well um yeah I guess so I guess but you know it's it's great for for Helmy to have this exposure have the wins that he's had and you know I just hope that he that he gets his reward this mm. this summer and, and stays fit because you see, you've seen this game, Kev. When he's when he's on song, there's, yeah. you know, he's right up there, um, and that's why he was rewarded with a lion's berth um, in this in February or so against uh, Monkey. Yeah. Have you had much of a break this winter? Is that we, incidentally, we have just had a break in play there, so you haven't been missing anything while we've been asked. It's a play resume with Leachy's left arm around. Down the track comes Eskenazi, and he hits back over the bowler's head. Now, has that gone all the uh, way? One bounce four. One bounce four. Uh, Two hundred and eight for four. <laughs> that's uh, that's a great shot from Esky. He's a he's a really good player of spin. Um, as you saw earlier, he's he's got the dab sweep. He's got the various sweeps. Uh, yeah, he can also use his feet and and whack it back over the ball's head. So you know he's been really impressed this preseason as well, um, scoring a hundred against Essex um, in a losing cause. So um, yeah, it's it's a real competition for places in not just the bowling department but also the batting department with Adam Voges to come in as well. You know, what a mm. what a position for the club yeah. to be in right now. I mean that was the other thing. Middlesex did it without and overseas in the second half of yeah. last summer as well, didn't they? Which was extraordinary. Uh, slip crashing down as Leach around the wicket and a reverse sweep gets away from the backward point for four. The shadow catch went up in the air for the moment. Um, Two hundred and twelve for four it is now. Four more for Eskenazi and he moves to thirty four. That was his sixth four. If you Since want a 10-point hard to play spin, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we get the replay yeah, here, actually. We've got replays for this and one. pump it over the, bo the bowler's head and then reverse sweep for four. Yeah, it was in the air for a moment, wasn't it? The shadow catch went up, and the, you can see they were a little bit disappointed that perhaps the backward point fielder didn't get to it. I lost it, I'll be honest. We're a long way away here. Well, looking at his... Uh, he's only just picked himself up off the ground. I think he may have lost it too, because it looks as though it didn't pass him by a long Joe way. Joe Clark there, at, at backward point. Now, what's... Uh, to the target down oh. below 100 now. Let's see what Leach is going to follow up with. There are four balls left of this over. And we've still got 11 overs after this until... No, nine overs after this until T. Leach bowls, and this is cut to the backward point field. A quick single. Oh, the throw to the non-strikers, and he's going to be in trouble. It's the, the misses. The throw misses. Eskenazi was very slow on setting off there, wasn't he? Called through by Simpson. He had his flippers on there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and well, for the second time in the over, uh, Leach looks, uh, Clark, sorry, looks pretty disappointed, doesn't he, at backward points. He'd have had, well, the best part of three stumps yeah, to a aim bit at. Yeah, a bit of a hairy moment, that. Um, mm. Luckily for us, he had Here it is, missed. he stopped, didn't he, and then got going. As the throw came in, we're not going to get the angle on the throw, uh, how close it was, but you just felt as though Eskenazi knew he was deep in trouble. The thing is, one wicket in these conditions right now changes things completely. Seam has come back on. Yeah. Um, so as Leach comes into Simpson now, so as ever, it's it's uh, yeah. on on John Sim on John Simpson's shoulders and uh, Eskenazi at the other end as well. So it's a it's a big partnership this one, and you never know what could happen if a wicket falls um, under lights. Franklin coming in, and then the bowlers, I guess. So. Sounds crazy to say, doesn't it? But uh, uh, for batsmen, more than any other time, this is the hard time yeah, to come absolutely. in. Absolutely, Twilight around the wicket is the left arm of Leach to the left-handed Simpson, just tucking him up a little bit. There's I a can't see a thing from up here. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I, I'm glad you can relay that back to listeners at home. It has been a tricky few days. The North v South game yeah. wasn't too bad, uh, but uh, the pink ball has been particularly testing as uh, this ball's nudged back with a square on the legs uh, through mid wicket. Actually, yeah, it was, on the leg it was side this period single. in the field where I, I, I was at points. I remember and I was like, if they hit it at me, I'm not, I'm not seeing this. Here. Really? Yeah, it was. Uh, if, if you uh, get one nice, if you and get that's a flash. to do with the twilight as opposed to the pink ball. I think, I, yeah, I think generally as well in one day cricket as well when it's a tough period as well. So yeah. It's uh, it's it does make for interesting viewing and yeah, there's definitely whether there's a you know a future and it's necessary in England, yeah. um, we'll see, but definitely out here it, it does make the cricket exciting and interesting. Absolutely, uh, Adam Lyth is coming back into the attack, um, so we're not going to see that um, battery. Well, I say battery of seamers. There's only two of them left, isn't there? We're not going to see a battering from the seamers just yet in the twilight before tea, which is interesting. You just see the redness is starting to come into the sky 
uh, way to our left-hand side. Uh, Steven Pins back. I think he's been dragged around every single possible media person that's here, and there's not many, but he's had to do them all. And he's come back to see us now, so we could have a double change on the mic at the moment. You're on a nice holiday, aren't you, Finney? <laughs> <laughs> End of the over, we'll, uh, we'll do a change up as here comes uh, Lyde. He's right arm round the wicket, the off spinner. Nick Gubbins alongside myself, Kevin Hamm. We'll bring back in Will McPherson, Stephen Finn. Big dip in the listeners, Kev. Just... <laughs> Here goes, uh, here goes Lyde, just a check of the field. He's got a deep ish mid on. There's Lyde's in, bowls, and uh, this is pushed away in front of point for a single by Simpson. Moves to 29, 215 for four in the 49th over of this inning. So, yeah, still eight after this until T. Middlesex chasing 305. Nice little partnership bring as well, Kev, 57. So, yeah, it's. Uh I would have thought an Overton or Gregory would come back before T, but at mm. the moment it doesn't quite look like that way. Lithe, right arm over. Balls and forward goes Eskenazi pushing into the offside just very quickly. Uh, the end of last season, I haven't really seen you since uh, since the trophy was lifted. Yeah, it was a bit of a blur those few days afterwards. Yeah. Um, so uh, no, it's 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 quite nice to get back into it, but the squad hasn't been together. Um, all winter. Lies balls, and this is pushed into the offside. And there's no, yes, because yeah, that was the unusual thing, was it? Wasn't everyone's it? kind of gone off there in, in their own mm. direction, and even yet, we're still missing a massive part of the squad in Rojo, yeah. Mertz. So the celebration still to take place properly. I mean, Mertz missed the celebration. He had to get yeah. straight on a plane uh, to uh, South Africa after that game. Uh, but immediately after that game, this ball's driven down to uh, Widish Long on for a single by Eskenazi. They think about two, but they come scampered well through run. from uh, Simpson. Um, yeah, the, yeah the, he, went, he went straight from literally the trophy yeah, lift and they're not off to the airport. The lads, yeah, the lads felt really sorry for him because if yeah. there's one person who he deserves, he deserves it, yeah. to celebrate a, a championship win at Lords, it would be Tim Murta. And yeah. I think he would have enjoyed himself that night. Uh, yeah, did. the squad hasn't really been together, so it's a bit of a strange pre-season mm. almost. So we won't really get together until next week um, at Fenners or so. Nice balls outside of the off stump uh, through to the keeper. Because I say the pre-season starts in November nowadays for county cricketers, but of course yeah. you've all been off in different parts of the world. Yeah, well, you can all tell we've been lifting big weights over the winter. <laughs> Come back and top draw Nick. <laughs> Here goes live. Balls and this ball is pushed into the onside. Uh, there is no run. It's the end of the over. Uh, 217 for four. It's the end of the first of many stints, I'm sure, this season between Absolutely. myself and Nick Gubbins. I uh, look forward to it greatly. Thanks very much, Kev. Finding out more about that. Uh, I'll let you go. Cheers. Um, any, uh, well, right a reply comes oh, from Stephen Finn. Oh, you can all Finn, turn off now. Enough. <laughs> Steve, Finn's, Steve Finn's on. <laughs> Send yourselves to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Nick Gubbins. Uh, so a few words from Stephen Finn. His right of reply before it will be Will McPherson. T -t 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 you can wake up, everyone. <laughs> The big boys are back in now. <laughs> I should add that there's actually a foot difference in height between Stephen Finn and I. It's just a change of ends here. That man Nick Govins is grinning away to your right. He looks very pleased with himself. His slightly rubbery mouth over there. He's cracked his one semi-funny joke for the year. <laughs> He's done now. He'll be back in 2018 for his next one. So it's going to be Jack Leach from the other end. I wonder if anyone actually understood what he was talking about. It was a spiffing good shot. <laughs> well, I say he ran jolly fast there, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I say. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to pop down and have some cucumber sandwiches now, actually, as it goes. Is he, is he still, the, still the class clown in the middle set dressing room, Nick Covins? Class clown. I can think of many words to describe Nick. <laughs> Class clown gives him far too much credit, I'd say. <laughs> is, there, is there something in the pipeline for the, the DJ Gubbo was the big thing last year at the, uh, the press day? Is yeah, I mean, how embarrassing was that? <laughs> oh, my word. I watched that. I had to put my fist in my mouth, actually, when I was watching that. <laughs> Here comes Leach bowling to Simpson. He's uh, trying to get after him, but he's not going to get a run for that. No, he's a good lad. Despite what everyone else says about him, I think he's a good bloke, so... Well, even before he'd scored a first-class 100, he'd, he'd fallen over in, on the outfield at Lords, and no, then he else, did yeah. DJ Gubbo as Leach comes in again to Simpson. He's just defending. Yeah, I, that's, that's still one of my funniest moments. <laughs> if ever I'm feeling bad about myself, I will put on YouTube and Google Nick Gubbins falling over. <laughs> 
in front of packed Lord's house, and it makes me feel infinitely better about myself. So, Leach in again to Simpson. He's down the wicket and he sounds smashed good. him away into the leg side. As Stephen Finn says, he sounds good, but that's oh, it's been dropped in the deep by Craig Overton, I think. The man on the he's getting applauded by his teammates. Yeah, that would have been. I mean, he's kicking the ground there, but that would have been an absolutely epic catch. It would have been. Full definitely, stretch, definitely it? worth a turn round to the crowd and <laughs> give it a big celebration like Nick Gubbins would, but you know he only does that for goobers. They've run through for two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen him off. Thanks, mate. Back to normality. What now. a relief as Jack Leach comes in again to John Simpson, who's driving out into the deep again to Craig Overton along the floor this time. So we're going to take one. Dissects those two-minute sort of a short mid on and a short mid wicket out to sort of a wide long on mm. um, dissects them beautifully so this man is on strike now Stevie Eskinon he's got 37 it's his birthday today we gather it is it is we haven't given him the birthday bumps or anything yet is that in store later I have no idea we'll see if we win this game I'm sure they'll be in store yes <laughs> Leach is coming round the wicket to the right-handed Eskenazi. It's two balls left of this over. It's 220 for four. Middlesex chasing 305. In comes Leach. And Eskenazi just defending into the offside. A little bit uppish. Silly point would have been interested, I think. But like he's not there. No. It sort of jumped and hit him on the glove. He's sort of shaking his hand there. Um, like, a, like the princess batsman. <laughs> 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 you just get hit on the finger and... Shake it off. Leach it again, and Eskenazi's cutting, but he's only cutting as far as backward point, and that's the end of the over, 220 for four. He was one of the fines of last year, wasn't he, Eskenazi? He was, yeah. He played exceptionally well, I think, um, particularly when he first came into the team, um, I suppose, as a young guy under a little bit of pressure to perform, um, to, to come in and prove, you know, he'd scored a lot of second-team runs, and to come in and prove people straight away that he was ready, ready-made for first-class cricket, I think was an mm. excellent effort from him, and particularly his 100 in the win at Yorkshire at Scarborough, you know, really set us up for that victory there. Um, you know, the way that he played the bowling there, because that was a bit of a tasty wicket, um, and he, yeah, he negated their bowling attack, which is obviously one of the best in the country, um, and to score 100 and set up that game for us was an awesome effort. Little break in play here. We're not quite sure why. Adam Live is down on one knee. He's getting ready to bowl. The right. floodlight, the light from the floodlights is bouncing beautifully off the top <laughs> of Adam Live's head here. Up into the commentary box. It's almost sunglass worthy. It's like a very pale bowling ball, isn't it? As he just comes in to John Simpson, the left handed hander. They've turned it into the leg side and it'll be one run. Mm. He's an underrated bowler, Adam Live. Are you saying he, yesterday he got yeah, you out, no, didn't he? He's got to be very careful of him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be much fun to bowl too, Adam Live. He's no, always looking to get after the bowling. Yeah, he? yeah, he's an excellent player. I mean, he smokes a cover drive off a ball that you think is not too bad and could get him out, but he smokes it through extra cover and then looks at you as if he wants you to say, <laughs> "Well played, mate." He's bowling to Eskenazi here. He's just turned him into the leg side for a single. Yeah, he's one of those batsmen that looks at you a lot. You get two types of batsmen when you're bowling at them, and. One is the type that sort of keeps his head down and just worries about himself, and then the other type is the one that looks at you when he's hit you for four. <laughs> here and he looks almost like he wants praise. <laughs> he's been driven here live by Simpson down to Alex Lees at mid-off, and there's just a single taken. But yeah, he's been one of those guys that's been consistent performer for quite a while for Yorkshire now and sort of fundamental to their mm. championship winning consistency sort of is bred from the top of the order I suppose in a batting sense um, and he's given that given them that solidity um, you know it's a real shame that in that summer um, he didn't score as many runs as maybe he could have done yes when he played for England as, uh, he's bowled to Eskenazi he's tried to sweep in very fine I think but it's just gone to square leg and they've run one he um he scored a very good 100 against New Zealand, didn't he? I mean, he just, yeah. The Ashes didn't quite happen for him against the Aussies. No, and I think that that can happen in an Ashes series because it's so alien compared to other international series in terms of the mm. intensity and the scrutiny. Um, but he has something, um, and he was obviously um, good enough to score that 100 against uh, New Zealand earlier that summer, and he's an exceptional player. Here he comes again to Simpson, who's driving through the covers. That's a great shot. He's going to get four here, I think. It's just about going to beat the fielder. 
out at extra cover. Simpson moves to 38. Eskenazi has 39. This has been a very good stand, but just could have been a little wobble yeah. after Milan went, but they've uh, just been very steady, haven't they? Mm. Well, yeah, this... Um, we spoke a bit at the beginning of play about um, recognising important periods of play when you don't want to lose wickets, when you need to dry the runs up when you're a bowling team. Um, and that's very prevalent with the pink ball and the times of day. That's the last ball of the over from live. Again, uh, Simpson's driving, but he hasn't got all of that one. It's just out to extra cover. So both batsmen are on 39 at the end of that over. It's 230 for four, I think. Mm, it sort of gave that everything and it's dribbled out to deep cover. <laughs> I think he must have towed it. The, um, how, just from a Middlesex perspective, how, you know, this obviously isn't a championship match, but you went unbeaten all year last year in the championship. Would it have been really frustrating to come here and in the champion match lose a game after not losing one all year? Yeah, I think it would have been. I think that um, the culture of winning um, is a habit. And I think that if you get into bad habits, um, you know, letting, letting games slip and drift away from you, regardless of when they are or, um, you know, or what sort of cricket they are, um, I think that that can breed bad habits. So... I think the fact that we've had our backs against the wall, um, that the MCC batted well on that first day to post 320. Um, and for us to get bowled out for 170 odd, um, I think that um, I think that the resilience, it's just, it's just another example of the resilience that we have mm. um, as a team. Obviously, we've not seen it through yet. And there, may, do, yeah. there may well be another twist in the tail. Overton's coming in to be attacked to replace Jack Leach and he's bowling round the wicket to the left-handed John Simpson. That's gone across him and he's tried to pull it and... Not got anything on it. Ben Cox, who's a very good wicketkeeper, dives to his right to prevent any buys or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's if Simo had got anything on that, a few lockers in the dressing room might have been um, <laughs> might have been torn up if Cox had caught it. So, um, yeah, luckily that no one touched anything there. In comes Overton again, the lumbering figure from the other end, and he comes round the wicket and Simpson just he's got something on this one, but it's just straight to the man at sort of square leg mid wicket kind of position no lumbering run. lumbering's a bit mean that's a bit it? unfair he's, isn't it it's, they look quite athletic I thought that's the kind of word that men of 5 foot 8 say about men yeah, of 6 foot whatever stinks of jealousy <laughs> <laughs> very true I can't, I can't argue with that I mean I, I, I would much rather be a foot taller than I am but uh, unfortunately uh, the genes just weren't there as <laughs> Overton comes in again and Simpson's got hold of a pull here but not all of it and they're just going to come back for two as uh, the Man comes around at fine leg to do the fielding. No, sort of a splice. I think the round the wicket angle, um, they're trying to cut out any width from Simo because he, he plays very well the cut shot when the ball's going across him and the drive. Um, so I think from round the wicket, they're just trying to cramp him for a little bit of room, um, bowling a little bit straighter. And there he spliced it, but unfortunately for them, there wasn't the fielder at a squarish square mm. leg. Um, but now he's coming over the wicket. To change a change of angle, they might feel with the lights and the twilight period that trying to get him driving is the best option. Yeah, it's a bit full of that one, isn't it? And he's just pushed it out to the offside for no run. How would you? Uh, what would you be doing here? Would you be going over wicket, round the wicket? Well, I think here they need to chase wickets. I think with us needing 74 runs to win, mm. um, six wickets left. You know, fundamentally, the only thing that's going to save the MCC here is a, a stack of quick wickets, and the best time to do that is probably in this twilight period. Mm. Um, so I'd say come over the wicket, as he has done now, after after three balls, and try and get Simo driving. I think he looks like he's been going quite hard at the ball. In he comes, Overton, and that's a bit short. He's just on the back foot. He's not a tall man, so he's quick onto the back foot, and he's just defending into the offside. Yeah, they've got they've got two slips and a gully in, so Overton's going to be pitching it up a little bit more than he was before, trying to get him driving. Yeah, I think here you almost have to press the gamble button here as a bowling team. Um, go over attacking um, because a cluster of wickets is the only thing that's going to win you a game. Mm. Um, I don't think the amount of time there is left in the game building pressure, we can afford to um, we can afford to soak it up. Here he comes again, Overton, over the wicket to the left-handed Simpson, who's just turned him around the corner. There's a cry of anguish. There's going to be four runs. He's got enough on that, but it's run down to fine and fine leg. And uh, He's picked up four runs off I'm the not, bat. Yeah, they, look, they all look disappointed they out do, there, the they? MCC lads, but I'm not sure that would have been pitching in line. I think that would have pitched outside the line mm. of leg stump there, um, given how fine it's gone, but who knows? I'm not an umpire, <laughs> fortunately, so I wouldn't know. Would you make a good umpire, do you reckon? It's hard to say. I mean, there's a lot of times when I'm bowling 
and I appeal for the shot if I think it's a bad shot I think oh you've got to be out you deserve <laughs> to walk for that because it's a poor shot um, so I'd hope that I wouldn't take that attitude into my umpiring career <laughs> I'd like to think I'm generally quite a fair level headed man who would give the decision on merit but I don't think I'd hold grudges <laughs> so MCC at Stephen who's joining me on com commentary here, referenced a moment ago, we're in that twilight period now, and if you just look at each of the fielders, you can see that they've got four shadows from the lights, and as a result, Alex Lees, the MCC captain, has decided to go with uh, both of his his two quick bowlers. Lewis Gregory's coming on from this end. He's bowled very well in this match. You've got Eskenazi, who has 39, um, out in the first innings, with a bit of a beauty that left him. So we might see a little bit of a way swing here, I think, from... Uh, he rolled beautifully in the first innings. I think even even early in the innings, he went for a few runs, but they were all good runs, what you'd consider good runs as a bowler. They were edges, um, they were drives. When the ball's up there swinging, you don't mind going for those runs. And same again, it's full, but he's, it's too full, and he's been driven through point by Eskenazi. He's going to get four for that. It's a lovely shot, but I think that Gregory won't be too disheartened by that. He's got three slips there waiting for a little edge that seemed like it did swing a fair amount um, so I'd imagine that with the MCC uh, trying to roll the dice here a little bit to try and get wickets to try and bring themselves back into the game uh, no one will mind that too much that's right we've just seen on the replay there it was it was full but it was shaping away nicely we've also got two men in uh, deep on the leg side deep square and fine leg here comes Gregory again and that's a similar delivery just not quite as full and he's been defended to mid-off by Eskenazi. I think those two men out there are men that allow the bowler to bowl slightly straighter. So I think it looks as though it's there for they're there for a bouncer or something, but someone who's swinging the ball like Gregory is here. Um, it'll, be, it'll be two guys out there. There's a bit of protection for him to be able to start the ball on middle stump to try and bowl Jaffers because ultimately that's what the MCC need at the moment. Here he comes again, Gregory, into Eskenazi, over wicket to the right-hander. And that's pulled away. It's a little bit shorter, but it's uh, straight to one of those men. So they just run one. Oh, we yeah. should, I'm talking absolute garbage. So. <laughs> we should probably mention you're sounding like quite the captain here, Stephen Finn. But you, uh, you, you would in the North recent North South series. Am I right? Thinking you were the I was the, the, I was the very captain? very influential vice captain. Yes. Three nil series the, win, mastermind. Vince might be the face of the operation, <laughs> but I'm very much the brains. I'd say. <laughs> How was that? Did you enjoy um, that sort of leadership role? I enjoyed the responsibility, yeah. I think that it's something that, again, as you, as you do get a little bit older in your career, um, you come a bit wiser, or you think you become a bit wiser anyway. Gregory staying over wickets for left-handed Simpson, who's on the back foot driving out to cover. There's no run. And I suppose, yeah, as I've thought about it more, it's something that um, captaincy does interest me, I think, at some stage in my career, whether... Angus Fraser at Middlesex will feel like I'm ever the right man to captain Middlesex. I don't know, but yeah, at some stage in the future, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to put my hand up for a captaincy role or, or something of the like because, um, you know, I've played a lot of cricket now and, and it's about time that I start, start showing some responsibility. <laughs> Here's Gregory again to the left-handed Simpson who's flicking away through the leg side and there's going to be at least two here. It's just going to be two, I think. The fielder from mid-wicket runs back. So turn, think about a third, but no dice. V, would you be, a, when you weren't bowling, would you have yourself straight in at first slip or would you be more of a mid-off general kind of captain? Well, actually, we were discussing this the other day. I think I'd bowl the ball and I'd just run straight through to first <laughs> slip and make the youngest bloke of the team collect my cap from the umpire <laughs> and run it to me at first slip so that I don't waste an extra 15 yards of walking. You can have um, Gubbins as your butler if it's ever... Yeah, middle, I'd, say, I'd say... Click my fingers, say, uh, Gubbins, fetch my hat for me. <laughs> in comes Gregory again to Simpson. Uh, over wicket, it's just defended that to mid wicket. Nice swing from Gregory. It's funny, these, um, these balls, the fact that um, there's something with the leather that means that it doesn't scuff, um, whether that's the wicket being a little bit softer and grassier here. Um, or, or another reason, but the ball doesn't seem to scuff up. So it's, it's almost as though as soon as the lights come on and the twilight period does happen, the ball will still swing, even if it's 50 overs old. So this ball's 53 overs old, and it's hooping around it's as much as... conventional swing, yeah, not reverse it's swing, hooping, it? Yeah, it's hooping around as much as a, as a brand new um, red Dukes ball would. So um, it poses a few challenges, I think, for a bowling team and for a batting team. Um, 
But it does seem so funny that the that the conditions do dictate what the ball does so much. Mm. Craig Overton's about to start a new over. It's 242 for four. Two, two, two for two. <laughs> in, in he comes to Eskenazi, right, Andrew's leaving him outside. Also. I feel like we've had a whole array of uh, impressions from you. Oh, don't worry, I've got, I said yesterday, I've got them all. <laughs> we had I Shane Warne, Richie Benno now. I have all of them. They just have to come out at the right time. I think Nick uh, Govins is probably the one we've heard the most, for, most, most of. Is yeah, he the posh player you play yeah, with? Yeah, he's the easily the... He's the guy that's the easiest to take the mickey out of um, because he invites it upon himself. He tries to get funny like he did when he was on the mic. Doesn't quite work and then everyone just rips him. So <laughs> Here he comes, Overton, and he's been driven. Ooh. He, uh, Eskenazi has driven Overton straight back to the bowl and he's just feigned it a little throw back at the uh, at the stumps and Eskenazi's taken evasive actions. But I don't think Overton released the ball from his hand. He did didn't. Not. He didn't, but... I don't know, he's got that glint in his eye sometimes that you think he could just ping it straight at you. Mm. So you, you yeah. get out of the way. If he wants to ping it at the stumps, you, Craig, be my guest. He's keeping uh, Stevie Eskenazi honest. On I his toes, say. yes. That's, yeah, on his toes. Good old fast bowler's technique. In comes Overton again. And he's been cut this time. Straight to backward point. One bounce into the hands of... Who's that? Who's that there? Joe Clark, maybe? Potentially. It's a long way away, isn't it? It is. There's no numbers on their backs. So I don't no. blame you for getting it wrong. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon I'm going to stick with my uh, initial guess of Joe yeah. Clark, but, you know, don't hold me to it. And I'm, It's not like anyone else knows at home, <laughs> so I think I'm safe. In comes Overton again to the right-handed Eskenazi. Oh, that's a nice delivery. That's out. Wrapped him on the pads. He's been given. That's on the back pad, you reckon? Or? I don't know. It's, I couldn't tell from here, to be honest. Let's watch it on the replay. Yes, we're very lucky we've got these replays, but that's... Yeah. Uh, it's an HD camera, but it's it's almost like... All of the balls that over had swung away, so he'd hit one to point that had swung away, defended one towards extra cover, um, left one alone that swung away. Um, and I think that when you, when you see that as a batsman, um, you automatically think that everything's going to swing away. So, um, you know, it's either very clever bowling from Craig Overton in getting one to just straighten and come back at the stumps rather than carrying on towards the slips. Um, or it's a little bit of natural variation, which sometimes makes you look like an absolute genius. Um, <laughs> and then after it's happened, you claim that you meant to do it, of when course. in reality, you never meant to do it. So that's, that has indeed hit him on the back pad. Uh, it's nipped back in. It's a beautiful piece of bowling. Eskenazi's being well applauded off on his birthday. 24, I think, today, Stevie Eskenazi. He arrived today on a pair, so he'll be pleased that... Uh, He's had a substantial contribution. He's been replaced by his captain, James Franklin. He's also won't want me reminding listeners that he's also on a pair. No, we won't talk about that. <laughs> he got a beauty from Overton in the he first He did, innings. yeah. It was an that absolute was... peach. And I think he was batting at around a similar time in that twilight mm. period. So, um, yeah, I think I think the important thing is, as a, bats and, as a batting team, you talk about seeing off the new ball um, as a pair of opening batsmen. Um, and I think that... You know, you realise now that the ball is behaving like a brand new Duke's ball, um, and you ju and you're trying to, you're as wary as you possibly can. If you get a beauty, then that's fair enough. You just uh, you just have to accept that. Um, but yeah, I think it's just about being a little bit more watchful as the uh, as the lights take hold um, and the light dims towards the left hand side of the ground here. So we've got the score is 242 for five. So Middlesex still needs 63. Um, there are 3.2 overs until tea, not tea, dinner, supper, dinner. something. Yeah, what do you, supper, that's very Nick Gubbins of you, supper. <laughs> supper. <laughs> uh, the patterns are difficult, aren't they? Getting, I mean, you, you haven't actually been playing this game, but you've been travelling with the squad, you've been here yeah, working hard. So I, I mean, think, I think it's, a, it's a great concept. I think that, um, you know, it, it poses different challenges for you as a cricketer, which actually are all, you know, it's interesting to be challenged in different ways, um, and this very much does so. Um, but I think that, when you do play day-night games or games of this nature, um, you get yourself into different sleeping patterns. So I'm rooming with Sam Robson and I allow him to chew my ear off until 2 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. And then you sleep until 10 and, you're, and your day's sort of two hours later anyway. So you're, you're on a natural time pattern. Here comes over to, to Franklin. He's on a pair. and he's, have they, We've gone up for that. The umpire's given him. He's been caught behind. It's a beautiful piece of bowling from Overton. Franklin's gone for a pair, and I think that one's just like the ball he got in the first inning. Didn't get up on him quite as much, but it's, nip, it's just nipped away, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that looked very similar. It's, um, it looked as though it was feigning to shape back into him, and it sort of nipped across him, taking a very faint outside edge to the keeper. And 
Frankie has waited there for the umpire's decision, but Alex Wharf, I think, has sent him on his way. It looks like the right decision as well because his bat was away from his body. So, it's, you know, it's, if, if the umpire heard a sound, then uh, it had to be bat, I think. Yeah, and that's unfortunate um, for James Franklin. I think that, um, you know, when you get two good balls like that, I think it's, it's very hard to come to terms with um, but he's not really done too much wrong there he's just um, the first ball of the year innings mm. wanting to feel bat on ball and um, unfortunately only got enough on it to take it to the keeper he's a hard man James Franklin he'll take that in stride I think yeah he is and I think last year he was you know he was inspirational as our captain um, as a leader of the team um, and as a, as a guy coming in with such experience at number seven um, you know being able to take us through in tricky games um, and score mm. important runs for us last year um, you know to have a wise head like him there um, you know when we're winning games at Nottinghamshire um, contributing to the Somerset win etc um, you know I think it's very important to have someone like that in your team well he is gone and James Harris has wandered out to face a hat-trick ball from Craig Overton he's got Stevie Eskenazi and James Franklin in consecutive deliveries if uh, James Harris gets out here I'll eat my hat because he has <laughs> the best forward defence in world cricket he's a uh, chalk him in for a, for a big peach of a delivery here. <laughs> so, Eskenazi was trapped LBW by one, which just nipped back in and uh, struck him on the back pad. And then Overton got James Franklin for the second time in the match for Nort with an absolute beauty. On the screen, it says, excellent bowling, you are on a hat-trick. As if he didn't know. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> we, how many slips do we have? We have five slips for the hat-trick ball. So, yeah, and this is exactly the roll of the dice that the MCC were hoping would pay off. Mm. Um, you know, the, to get the ball up there swinging, um, giving it an opportunity to move and draw batsmen in, um, and it's brought them two quick wickets through some good bowling. Leg slip, well, so leg gu gully has gone in, but uh, I'm not sure it's going to be short. So here comes Overton past the umpire into James Harris for right-hander. Oh, and he's been struck out. on the pad. He's been given. It's a hat-trick. James Harris is gone and Craig Overton has a hat-trick. This game has been turned on its head. Middlesex are 242 for seven now. They still need 63 to win. And Craig Overton has a remarkable hat-trick. Two of them LBW. First, Stevie Eskenazi. Then James Harris, the third of the three. And between them, James Franklin went to an absolute peach. I was watching the replay here and I think... Stephen Finn called it straight away. I've had it absolutely plum, isn't it? Yeah. He's played around the, his front pad and he's missed a full straight one it's and he is gone. Yeah, it's hit in middle and leg. Um, sort of nipped in on the angle. Um, yeah, it was a very excellent piece of bowling. And I think you, you've got a hat to eat as well, haven't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I will eat my hat, said Stephen Finn. I'm wearing as, a hat uh, as well. Craig, point. Craig Overton was at the top of his run. That was a sensational <laughs> piece of bowling from Overton. It's the end of the over. It's 242 for seven. So who have we got now? Tom Helm. Who is this on Test Match? Test match <laughs> 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 he is, uh, Stephen is currently eating his hat. Kevin Hand's going to get a photo of uh, a Middlesex hat. You can hear him uh, <laughs> chewing away there. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think one thing we can be certain of, this game's going to be over tonight. We had three overs until T. <laughs> um, oh. The score's 2-4-2 two for seven. And that's a fantastic over. It's a triple wicket maiden for <laughs> Craig Overton. It sounded better three balls ago, didn't it? For us? <laughs> um, Eskenazi was trapped LBW by one that nipped back. Franklin was caught behind by Ben Cox by one that got really big on him. Uh, sorry, just nipped away. He's, he, he was gone for a pair. And then Harris played around his front pad and uh, has had Stephen Finn eating his hat because he was trapped LBW. I bounced back in Harry there. He's, you know, he, well, he's, he's an excellent batsman. And again, he's, he's been one of the stellar night watchmen. He's another guy who's, who's produced some excellent innings as night watchman um, and helped win us games with the bat um, and save us games with the bat. So, yeah, Lewis, unfortunate. Lewis Gregory is coming in to John Simpson, the left-hander, with a field spread. And they're taking at least one as he turns it into the leg side. Tom Helm is the new... Oh, is that Harry Podmore? I thought it was Tom Helm. It's Harry Podmore, isn't he? He's got quite distinctive shoulders, Podmore. He does, doesn't he? He's and quite very poor, and poor tattoos, I'd describe him as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his shoulders I'm looking at, it's the writing down his arm that I'm looking at. Um, so the field there, there were a couple of slips in place, but everyone else was back. Uh, Alex Lees was inviting John Simpson, who is the key player now. He's, uh, he's got 48. He was inviting him to take a single. Uh, Middlesex still plenty of work to do. 62 to win. They need 305. They're 243 for seven. 
Um, yeah, not many of the Middlesex. It's not really a very tattooed dressing room, is it? It's not like um, some of the others in in county cricket, where it's a, a few more, a couple more sleeves elsewhere. No, I. Um, it's five slips, by the way. Yeah, I'm. I'm not entirely sure that Angus Fraser. <laughs> it's not his bag. No, no. So we've got five slips for Podmore. Gregory is has been shaping it away from the right-handers, so it's going to be full, you'd think. There's cover, there's point. No one back at fine leg, in he comes. And he's left, he's able to leave that outside off stump, on length, I'd say. Cause yeah, a little bit of zip there, I think. Mm. Gregory gets lovely shape on the ball. You can see it sort of angling towards the stumps and leave the batsman, so it draws. He gets a lot of wickets from drawing people into playing balls that necessarily they don't have to. Um, that's a great skill to have. Um, and yeah, he just seems to always, always try and threaten that outside edge, which with five slips um, and no fine leg, I'd imagine he's trying to do here. <laughs> yeah, he is at the top of his mark now. Uh, he's coming in to pop more. The right-hander, five slips still waiting, and that one's going to have to be... Oh, he's left him as well. He's tried to defend that, and it's just gone past the outside edge. Gregory's got a great follow-through, hasn't he? It's almost, it sort of celebrates in his follow-through. Yeah. He runs round to cover. Yeah, well, that's, that's again, that from this angle that we're at, sort of a very straight mid-off um, over, over Lewis Gregory's left shoulder. Mm. You can see the ball angling in towards the stumps and then dart away at the last minute. So... Harry Podmore here will see the ball coming towards his stumps Oof. and him feel like he has to play it and then it leaves him at the last second like that. Here comes Gregory again. He'll be looking for a similar delivery to the last. He's up past the umpire and again it's full and straight and again it's left Podmore. This is a lovely piece of bowling from Gregory. Beautiful. It's almost doing, it's almost swinging too much. They're too good of balls. They're the sort of balls you want to save for a, your top five <laughs> batters. You don't want to waste them on numbers 10 and 11. You, um... I mean, this must be tough to watch. Um, well, especially when I was middle. talking up our chances of winning the game about five minutes ago and it's all been turned on its head. But I did say that this was a very important period. You did. Um, and the MCC were throwing their dice into the ring, I suppose, um, uh, to, try, to, try and take these, to try and take these wickets to suck the life out of our chase. And, and they've turned it into an even more interesting game now. Gregory's in again with point and, mid and square leg now back. And he's got the single he wants. They're appealing because they think it hit his pad before his bat. But uh, the umpire doesn't agree. And they've run through for a single, which is... Um, so the field is going to spread again here. But uh, from I was going to say, it's tough to watch as a Middlesex player, but as part of the fast bowlers union, this must be quite... You know, it's both Overton and Gregory are bowling beautifully here, mm. aren't they? You, it's it's a great great bowling to watch. Yeah, they are. I mean, they've bowled enough jaffers now. They can <laughs> sort of, they can bowl a couple of pies to get us off and and running again if they want. Um, but yeah, it's certainly it's impressive bowling. I think that both of those guys having grown up playing at Taunton, you have very little margin for error. Mm, here comes Gregory again into Simpson. He'll be looking for a single, and he's he's found a run, at least one. Will he come back for two? He's last ball of the over, and he's so chosen to back his tail end partner, Harry Podmore. He's come back for two. He's, he's reached his 50 as well. It's his 59th ball he's brought out with. He's got three fours and a sixth. Six. It's been an excellent knock from John Simpson. It's good to see him showing a bit of faith in uh, his uh, lower order partner. Yeah, Harry can bat. Harry's a proper batsman. He scored hundreds in the second team last year. Um, he's obviously not had too much opportunity to bat in first class cricket um, so it'd be a good opportunity for him to test himself in probably the most challenging conditions of the day um, and of the match you know chasing another 60 to win um, you know there's an air of responsibility that he has here to try not to get out to stay with John Simpson as long as he possibly can um, so yeah he, he'll he'll feel the responsibility here but it can only be good for him two four six for seven uh, Craig Overton fresh from a triple wicket maiden including a hat trick I'd say this we've got two overs till dinner or supper or whatever we're calling it and I would say they're two of the most important overs of the match as he comes in past the umpire to Podmore who's turned him into the leg side and we're going to pick up at least one they're coming back for two we call that we clip like toenails they're coming back for three <laughs> three here that's for perfect outcome you'd say for Middlesex it's lovely yeah two four nine for seven the score moves on to Podmore has four from well, five balls I mean we'd probably have rather five overthrows and have Podders <laughs> at the other end but you know we'll take second best <laughs> So, how many? How's Alex Lee's going to set up his field for John Simpson here? He'd, we'd think very I've spread. There'll be a sweeper on both sides, but they'll keep their catches because they'll still fancy their chances of finding the edge, given mm. that it is nibbling around a little bit. Um, it looks as though deep square leg and deep point are heading out onto the boundary. There's a third man there to cut off the 
thick outside edge that may occur on uh, and mid off. Plenty of singles as Craig Overton sets off to come in to John Simpson, who just drills him up to mid on, and that's one of the to him. Mm. Um, yeah, it looks like the other the um, the fielders extra cover mid off mid on are also just lurking a little bit, trying to invite the single um, to get Harry Podmore back on strike, which shows that they're not backing Podders to get through a few balls of, uh, of Craig Overton here. Here he is again, Overton, over wicket to the left-handed Simpson, who is pulling him, but not getting any of it. It's hip, five pad, like maybe? The, the duck paw. It was sort of a <laughs> short ball that didn't get up that you think mm. about ducking, but then it's coming towards your chest, and you think, oh, I've got a player shot at this, and... And he sort of gloved it away down to... Did he give it runs? I think... Mm, yes, he has taken a run. Yeah, um, yeah so he it sort of gloved it towards a backwards square leg where it's trickled away and someone's fetched it and thrown it back to the bowler. That's for 250 up for middle section. It's 55 to win. This is going to be a very exciting finish either way. They are seven down. Harry Podmore here. First issue is keeping three balls from Craig Overton out. Here comes one of them, and that's perfectly played by Podmore. Really sturdy, solid solid forward defensive. Commandingly put his front foot down the wicket. If I was the bowler here, I wouldn't be happy seeing all, all eight spikes of his or whatever on the bottom of his shoe <laughs> heading towards me, so I'd be trying to get one up round his ears now. That was a Stephen Finn special, I'd say. That way, yeah. Get in I, behind it. Yeah, get in behind it and then hope that you've got the reactions to get out of the way of the short one. Eight balls till dinner. Here's the first. And uh, Overton has been turned to mid-on. It's quite a wide mid-on for no run. Is that actually what it's called? Is the official break dinner? I think so. Or are we just, just labelling it what we want? I think we want? we've sort of been given licence to call it what we want. I love it. Uh, DT on day one. Dave Townsend was calling it supper. Nick Gubbins has been calling it supper. There must be a marketing team or something that can, <laughs> can be paid hundreds of thousands of pounds to come up with a name for it, surely. <laughs> Here comes Overton again. Last ball of the over to Podmore. And that is again well played. The man at fifth slip is doing the fielding. But it's, it's like an attempted, yeah. an attempted Yorker. It's like a gamble there. You, as the bowler, you're thinking, do I just run up and try and do what I've done for the last two overs or do I try and just slip one through him and... Uh, Craig's tried to slip one through him there, but luckily for us, he hasn't managed to, and it's sort of under-edged towards the fifth slip that was waiting there for the catch. Lewis Gregory will bowl the final over before the unnamed break. <laughs> yeah, um. the break that shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> um, John Simpson will be on strike. He has 51. He's played very well. He's played he's batted tw well twice in this game. He put on an important stand in 98 with David Milan yesterday. What about the 40-minute food interval? Sounds a bit, oh, bit the functional, isn't it? Lovely, <laughs> 40 though. minute food interval. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So we've got the field spread again. So there's singles on offer for Simpson as Gregory comes in over the wicket uh, to the left hander. And he's going to take one of those singles out to the man at a uh, deep backward square, sort of fine leg, long leg kind of position. Swinging like an absolute banana out there. It's, it's like, um, it's weird though. It's, it's so funny that usually uh, when a ball's 56 overs old, you expect it to either be doing absolutely nothing or reverse, reverse. swinging. But this mm. is quite obviously conventional swing. Um, and, it's going, and it's going big. So um, as a bowler, I'm all for this. Let's play pink ball games every <laughs> game. <laughs> so uh, Podmore on strike. There are five balls until that interval. And we have... Um, <laughs> Have we lost one of our slips, or is he coming in now? I'd We've definitely got four. You've in, got to have five here, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, you, you're throwing the dice here. It gets to the stage where you've got so many slips in that, you know, you don't want to put token ones in there that you mm. know aren't going to catch the catch if it's going to come. But, you know, get as many people who can catch in there as possible. Here comes Gregory again, and they're not going to be busy there, the, the slips, because Podmore is really firmly in behind a That's defensive a shot wall. there. Where's he from? He's from Acton, isn't he? Mm. Tricky one. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I thought I was going to have the wit to come up with something funny, but I don't, so I can only apologise. It's all right. I mean, I can't think of anything either. No. It's uh, four balls left of this over as Gregory comes in to Podmore again, and he's going to be defending that. Where's that gone? That's gone to like your, that. the fifth slip. Fifth slip, yeah. He, he's found that guy, fella, a couple of times. The yeah. Acton oh, Anchor, lovely. yes, there we go. The Acton Anchor. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> 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 
can Lewis Gregory get past the Acton Anker? There are three balls remaining until a very important little break in this game. I mean, that, that can get interpreted in many ways when you've had a couple <laughs> of beers, I'm afraid. Here he comes again. And he's, uh, the Acton Anker is in behind that one as well. And the man at point is doing the fielding. You wouldn't want to get your words wrong either, would you? You could be being a bit rude about uh, yeah, well, yeah. Harry Podmore if you weren't careful. So we have two that's balls probably, left. It's <laughs> probably one of the kinder things he's ever been called about. <laughs> we have two balls left of this session. Lewis Gregory will bowl them both, and he uh, is bowling very nicely here. Yeah, that's that one, sort of the ball that he tries to angle in. There's no shape on that. He sort of angles it in towards the stumps to try and kid the batsman. It's up to the stumps again, and uh, yes. Harry Podmore is able to leave that outside off stump. Big banana through to the keeper again. It's good skills, I think. Um, you know, he's shown there that in two balls, or in three balls, he's gone bigger way swinger, a sort of a straight ball back into the stumps, um, which can be very dangerous when the ball is swinging as much as it is now. Um, and then a big boom and away swinger, try and attempt or trying to play with the number nine, Harry Podmore's mind. <laughs> so final ball of the session. The score is 251 for seven. Middlesex need 54 runs. They're not going to get it off this one ball. Wouldn't have thought so. That would be tough going. But here comes Gregory up to the stumps now. And that's well played by Harry Podmore. And he's got in behind it and he's sent it to the man at point. And there is no run. So that is the end of the session. Umpire Russell Evans takes the bails off. And the players wander off. I think John Simpson will be quite relieved. He'll come back in, he'll regroup. And then uh, he's sort of a specialist in this situation, isn't he? He's, he's good at uh, guiding the tail to... to uh, through choppy waters, but the score is 251 for seven. Simpson has 52. Podmore has fourth and 13. He's done very well. The Acton anchor, as he's now known, who was a hat trick not long ago. Craig Overton bowled beautifully. He got Stevie exciting. Eskenazi, James Franklin and James Harris in, in the space of three deliveries. And uh, that turned the game on its head. Middlesex were, were rather cruising. John Simpson and Stevie Eskenazi had put on a decent stand. Uh, but along came Overton. And he's that kind of player, actually, Craig Overton, isn't he? But the players are going off now for a 40-minute break. I'm sure Stephen Finn would like to go and get himself something to eat. No I doubt. Would I would love to, yeah. It's dinner time, after all. <laughs> so thank you for joining us, Stephen Finn. That Pleasure. Was a very enjoyable little chat. No problem. Enjoyed your analysis of the, uh, the swinging ball. Kevin Hand's coming back in. So, as we well. go... What a hat trick, hey? Um, I've just had a tweet from I think it's Andrew Wilmot who says, "What is it about Middlesex and hat tricks?" Toby Rowland Jones was Jake yes, Ball at Trent Bridge last year, and uh, yeah, now this one here for uh, Overton. It's fair to say that that game has been turned on its head. Uh, Middlesex were doing well. It was looking so good, wasn't it? They I, were I was saying very... shades of last year with John Simpson um, leading the way in a run uh, in a run chase. Uh, so he's still there on 52. As long as Simpson's there, Middlesex will have a chance. And of course, against the summit primarily. Uh, a Somerset bowling lineup, Overton, yes. and I'd love to see if it was Craig that was playing in the match down at Taunton last year. We'll have a look in a little while. Yeah, and, I uh, feel like it was. The second innings, uh, Leach and Gregory, they'll have horrible memories of uh, run chases against Simpson, but uh, <laughs> isn't it just wonderful that this uh, this is the way it's working out here, that Simpson, uh, it, it, you know, the much talk about having it in the UAE and just had a couple of tweets about uh, the uh, twilight hours and so on. Um, but uh, if you wouldn't mind, just wrapping up the uh, where we are in that second innings. Absolutely. So Middlesex were set a target this morning of uh, 305 by the MCC. Tom Helm was the man who picked up two wickets in uh, the space of an over this morning to get rid of uh, the MCC, sorry, MCC tail. They were bowled out for 151, meaning Middlesex needed 305 to win. They got off to a bit of a flyer. Uh, Robson and Gubbins put on 43 before Robson went to... Uh, he was caught at by Alex Lees, running back from mid-on off Jack Leach, the first to go. Then uh, Gubbins was the next man to go after putting on uh, a decent stand with Nick Compton, who also played both very well. They both got to 50. Gubbins was LBW to Crane, Mason Crane, who's, who's, who's bowled well this innings. He's been slightly expensive, but he's bowled well. Um, David Milan was... Followed soon after, he was bowled by uh, Lewis Gregory. Then Compton went to Crane as well. And then Eskenazi and Simpson settled in for a very good stand. They put on plenty. They put on very nearly 100. And uh, before they both were in the 40s when 
Craig Overton returning in the twilight period. Alex Lee's turned to both of his quick bowlers. Liam Plunkett, of course, has been ruled out of this game injured. He's back with Yorkshire and Dubai now. Um, but Eskenazi was trapped LBW by Overton to one that nipped back in and wrapped him on the back pad. Back pad, and uh, the finger went up. Then James Franklin went for a pair. The second pair we've seen this match, Tom Alsop got one. Um, just Franklin had one that just shaped to be at his body and then just left him, and he dangled his bat out and was caught behind. And then James Harris was the third of the three. He was LBW as well, absolutely plum in front. So that they are the seven wickets to have fallen. There's 2-5-1 for seven. And Middlesex need 54 runs to win. And the MCC need three wickets. Good man, well done. Thank you, Will. Uh, Will McPherson will be back after the interval here on BBC Radio London and Five Live Sports Extra. Uh, we'll get Nick Gubbins back up towards the end. I think he was uh, a little bit upset that uh, Stephen Finn knocked him off the mic there. Um, yeah, yeah, booted him off the mic, I think was the word that he used. Absolutely. Uh, now, in March 2007, Pakistan cricket coach Bob Walmer was found dead in his hotel room following his country's World Cup exit. What followed was a case that shocked the sporting world and made headlines across the globe. Uh, during yesterday's interval, we heard part one of a Five Live sports special uh, that explored the circumstances around his death and rumours of foul play. In part two, Alison Mitchell investigates where those rumours came from and speaks to his family, his coaching staff and the policeman who ended up leading a murder investigation.
And welcome back to Abu Dhabi for the uh, county champions match, uh, uh, Middlesex against the MCC here. Listen to BBC Radio London on Five Live Sports Extra. Uh, that was a Five Live Sports special on the death of Bob Woolmer. You can download the whole programme on the Five Live Sports website. Uh, we are into the final session of this match on day three because uh, the target is 305 and Middlesex uh, at dinner, supper, lunch, tea. I don't know where we are anymore with these <laughs> intervals. <laughs> they require 54 more runs. Um, they are 251 for seven. Uh, they're not out batsman John Simpson on 52 uh, and Harry Podmore on four echoes of last season for Simpson. Uh, great chase down at uh, Somerset. I think that will probably be the one that I'll always remember Simpson for uh, to this to this day. Uh, of course, I'm sure there's plenty more to come from him. Um, and it was up against the Somerset boys, uh, Gregory, Overton, Leach. Well, he's got Crane and Lythe up against him as well tonight, but I'm sure it'll be Gregory and Overton who are the two to try and go hard at Middlesex, pick up these three wickets and not allow John Simpson to steady things once again. It's uh, been an interesting day for Middlesex. There have been some really good contributions, as there would have to be in a chase of 305. 52 from Nick Gubbins, who was up with us just before the interval. Sam Robson, 20. Nick Compton has 59. Milan, 14. Eskenazi, 44. And then John Simpson with 52. Poor James Franklin got another snort from Overton. This time his first ball. He was out for a second ball duck in the first innings. Uh, James Harris uh, went first ball. And that was the hat-trick for Overton, having picked up Eskenazi, first of all, LBW. Uh, and yes, now, Harry Podmore, who was out there for 12 minutes with Simpson, who's batted for 84 minutes for his 52. Middlesex require 54 further runs with only Tom Helm, who batted quite well as the night watchman, not, uh, mm. night watchman in the first innings, uh, and Ravi Patel to come. The umpires are ready. They're out onto the field. Uh, quite... Uh, the fielders will be following them shortly. There is Harry Podmore, padded up, about to put on his helmet. John Simpson picks up his bat now as well. The uh, Middlesex chairs gather around the outfields, and uh, what has been a fascinating three days uh, could have a fine finale here. Um, it is going to finish a day early. The twilight hours have really had an impact on the uh, proceedings throughout the game, and um, as a result... It's been a slightly shortened game, but uh, I think that was predicted as well, wasn't it? That usually it's only if there is interruption that it goes uh, deep into a fourth day anyway. Uh, this match now into its eighth year. Uh, so the umpires are out in the middle. No sign of the MCC just yet. As I say, the umpires are very, very prompt. Uh, ben Cox has just stepped out, in fact, uh, has appeared down below. As Gregory has one for 63 from 13 in this innings, an economy of 4.8. Uh, Overton, 10 overs, 3 for 30. Leach, 1 for 50 from 13. Crane... Two for 79 from 16 and live. Five overs, none for 23. Here come the MCC. And uh, out they go. Who's that charging ahead in front? Is that Overton? It's Lees, I think, the captain. It's Lees. Mm. Dear me, he's a big boy as well, isn't he? Uh, I didn't he think is. that. <laughs> it looks a little stockier. And to say that you look stockier than uh, Overton is saying something. Um, so Lees, the uh, skipper, yes, he... Um, Got 41 in the first innings, Lees, uh, but just nine second time. And there we go, the batsman out over the uh, ropes now, and uh, out to the middle they go. That familiar hum again at this time this uh, of the evening. What on earth is it? We will find out once the broadcast is finished. I'm not sure. Very distant traffic, possibly. Yeah, maybe a motorway at this time of night, getting busy, uh, possibly. Um, so, 51 to win, 305 the target here on. BBC Radio London, five live sports extra. If you want to tweet us, at Kevin Hand BBC, at Willis underscore McP. Um, there were still so many tweets to get through today, and apologies that we didn't get through them all, but I think we did get a flavour of uh, what everybody was feeling. Um, Indeed. We but, yeah, have, so but we do have an absolutely belting final session set up here, don't we? I mean, it's certainly going to finish tonight. 54 required for Middlesex. Three wickets for the MCC. Craig Overton will continue. He, he and Lewis Gregory have both had sensational games. Dunwell with bat and ball. Overton has seven in the match so far. Gregory six. Overton, of course, very memorably. That hat-trick before tea. Tea, supper. 
whatever we're calling it. Uh, yes. So, uh, John Simpson on strike, two slips in place in the field. Pretty well spread, eh? Um, yeah, they're inviting the single, aren't they? More mm. than happy to give him one. I had to drop that scorecard from Taunton last year in just a few moments. Mm. Uh, Jason Fage on the uh, Twitter in a moment. As in comes over some bowls. Simpson's going to drop a possibly two Running here. Hard. Yeah, out to deep backward point. They've run the first back. They come for the second. Well run. Uh, so Middlesex require 52 further runs. For Middlesex subfield, they've run two on there. <laughs> so one man, Liam Plunkett's, of course, back with Yorkshire. Mm. And, uh, not sure who it is. It was Tom Lace yesterday, didn't we? Um, on the effect of the uh, twilight hours, Jason on Twitter says, early April at Lords, uh, same as it used to be, would save the ECB thousands too, can hardly be good prep for the early season in the UK. Well, they all do like the warm weather training now, don't they? As Overton's in, bowls, and Ford goes Simpson drops a single in front of a deepish mid-off. Um, and also the season starts so much earlier than it ever did now. Mm. Uh, Middlesex underway in the second round. The season starts April 7th. Nearly in March having the Champions match then, aren't you? If Middlesex want to get in a Oh, they've got a match at Fenners, Gus was saying. Inquiring if I'd be coming along to that one as well. <laughs> Cheeky so and so. Right. Podmore to face his first ball after the break. He's only got four slips now. He's mm -hmm. lost one of his friends behind there. Yeah. And they're quite tightly packed, aren't they, those slips? Oh yeah, they're close to the um to the batsman as well. Yeah, given the pace of a bowling. Certainly are. Overton's past the umpire, he bowls and uh, Podmore on the back foot turns a single down to long leg. He moves to five, 255 for seven. Uh, William Davis, who's watching on the uh, live stream, the MCC and Middlesex are doing for this match. Crane was getting some excellent drift and spin, plenty of flight as well. Hope he kicks on. Uh, he says, I reckon Mr. Gubbins fancies your job. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got an England career ahead of him first. And uh, we were mentioning, you know, going back, well, you know, about how cricket's viewed when we started doing the county commentaries. Well, who's going to listen to that? You know, <laughs> well, nobody goes to the, nobody's interested in the championship. They don't go to it. In comes over to Bowles and Ford goes Simpson pushing up some mid off. There's no run. Pinner Bay uh, has tweeted in to say, uh, BBC Radio coverage of county of the county championship has transformed my interest from nil to my favourite sporting competition, bar none. Tar very, very much. Uh, thank you, Pinabay. Um, good to have you with us. Uh, so he said, P.S., it also turned me into a Surrey member, um, so not all good. <laughs> <laughs> no flying aircraft passes overhead. Not a Chinook on this occasion. Here's uh, Overton. Simpson runs him away down towards third man. That was bold by Simpson, wasn't it? To uh, dangle the bat out. Indeed. So running the ball away, which uh, you think of the, poor, poor, the two deliveries that poor James Franklin received. Awful <laughs> ones. Yes. Well, they've taken five runs from the first five balls of the first over after the break. So the target is inside 50. It's down to 49. Uh, wonderful to see Mason Crane take a wicket live to the pictures uh, from lords.org. And words from Kevin Hans says Mike Martin on Twitter. Yeah, it is a nice. Idol. It's all evolving off the field as well here, isn't it? It is. Uh, over some bowls to Podmore pushing up to mid on. A dot ball, and that's the over. 256 for seven. Uh, Podmore five, Simpson 56. Uh, and uh, Grippo on uh, Friday starts for championship games at odds with growing radio. I can't get to New Road, but I follow was on BBC at work. Uh, they still follow at the weekend. Um, Grippo on that one. Uh, Rob as well in a moment as well, um, who uh, is less than impressed with the complaints about the proposals for the 2020 competition which we've been discussing today and discussing the responses of uh, so many die-hard cricket fans uh, he said Brits get very interested in the BBL and the IPL in a big way because it's exciting and high quality can that not apply here a lot of English just need something to complain about no matter what it is they just need something to moan about Hard hey do you want to have a guess at the nationality here Rob um, their favorite ex-player puts down the new competition it must be terrible and bad and wrong uh, 
and also spells the end of county cricket. Well, a lot of ex-pros are actually talking up the T20. Well, all they? the players want to play. Well, exactly, yeah. They wish it was around their, their day, I think. And a lot of the ex-pros are either media or, or, um, or agents. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Lewis Gregory, his first ball after the break, and he's been turned into the leg side by Simpson, the left hand. He's coming over wicket to him. There's no run. He's a, Simpson's only got one slip now, but there is a quite wide gully. Duckets for slip, I think. Live is the gully. There's a cover, a mid-off. A man of a deep point. Deep square leg. As it had started on the BBL, I was thinking Rob was an Aussie. He's from North Wales. <laughs> Here comes Gregory again. The Somerset man. They've had a good game of Somerset players. Up to the stumps, and Simpson is driving. But he's got an inside edge. He's gone to... Mid, uh, mid wicket even there's no run <laughs> Andrew Wilmot says he googled Lord's live stream wound up watching a bunch of old fussy parliamentarians <laughs> uh, not a pink ball in sight Lord's overload he says Will Gubbin says brother of Nick who uh, was joining us earlier I went to all four days of that match at Taunton last year Simo will do it again he is a champion oh we have to drop that scorecard yeah here comes Gregory would have been playing in that game and Simpson is on the back foot, and he can't get it past cover. We're about stage of the day where the ball is a little bit difficult to follow from our position up high here in the, uh, the spaceship stand, as we've come to know it. And case of tweets as a photo, having a relax, a well-earned relax in the sun, listening to the cricket, rode right on the new season, Shinner Conservatory on the sofa, <laughs> feet up. Well done, Kate. Enjoy that. Gregory... At the top of the mark again, here he comes. Not that tall, Lewis Gregory, and just John Simpson, who's driving up to mid-off, and they've taken a quick single. I think Podmore was slightly caught off guard. The field of air won't be delighted that they've taken a single on him, because it wasn't... It went straight to him. Uh, Rob also queries 20 years for an emotional attachment. Look at the BBL IPL, pretty sure they have some emotional Yeah, fans. well, exactly. It's not taken long at all. Mm. How long's the BBL been going? Six seasons. Six. And there are diehard fans. Memberships are far bigger than the counties already. But they are... You know, it's not like Lyth will be playing in London or Milan will be playing in Leeds. The, the BBL oh, follows the... No, not no? really. But increasingly, it's, it's more spread about. There are players who play for New South Wales, who play for... Uh, the Adelaide Strikers and whatnot. It's not, it's not drawn up on just purely on state yeah. lines. Gregory with the penultimate over after the break. He's into Podmore with three slips, and he's got an edge on that, inside edge down to fine leg, and they've taken a single. Middlesex just chipping away at this target. They are 2 5 8 for 7, 47 to win, 305 for target. Simpson has 57. He's a key man. 57 from 70. Three fours and a six. From 16, the Acton anchor. <laughs> Gregory with the last ball of his over. Field is still quite spread. He's over wicket to Simpson. It's very full, and he's going to get a single. He, the single he needs to keep the strike. 2 5 9 for 7 at the end of the over. It was a single out to the man at deep point. Tom Allsop, who lobs it in. One run. Um. Craig Overton did play in that match at Taunton, but Lewis Gregory didn't. Lewis Gregory did? No, I do remember he had a dip in form. Mm, middle um, of last season. Yeah, it was Craig Overton, Groeneveld, Leach played, Myberg, and Jim Allenby, who was the unlucky man to bowl the, uh, what would be the final delivery. And Simpson hit it away. 79 off 89, off 80 deliveries. At five fours and seven sixes. Remarkable knock. They chased 302 that day in 40, inside 46 overs, 45.4. Bold uh, declaration from uh, Chris Rogers. Yeah, 446 for nine declared. The 100 from Triscothic and a century from Trigo as well. Here's Overton around the wicket. And Simpson solidly behind this one. Field well spread. It has been that uh, after the interval on these uh, evenings so far, it hasn't been as tough as that hour that led up to the interval for the uh, batsman. Mm. Ball's now into its 60th over. It's a very tough time to bat that, as, as Stephen Finn was telling us before the break. The ball does funny things, even though it's not, um, not, not new. It swings around conventionally. Over some bowls, and Simpson drives out to point on the boundary, just a single. 
260 for four. 45 more to win. And uh, all of a sudden, do we just start to favour Middlesex? I think Middlesex are the favourites here. Well, certainly while Simpsons at the, at the crease, they are... Uh, they're the ones who uh, you'd back. But uh, if he were to go... And also, we saw earlier how quickly things change. They were cruising along with uh, Simpson and Eskenazi at the crease. They shared 80-odd, 90-odd. Everton's over the wicket to Podmore, who uh, nudges from a very straight line down to long leg, which was the uh, cry from the bowler. And, uh, yes, down to long leg it goes for a single. Had he have struck that, they'd... Uh, been jumping up and down. I was just going to say, so it was Allenby to Simpson. Gronevold was the bowler at the other end. Leach had bowled prior to Allenby, actually. Uh, so Leach, Craig Overton bowled the 40th over of that Middlesex chase that went to the 45th. The 41st was bowled by Leach and Gronevold to the 42nd. The 43rd was bowled by Leach. 44th by Gronevold and Allenby bowled that 46th. The big one, mm. sent away for six, so memorably. The, uh, I seem to remember some quite good video footage of the, uh, the Middlesex balcony. Oh, yes, that was very good. I, I know, who was it that filmed that? Here's uh, Overton, he's around the wicket, bowls, and this ball's full and dug out by Simpson, out to deep mid-wicket. They're going to pick up two, 263 for seven. Uh, it wasn't a regular player member. He was, um, I'm trying to think, would he have been, wouldn't have been Brendan McCullum, because he wouldn't have been down there. I don't think he would have been there, would he? Maybe George Bailey? He was the. He yeah, it was. It was George Bailey, wasn't it? Um, Overseas pro. Yeah, Bailey time, filmed yeah. it. Yeah, because he wasn't one of the absolute regulars for Middlesex, but was in doing a job in the um, white ball competition primarily, but did cover for Voges. Uh, around the wicket is Overton. This is hooked away out to deep backwards, uh, out to deep mid wicket. In fact, beat the man. It is, and no, that's that not. will be. Oh no! <laughs> it's that worse. The, the ball's two. done for us again, hasn't it? We've lost that. Yeah. <laughs> so, just the two. 265 for seven. Productive couple of overs V's for, uh, since the break for Middlesex. They're uh, chiselling away at that target, aren't they? Mm. Well, you can just see there's a little bit of a change in intensity. Uh, not on the MCC's part, but on the response of the ball as Overton is wide around the crease. Uh, around the way. Away out to point for a single 266 for five. BBC Radio London, five live sports extra. Myself, Kevin Hand, and Will McPherson. I've spotted that man at mid-off, Mason Crane, the leggy, just warming up. Gregory's certainly going to have one more, but just whether they might fancy the uh, sort of game-changing skills of a leg spinner can make batsmen do funny things, and uh, Crane's certainly a very good leg spinner, if, even if he is a little green at this stage of his career. So uh, we could... Could see some leg spin shortly. You'd think he'd be the favoured spinner in this situation rather than a uh, finger spinner like Jack Leach or uh, even Adam Live, you know. Who knows? Mm. But uh, he's going to go around the wicket to... Around the wicket, even. Rather than around. Round the wicket to John Simpson, the left-hander. He's got one slip, which is Ben Duckett. He's got a gully as he comes up past the umpire and he's turned that straight to the man at mid-wicket and there's no run 2-6-6 for 7 I was just looking ahead to the uh, cricket fixtures to come after this one for your live cricket commentary as well just in case this all happens in a flash here it could easily uh, couldn't it a lot of university matches happening at the moment in England but uh, you know, the next domestic cricket from the BBC. In April comes 7th. Gregory, round wicket. And Simpson smacked him hard over cover and it's going to go for four. Rolls away to the boundaries, middle that, straight over the man. I think it's Alex Lees. Haven't been able to see that ball at all, have you? I, I saw it come off the bat and I saw it roll... You saw it come off the bat? Over the rope. <laughs> no, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I genuinely did. I, I missed it. I lost it while it uh, travelled over cover. But... Mm. Um, the fielder's down by the rope there, picking it up. That's a makes it 270 for seven, which means there's only 35 required now. Simpson is just such a good cricketer, isn't he? 68 from 78 now, four fours and a six. Gregory up to stumped again. And he's, oof, he's 
bowled that down the leg side, and Simpson's missed it. Uh, it's called a bit of a pad, and it's gone through to the keeper. Uh, yes, so that first round in Division 1, Essex, Lancashire, Surrey, Warwickshire, and Yorkshire, Hampshire, which I believe is the sports extra game, uh, Yorkshire's first home game of the season, taking on Hampshire. And then the second week is Middlesex away at Hampshire. Warwickshire versus Yorkshire. Here comes Gregory. Oof. Simpson just defended that uppishly into the leg side. It's rolled down to middle. And it was a cry of catch, but there was no fielder nearby who could take it. There's no run. Gregory's sort of fallen over in his run-up. Random female, our friend who's been following us around for a couple of days. She's uh, been in touch. Blimey, a lot's been going on, she says. I was hoping for a few hours' play to listen to on my way back from Cardiff. Back to Cardiff, sorry. She was uh, travelling to Canterbury yesterday, I think. So, uh, from Cardiff. Well, you've got a little bit of play left here, but not a few hours' worth, as Gregory comes in again to Simpson, and he's defending straight back to the bowler. There's one ball left this over. Gregory... I can't tell from the from this distance, but from, from the live stream, you can sort of tell he's... He's operating with a smile on his face. He looks like he's quite enjoying himself. He's got the ball hooping around. Kevin Atkins on Twitter is very happy. He says, Kev, how cool is this? Modern technology is great. He's got his big widescreen TV uh, with uh, the, <laughs> the pictures Lord's of stream. this match. The Lord's stream, the Lord's or Middlesex stream of it, and our commentary. Good to have you with us, Kevin. Here comes Gregory for the last ball of his 15th over. And Simpson's just letting that go outside. We're going to see a wide here. It, did, it was a little bit wayward. And uh, Ben Cox, away to his left, was diving to stop it, and he kept it, uh, kept it safe. Did you do that one from Dave Clark? He said, I've got it hooked up to my TV from the YouTube stream. If only we could get this for county games. I was thinking the Lord's stream sounds rather like a holy site, doesn't it? Yes. Sounds like something from a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Shanahan's got it on the YouTube channel as well, he says. Here comes Gregory again. And that's been drilled through the covers. That'll be four more for Simpson. 2.75 for seven is the score. And the Middlesex just need 30. That was an expensive over. Uh, you know, it's, um, Middlesex are fighting desperately, of course, to win this game. But it still would be quite nice for them. Mm -hmm. um, and especially the manner in which they would have done it today. Uh, I don't think the MCC will walk away and remember the game at all. Um, chasing 305 on final day, I think it's a third But on the back, of, day, on the back of last effort. year, to go and do something like this again today, this, you know, they, they haven't, you know, it's been a pre-season match for Middlesex. Um, I don't think the coaches have put too much pressure on the players um, at this stage of the season. It's just time in the middle for the batsmen, overs in the legs for the bowlers. Um, but it's been a very competitive game out on the field nonetheless. However, my point just being, if if they do do it, get over the line, that really will be a boost going into the final season. The unbeaten run continues. Mm. It's a very strong uh, side. Here's Overton right arm over to Podmore. Uh, leaves alone outside of the off stump through to Cox. 275 for seven. I didn't particularly give them much hope of getting close to it, I must say, this morning. It looked like a very big chase. It well, did. It, was, it is a very big chase. It did, but they, they had a very good first hour this morning, I'd say. And that, yeah, well, that they, was it, wasn't it? it was they, they lopped off the tail very quickly, and then Gubbins and Robson came out, all mm. guns blazing. Gubbins Compton. hit the first ball of the innings through, through uh, away for four, and they just looked like they meant business, didn't they? Overton bowls, and this is left alone outside of the off stump uh, by Podmore. Yeah, it was interesting what Gubbins said about, well, we haven't really seen each other since that day, <laughs> those couple of days. I think the celebrations probably went on for a few days by the sounds of it. Um, but they haven't seen each other really the, the squad since then. Everybody's been off in different directions around yeah, the world and different tours and I suppose that's a consequence of their success, isn't it? Lots of players got called up to the Lions, Ireland, yeah. England. So Everton, who bowls, and behind this, Podmore. Looks at the part, doesn't he, up to mid-off? Yeah, he's playing nicely. We were discussing this, weren't we, that I'd have said that Podmore came in ahead of Helm until I saw Helm bat as night watchman. Mm. It's a brilliant display by Helm. He and... Gubbins made Batterton look the easiest at any time yesterday. Indeed. They were going well first thing in the morning. Uh, the night watch from resuming after the loss. Robson towards the close on day one. Four slips crouched down. Here's Overton. Well, short of a length and 
over the top of it. Podmore rides it really nicely. He actually looks a lot like James Harris out there batting. Harry he Podmore. does. It reminds yeah. me a lot of James Harris. Mannerisms as well. Where he replays the shot, then walks away. So, uh, good lower order for Middlesex. Mm. John Simpson leading the way again. Overton. Balls, and this ball is pushed up to mid off by Podmore. Uh, care for any revision on your uh, favourite wicketkeeper batsman in the country at the moment for for England? I don't think. Um, I think John Simpson is an excellent player. I'd, sadly, I just don't. I don't quite know why, but it, it, I don't think he's going to play for England. I just don't think he will. Well, Mike Gatting said at the end of last year, it's ridiculous to think that John Simpson probably never will play mm. for England, and he said it's just ridiculous that a man of his quality may never play for England. Here comes over some bowls and squares up Podmore on this. Beats him. Uh, through it goes to Cox. Hands on heads all round for the MCC. 275 for seven. I mean, there's some players out there that would dearly to beat Middlesex right now, i.e. some of certain Yorkshire players. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see um, some spin. Simpson's first class average is 31. Five is centuries, 29.50s. Um, now, he had a, two years where he lost his place in the side at Middlesex. Mm. Having had a really good start, he was opening at one stage for Middlesex when he burst in again, going back to those the dark days, really. Uh, let's just see, his first class debut was 2009. Um, so Gus's first season. I mean, from Bury, the leagues. And, um, yeah, I remember that match at Northampton, being mightily impressed with him, came in, did a good job, and he was opening for a while for Middlesex. But... Um, Somewhere around the 2012 season, he had two bad seasons, you know, really bad, where you know he was averaging in um, the low teens with the bat. Uh, lost his place in the side to Adam Rossington, but since his comeback then, he has just been incredibly good. Um, and to think that he had those two really low seasons in the middle of his career as well, because obviously the start of your career could be, you know, it takes a while to get the average up. So we have some spin. As predicted, Mason Crane, we spotted him warming up. And he's bowling to Simpson. The field is spread, the single is on offer. This is this is your moment, Mason Crane. There are 30 required for Middlesex as he comes up. And there's an appeal for court down the leg side, but it's not given. It never looked likely. Not least because I don't think the bat was anywhere near the ball. Um, so we have three men deep on the leg side. And two on the offside. We have a slip. The slip still there. Well, you think for the wrong one. Here's Crane again, and that's floated up, and they're going to get that single. So Crane will have it's 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 just pushed out to the manor. Cow corner on the fence, and they take one. You'd think that Crane has got a few balls at Harry Podmore here, four of them. And this is where Leggy's really a mess, all, isn't it? Bolling bowling the tail, Bamboo, mm. bamboozling tailenders. Yes, indeed. We've seen one inspired moment today. We have a hat trick of Craig Overton. He got rid of Eskenazi. Franklin, the captain, for a pair, and then James Harris for a golden duck as well in the space of three balls. And the MCC, while they don't need something quite that extreme, they do need an intervention very soon here. And Craig is the man that Alex Lees has entrusted with that job. We have two slips. Overton, interestingly, is the second of those two slips alongside Adam Live. Here comes Crane up stumps to a right-handed Podmore, who is driving out to cover, and there's no run. You'd fancy that the MCC won't mind Podmore driving out to cover, because it means that those two slips are in play. Here comes Crane again, up to the wicket. And that's firmly defended by Podmore, who's really looked very good since coming in after that hat-trick. Where are you in the first round of the season, Will? Chelmsford. Ooh. Essex, Lancashire, Cook versus Jimmy, and all sorts of other oh, yes, intriguing. Here is Pod, is Pod Crane to Podmore, and he's, that's for wrong one, I think. From, just hit him on the pad, and they've appealed, but it's no dice. It's a quite slightly stifled appeal. It wasn't that convincing. Essex, of course, were promoted from Div 2. They look quite strong. Two of the favourites to go down, Essex and so Lancashire. I think Lancashire are maybe Bucky's favourite to go down. Crane is up to the stumps again. And he's defended by Podmore. 
And that's the end of the over. 276 for seven. Just one from it. Crane's returning over. Simpson has 73. Yeah, the replay on that LBW, nobody looked particularly convinced, did they? No. Indicated, perhaps slipping down. Uh, 276 for seven, 73 for Simpson, and seven for Podmore. 305 is the target. BBC Radio London back with you again for another year of county championship cricket. Overton's carrying on, isn't he? I think that's a yes. good idea. A 13th year of ball by ball with Middlesex for BBC London. I think they did it up to 15 years now, perhaps, with Surrey. Wow. Overton's in, bowls and Simpson clips him away out to deep square, just a single. I won't mind that. No, it's uh, Simpson away from the strike. So Helm's Helm in the first innings, did we uh, remind listeners? 15 from 32 deliveries, crucially 57 minutes. Mm. If he bats for 57 minutes second time around, then Simpson <laughs> certainly would have hit those right well, assuming Simpson's still there. see what it meant to John Stevenson as well when they picked up one of the wickets earlier in the commentary box and John Stevenson was here I think it was Darwin yes. Milan and there was the one that missed the stumps um, yeah he was a hand when that wicket went down comes Overton bowls outside of the off stump there it goes um, and you do you know you spend two weeks with the team and prepare them for this match mm. ponderous slip cordon at the moment four of them there hmm well they get the chance to affect the end of this match. Pitch black overhead here in Abu Dhabi now. Bright light shining into the ground from all around, including the four big floodlights as forward goes. Podmore to Overton pushing back. He's not having any trouble picking it up, is he, Podmore? He's playing beautifully. Mm, it just hasn't been the same since the interval, since the twilight period. The ball has settled down a lot. Yep, I think the lights are taking full effect and it's just... Uh... That that sort of in between period is has ended. All the players down there for Middlesex, nobody gonna miss the end of this as Podmore is forward to Overton strokes the ball to mid off watchfully. Let's have a look. So uh, Patel I think has got his helmet on already. He's sat there ready to go, isn't he? It won't be him in next though. And then there's Helms over the other side, sat close to the coaches and uh, James Franklin, I think that is the skipper on the end. Yep. That's right. Overton. Ball is a bouncer underneath it. His uh, Podmore ducks underneath it and then just had to put his right hand down to make sure he didn't fall backwards in the crease. It wasn't particularly evasive action from uh, Podmore, but just nearly balanced backwards. It's always a nice sight for a bowler when a batsman does, <laughs> isn't it? Down comes Simpson to have a chat with him. There's only one ball left of the over. Um, possibly don't take the single. No. If it's there, or uh, watch for whatever he expects next. He's just been pushed back with the bouncer. Is it going to be a toe cruncher? He tried that before the break, didn't he? Overton bowls, and it's a full delivery, but not a Yorker. It's pushed up to mid on by Podmore, and another over survived by Podmore. He has 64. Simps sorry, he has 64. The overs are 64. Podmore has seven. Simpson has 74. And the total is 277 for seven, chasing uh, 305 here. The unbeaten champions of 2016 Middlesex. Will that run continue? Crane is going to continue. He's going to cover over. Simpson has got the strike, so the field is back again. He's just down here in front of us on the fence. It's a Middlesex sub, isn't it? Here comes Crane. He's got one slip. It's been turned to the man at 45, which, as you said earlier, is a sort of a T20 position, really. But then uh, mm. we, we'll adopt it for this. 277 for seven, so 28 required. 305 to win. Crane in again. And he's floated that one up a little bit more. And uh, Simpson's tried to drive into the offside, but he's just got a little inside edge. He's looking to drive down to long off, but it's Crane does the bowling in the leg side. Here he comes again. It's 
floated that up as well. He's inviting the drive from Simpson, and he's got it. It's gone down to long off, exactly where I was trying to put the previous drive. Uh, and they've taken a single, so Podmore has three balls from Cray. He's, he's scored seven so far, Podmore. He's batted very well, 32 balls. Here's Crane again. It's a bit flatter. Oh, it's beaten the outside edge. It's a beautiful piece of bowling. Smart piece of keeping as well from Ben Cox, who, uh, not sure where I thought he'd taken the bails off, actually, but he obviously hasn't, because he's not, unless he's just leaving, <laughs> which I, you know, you wouldn't expect that. Mm. Here's Crane again. He's got two balls left of this over. And he's beaten, he's beaten Podmore again. They're appealing, he's gone. The finger has gone up. That's a beautiful piece of bowling from Mason Crane. It's not that loopy, but it's, it's, it's gone across the batsman. It's turned nicely. Middlesex have two wickets remaining. It's 278 to eight. Yep, we'll see the replay now. Uh, that was a lovely piece of bowling from Crane. We said when we saw him in the North v South last week, he looked really good. And uh, Harry Podmore, oh dear. Well, the umpire, yep, didn't waste any time whatsoever. Bales were whipped off as well by the wicketkeeper Cox. Sharp work from him. And uh, he wasn't particularly pushing a long way away there, uh, Podmore, was he? You know, it was an angled bat that he played I think it's a good on ball. a line that he had to play at. Mm. Yeah, it was a terrific ball because, you know, there wasn't much wrong uh, from Podmore. Where he walks off, and I think he has really said, well, what can I do about that? <laughs> um, and that, that's, uh, those, these few deliveries we've just seen here are reminiscent to what we saw from Crane uh, last week in the final North v South game. Ravi Patel is up on the side now practising his shots. Right-handed batsman, the slow left-arm spinner. Helmet on, helmet's been on for a while for Ravi again. He's got a good forward defensive, but um, pressure situation could be coming up for him. But first, it's Helm. Off goes Podmore. Uh, well batted. It was a really good effort. The big question Podmore. now is how Simpson plays it. Uh, he has 75, but they still need. As well as Helm batted in the first innings, perhaps that gives Simpson a little bit of confidence not to mm. take too higher risk on maybe these shots. Maybe just keeps doing what he was doing with Podmore and then maybe if they're down to... What's well, got? 27 to win. Yeah. That's close. Yeah, it's a good couple of overs, isn't it? And the game's done. So a few words from Lees to John Simpson there as they walk back past MCC skipper and Yorkshire opener. Here's the Lancashire and Middlesex wicketkeeper. Crane has one ball to survive here. He's in, he's in conference with his captain. Ben Duckett's coming over as well from short cover to have a little chat about what they're going to do here. They're offering... Uh, this, this is a tricky thing for them. They want Helm on strike uh, at the start of the next over. One ball left of this one. So they are offering singles. The man is back at deep square leg and he's back at deep point. But everyone else is up. There's two slips, a cover, a short cover, mid off, mid on and mid wicket. Two slips alive and Overton. Here comes Crane for the last ball of the over. It's flat and he's turned it round the corner. He's got an inside edge on that and we're going to get one. They're gonna, are we going to take two? Yeah, oh, no, they're not. They're not going to come for safe for two. I think it probably was there, wasn't it? but they didn't want to risk it mm. against the order. Uh, but that means they put pressure on him, hadn't they? And uh, the throw in the end wasn't a great one. That means the target's down to 26, but Helm keeps the strike. I think that was a good ball as well from Helm. We're going to see a replay of it now. Um, Really looked nice flight, nice line, it's and then again league. coming back in, yeah. It's for good. The leg spin up. So, but played well by uh, Helm. So, yeah, Helm has strike here against Overton. Craig and Overton. And it was. Uh, 15 bold. Yes, it was the one wicket to fall to spin in the Middlesex first mm. inning. All 10 to Somerset Bowlers. Yeah. Whereas Hampshire have had a little bit of a say this time round. Yeah. Mason Crane, he's got three this innings. Three important wickets as well, I think. Off the top of my head. It's a race to a fifer between Overton and Crane, isn't it? Three apiece, two wickets standing. Four slips, are we going to make it five? I think so, yes. The MCC go with five slips. Points mid off, mid on, mid wicket and long leg. BBC Radio London and Five Live Sports Extra together here in Abu Dhabi as in comes Overton. He bowls to Helm, who's back. Onto the off stump, backed right up on that one, didn't he? And I did wonder if there was just a little bit of movement. Well, I didn't wonder actually at all. If there was a little bit of movement, he'd have been in deep trouble there. Helm like. Again, lots of chatter from behind the stumps. Look, who's that up to the stumps now behind? Is it the skipper it's again? Gregory, no, it's I think. Is it Gregory? I think it's uh, Duckett at first, Live at second. 
Skipper at third. Oh no, but Gregory's at fourth, I think he's at fifth. Overton, he's past the umpire. Bowls and it's edged short of fourth slip. Forward defensive fourth. from Helm. Rolls to his right, the fourth slip fielder. Joe Just drawn into it slightly, that one. Uh, Helm. Joe Clark in at fifth, I think. He keeps sometimes, so he should be a safe pair of hands in the in recording, you'd think. This is very tense now, isn't it? This is typical. 79 for eight. Helm's fourth delivery coming up as Overton's in. Bowls. Oh, and he's really fished at one outside the off stump on the drive. It was just an offering of the bat, really, as opposed to a drive. No foot movement. Um, again, not a great to Not really forward. And you know, I guess he might learn Darwin Land's lesson here, because if one does <laughs> nip back in, then get forward and at least make the umpire make it a more difficult decision. John is just coming down for a little chat, isn't he? Yeah. Overton into his 15th over. Having uh, gone out there this morning, not out from uh, the overnight position for the MCC himself. Mm. Three for 43. In he comes. Bowls and uh, straight to one and Helm backs up and drops a quick single in, in front of mid on the through. How many to go at the over? Two. So Simpson comes on strike with only two left of the over. That slip cordon will break up now and uh, all be on the single, I'd imagine. So will that offer... Well, actually, will they be on a single? Let's see. Because you know, it's getting tight now. 25 to win. If you want to... Let him get that close. Uh, it looks like point's going to stay up. Uh, square and third man. I think quite uh, Square and long leg drop back, but the point is going to stay up, yes. Just the one slip for gully, point, cover and a mid-off. Mid-on, mid-wicket. And Simpson works him down towards uh, fine leg, long leg will get there, Simpson and wants. it's just... Oh, there's a slip, they can come back for the second. Now it's is four. he OK? He's it's gone four. For four. Well, I hope the field is OK, because he, it, was, it should have been quite comfortable for him, but he's tumbled, and he remains down in a heap. Is that embarrassment or pain? No, it doesn't look as though he's particularly holding anywhere just Slowly yet. Slowly getting up, I think. He's, yeah, he's his teammates are coming, there is a problem. Physio is going to go out. Who uh, is the I don't know if the camera quite followed that on the replay, we'll see now. Uh, yes, it did, let's have a look. Uh, he ran in, it it's should Lewis have been a Gregory. comfortable catch, and uh, Gregory, it didn't appear, it looks quite innocuous on the replay. Um, it really looked as though he'd just run past it, but it, it looks as though he might have just um, tweaked an ankle, Has he rolled perhaps. his ankle here? Yeah. I mean, it didn't look too bad, but it might have just been a, a sharp little jag of the ankle. Um, he went and was quite comfortable. Around. Very sandy out there. Been tumbled, but... No, he seems to be up and uh, OK, but um, let's see. Just Yeah, it looks as though the Achilles, the ankle area, is just trying to bend out there as he bends the knees. A little, little bit stretch of chat out. with the Fizz. He's staying on. David Bartlett, the middle six, second 11 physio. Uh, on loan at boots. the MCC, isn't he? He is. Looks at his right boot. Actually, we can see what the physio is tending to there. It's the right foot um, that the physio is having a look at, uh, as we can see a close-up on the replay. Uh, picks himself up now. He looks OK. Uh, I'd imagine there was a little bit of damage pride involved as well <laughs> uh, for Gregory, because it should have just been a comfortable single. Uh, then he slipped. He thought they've got two, and then all of a sudden that pink ball emerged and popped over the boundary rope. So, 286 for eight, and it's just 19, 19. to win for Middlesexers. Simpson moves to 79. There's one ball to come of Overton's over, and uh, yeah, this is on a knife edge, this one. Do they take the risk and bring the field up and Well, they're mostly the up, single? aren't they? There's any square that's back. Because you'd fancy that Simpson, that, well, that at least Crane would really like mm. to be a bowling at helm. Guess we'll be keeping on a reasonably straight line, will he, as he comes in and it's a block hole deli delivery dugout. It's brilliant work from Craig over to Matt. Yep, end of the over, 286 for eight. That's the end of the 66th over. So Simpson has 79. Helm will have strike on two. It'll be Mason Crane and Hampshire. Oh, hold on. Why have we got another delivery? Have we missed a... There was two balls to go when you ran into a... when that one went for four. Huh. Have we missed a... Maybe in the injury, we missed an umpire call for a no ball. Here comes uh, Overton. Last ball of the end now. It's turned... Oh, that'll frustrate him. Out to deep square for a single. Simpson will keep the strike. 280 for eight. Simpson is on to 80. And two for Helm. Let's have a look at the uh, commentary of that uh, on the scorecard. See exactly why there were two balls left of the over because it certainly said four. Um, it yeah, it was a no ball. The one that went, the one that escapes for four. In watching the injury to right. um, poor 
Lewis Gregory, uh, who also managed to let the ball squeeze through. I say the injuries are all right. He's up. He's OK. So Somerset fans don't be too alarmed. Um, but uh, rolling over the ball, he uh, no ball. So every little helps. 287 for eight. BBC London and five live sports set extra in Abu Dhabi for the uh, Champion County match with myself, Kevin Hand and Will McPherson. So the field is really spread for Mason Crane here to John Simpson. He's going to... Alegi's going to continue the left-hander. He's got one slip, but apart from cover, everyone else is back. And, yeah, there's a single everywhere, and he's got one. Simpson ran that first one very hard because he sent it behind square. There was a little gap behind square on the leg side. Um, they just ran one. He wanted to. So now this is business time for Mason Crane. He's got... Who is a capable batter, but he is a tail ender. And this is the leg spinner's currency, really. Winning games from this sort of position. As Crane comes, two slips now. Everyone up on the single. And Helm is driving. He's got that pass for Man at backward point. They're going to at least one. Coming back for two. Are they going to get three on the, on the arm? No, they're not. They're going to settle for two. 90 for eight. 15 to win. Two wickets required for MCC. Either way, it's been an absolute belt, hasn't it, Kevin? It really has. Amazing, um, amazing third day here. We, yeah. We, 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 of course, have tomorrow, but it's certainly not going to be used at this stage. Here comes Crane into Helm, and that's taken the outside edge, but only as far as backward point. Barring a sandstorm. It would take something. There was a sandstorm for, was it Middlesex on their way to Abu Dhabi from was, Dubai? It was um, the... Uh, it South bus that I was on. Oh, was it? It was the in, south bus on the way north, from Dubai. South, uh, Dubai to Abu Dhabi last Monday. Eight days ago. Here comes Crane again. And that's... Ooh, he's beating him outside off stump. That's beautifully bold. He's lofted that one up. It's really good bowling from Crane, the is keeper, Was that a little unnerving, uh, being, on the, uh, being caught up in a sandstorm on the well, race away from Dubai to Abu Dhabi? Funnily enough, I was doing an interview as it was happening. Um, With... Uh, uh, Andy Flowers, I sort of half an hour long into you. Good chat with the uh, I know, half an hour. South assistant Flower. coach. And we and I, I just barely noticed. <laughs> In comes Crane again. That's shorter and flatter. And he's got that away, Helm. Is he going to get four for this? Yep. Yes, he is. He's gone through square leg. And the man behind square is chasing it to the fence. That's four from Crane. Only mm. 11 required now. Our effects might be uh, right next to the Middlesex cage. And obviously those players that we've been describing on the chairs around the... Uh, boundary rope, but also right next to the chairman's box, which uh, has been opened up for all of those on the, the tour package that have come out here. Two balls left. Is this over, I believe, or is it just one? Here comes Crane. And he's had a big swing at that, and it's gone over. There'll be four more. So the cover this time, it's just evaded the man. At, there's two cover fields. There's one in close and one slightly further back. It's just evaded him. Just seven required now for Middlesex. It's Tom Helm takes consecutive boundaries off Mason Crane, and that's the end of the over. 298 for eight. And Simpson on strike. So uh, superb couple of balls for Middlesex. Yeah, um, sadly for Crane, as well as his bowls, for those two, I don't know whether that last ball, he sent it up there as a tempter I outside think, of the off stump, because it was only just out of... He's put it in the uh, hit-me area outside Helm's off stump on for it and it only just missed that man at cover seven to win John Simpson on strike more spin it's denied Simpson essentially that has 81 not out uh, 92 deliveries six fours uh, who uh, oh dear will have horrible memories of that day down at Taunton I mean, I say horrible memories. At that point, people were talking, oh, some said they're going to be relegated, but that was the beginning of the charge, and Chris Rogers made it quite clear in the press conference um, wanted to win the title that year, which was a little surprising at the end of that game. <laughs> uh, but on they went, and he said, look, this is a young side, and they're going to learn lots and lots and lots from today, and we're going to, you know, they're going to learn... Yes, from the spinner. Everybody's in at the moment. Two slips as well, and Leach bowls, two helmets, tickle back with a square on the leg side, no run. Middlesex fielder doing the job there. Sub on for Liam Plunkett. <laughs> the double agent. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be him under a sky here, would you? No, what a reward for the three days we've had so far. A long couple of days, weren't they, the day-night matches here. I think the players felt it as well. Um, although they were probably more grateful playing in the slightly cooler conditions of the mm. evening. The 
baking heat in the middle of the day. Leach's left arm around, ball and uh, left alone by Helm, and that doesn't look at that looks as though it was not far away at all. Uh, it looks like we've lost our replay system, sadly. That really must have been close. Mind you, the camera's at that end at this end anyway, so uh, left alone by Helm. And I must say, he was about to prop forward, and then all of a sudden, back he went and lifted the bat up behind him. Dear me. 299 for eight. Leach, last ball of the over. He bowls from wide around the, the wicket this time, and uh, Helm pushes back a dot ball. 299 for eight, 68 overs bowled, and uh, middle six are six short of their target with two wickets remaining. Helm on 12, and Simpson will have strike on 82. Will it be Crane again? Yes, it will. It's good to see the uh, youngster being backed by the captain, Alex Lees. Call to prayers. Yes, you can There's ever probably call. a line in that, but we don't need to. <laughs> it's too obvious. Call to prayer uh, on the Lord's stream. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very holy sight. <laughs> Some pretty unholy commentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's tense out there, the Middlesex analyst, Alex. Fraser down to our right, it's looking quite tense. Field spread now, Very they're all spread. back. But they're all back, bar for slip and cover. Everybody else on the boundary rope. And even cover, you could probably grab a single on there. Anyway, in comes Crane to Simpson over wicket. And we're going to get a single into the leg side. Simpson's running the first like a little maniac, but he can't get back for a second. That's the 300 up. They need five to win. It's very close. The, the good news for MCC, as they all march in, up onto the single, is that Crane has five balls at Helm. Although, last time he had a few balls at Helm, Helm sent him away for two boundaries. He's more than capable, Tom Helm. Imagine there's a little bit of nervous pacing going round down in that committee room where the, MC, the Middlesex fans are. Here comes Crane, that's flat. And there's no run as uh, Helm gets on the back foot and sends it to Ben Duckett at short cover. Duckett sends it back to Crane, who just tosses it between his hands. And he's at the top of his mark again. He's got two wristbands on his forearms as he comes up again. And that's outside off stump, and that's been he has not... No, he's not hit it. <laughs> Where's our replay? That must gone? have turned a huge amount, because first slip has taken it, he's, he's launched it up in the air. Helm's had a big yahoo at it. Adam Live's done the fielding at first slip, but he hasn't hit it. He's, he's pretended to celebrate. As Crane comes in again, it's tossed up again, and that's sent straight back to the bowler, but on the bounce. Very well played, patiently played. This should be a replay, I think, of that one that turned. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it really did turn. It's it's huge, it did start though. wide, uh, but that was really huge. Turn. It just looks it kicked up a fair bit of dust there as well. Crane is up again. Here he comes. That's tossed up as well. And <laughs> being caught at cover. Crane's tossed it up outside off stump, but Helms had a big swing. And the man, he's the furthest fielder out, I would say, but he was still on the single at cover. And he's caught. <laughs> from. Tom Helm, as he wanders off. John Simpson, I imagine, is cursing. I was just about to say, that. I don't think Simpson quite knew what to make of that. He charging down, uh, then realised the catch had been taken low. It was a really fine catch. There's one ball to come of the over. Um, well, part of charging down, perhaps, was to try and cross. Yes. Um, but then that would require Simpson to hit a six to win the match. Helm looked over at the cover field. I'm not quite sure who it was. As if to say, that's very low down. Have you actually caught that? Mm. But... Crane has four. And Simpson's just waited for a drink. He's paused with uh, Patel. There goes Helm. Off he goes. Uh, very good 15 as night watchman in the first innings. Similar amount there, isn't it? 12. Um, yes. Um, it was a little bit naughty after the delivery just before. He perhaps had been advised to just keep blocking out and let Simpson make the educated decisions to go for it. Um, cross. Um, even though Simpson was alongside Helm virtually as the catch was taken, Helm didn't set off, he just watched in horror. It was Jack Leach who took the catch. Now, the singles are on offer again, but it's a slightly in outfield, isn't it? You've got two slips still. Wicket on the one, but long off his back. His back, point is three quarters of the way back. Mid on, Captain Alex Lees is on his way back. Now, Simpson has form for finishing off these they need five to win he, he'll only take him one ball if he uh, it's in the right slot but he 
He needs Ravi Patel to give him that chance. Patel is on strike. Crane has one ball left of his 20th over. He's looking for five wickets. Craig Overton, let's not forget, took a hat-trick earlier when Millsex were, at that stage, cruising to victory. We've had a tweet from Kate, who says her Middlesex supporting father, Peter, who's obviously not on Twitter, is very tense. Here is Crane, up to the stump to Bolter Patel, who's back. He's, he's gone through everything. Outside the mm. off-stump, there are ums and ahs from every fielder. Was that their chance? Just beats the edge of the bat, doesn't it? Um, here we'll see for Ravi Patel, the one ball that they had at Patel before the end of the 69th. Simply Mike, with five to win. He's on 83, does that board play? I will not miss that scoreboard, I must say. Um, here's that ball that beat Patel. Oh, oh, my word! Low. That's turned from middle and leg to wide outside off from pretty much a length and well, Patel was still playing down middle and leg when that ball passed wide outside of the off stump. And it, as you say, it kept extremely low. Jack Leach is the man who's been back <laughs> to bowl this over. Poor Paul Howden says the, uh, the uh, stream, the live stream, has float frozen for him on all devices. Well, good luck with getting that back. Chris King says, I'm packing to go on holiday and also watching this uh, with his... Uh, watching it on the TV, the live pictures of the match with our commentary. Needed to finish before the family get home. Um, so where would they be? They'd still be on a school run at this time. Family out and about. Oh, look at the, look at his lounge! My goodness me, suitcase upon suitcase. How long are you going for? Yeah. How big's the family? <laughs> maybe Three. it is. The, maybe it may. It's just a very long school run. <laughs> Six Three or seven of them to pick up. Three hundred for nine. Three hundred and five to win. Leach is going to bowl round the wicket to the left-handed Simpson. Left arm orthodox. And the fielder's out. They're inviting the single, but they. It's going to take a decent effort to the boundary. So we've got a slip. Uh, we have got fielder at 45. Now, where's he off to? He's the last one to settle. He's off on a wander somewhere at 45. He's backing up, he's backing up. And, uh, it's a single on him, A little bit deeper, yeah. He's a... Ooh, what would you call him there? A deep 45? <laughs> um, you so, get the picture. Indeed. Well, we hope. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a slip, there's a deep backward point. Cover, extra cover is in about 20 yards from... The boundary rope, long off, long on, deep mid wicket, and deep backward square leg, and Leach his left arm around. He bowls to Simpson, who rejects a single out to deep mid wicket. Great. So how does he do it? Straight back over the bowler's head. Um, his scoring options when he was in this situation for Middlesex, of course, to hit that the, the winning runs, a six down at Taunton. Um, it was either just to get that little bit of room and hit it back over the bowler's head, but he went with Allenby over deep backward square with an extraordinary shot. Leach is around the wicket again, bowls, and uh, Simpson it away out to deep mid-wicket again, dot ball. What do you reckon to this? It's turning singles down. Do you think it's sensible? Yes, I do think it's sensible. Um, I think the onus is on Simpson here to try and hit the winning runs, but where does he try to find them? Over the bowler's head. I think going square is probably not the option. Deep backward square leg is a big old boundary, isn't it? Mm. Can he go straight back over the bowler's head for four, even? And on the back foot, now he tries to force in between mid-wicket and long on. Can he turn it into two? It's just Ooh. a single. Patel will have strike with three to go the over. My goodness me, it's only the Champion County match. It's not exactly for the title like it was at Lords <laughs> last year, but Middlesex doing it all the hard way again. 301 for nine. Do they know any other way? No, Middlesex. I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think my heart could take another year watching Middlesex playing like this. Right, Ravi Patel. Everyone's up now. There's another, is there another helmet going to be brought out here? I think there might be. Are you nervous, Kevin Hand, BBC, inquires Martin Emerson? I am, actually, Marty, I am. It really doesn't carry that much importance. But having got so close to the target now, and again, a little unbeaten run. Well, a little unbeaten run, unbeaten champions of 2016. Being pushed here by the fact that they've got these Somerset bowlers as well. The Yorkshire openers out there as well in their ear. Yeah, it's just a little test of the metal of Middlesex. Can you go and do it again? Now, for two days... The MCC have used a Middlesex fielder under the lead at short leg. Mm -hmm. But he's not trusted now. <laughs> in, the, in the heat of the moment, with far, four to win, <laughs> it's Tom Allsop. There's still a Middlesex fielder out there. I'm trying to locate him. Um, Is he backwards square? Yeah, I think it might be. Uh, but Allsop, who's a very good short leg mm. for Hampshire, has been sent in under the lid now that the going has got really tough. Goodness me. Ravi Patel, two slips and a short leg. He settles down the right-handed batsman. It's the slow left arm of Leach around the wicket. Bowls and Patel's forward. Two to go the over. This is the crowd. <laughs> it's unbelievable. 
Leach backs up. He do it. Two balls for Patel to survive to give Simpson the strike once more. Leach bowls. Patel a solid forward defensive. We've been talking up his forward defence all, all match, haven't I? As a number 11. Uh, you know, there's, I think he's had a few reasonably lengthy innings as number 11. Not great run scoring innings, but just trustedly supporting the man at the other end. That was very firm. Everybody on the single bar, bar those two catchers. Uh, do they do they offer him one? Mid-off and mid-on have just dropped a little deeper. I wouldn't quite call them a deep mid-off or a deep mid-on. It's interesting, isn't it? They have mm. one single. Leach, bowls, and Patel leaves one outside of the off-stump. He survived the end of that over. 70 bowls in this innings now. 301 for nine. 305 the victory target for Middlesex. Patel has faced four deliveries, and Simpson, who has faced 99, has six fours and one six is on 84. Get the binoculars out. Get zoomed in on what's going on out there. Mason Crane <laughs> will stay on. I'm rather hopeful they can do this as well before BBC London comes to me for an update at half past. <laughs> I think they should. That would be... Ten minutes away. Ten minutes' time. Eleven minutes. They did very nearly arrive for the bulletin at the uh, end of the Yorkshire Middlesex match last year as well. Stepped to the commentary box next door. They just did it Middlesex before the... Uh, the bulletin arrives. Each of the other two days of his game, at this stage of the day, of a, you know, sort of halfway through the final session, there's been plenty of fans wandering around the boundary. Today, they are all sat. Mm. Still. Even John yeah. Stevenson sat down now. It takes some doing to get him yeah. to sit down. It was a little pump of the air, fist pump of the air. Right, so Simpson's on strike to Crane, who's going to bowl over wicket to the left hand. The field is all back apart from the slip. Absolutely, everyone else is out. And he's defending that. It's turned down a single, it's rolling down to the man. <laughs> In fact, Alex Leeds is taking so long to get the ball at long off, they probably could have run for Yeah, them. adding to the and, and agony, won the, game. the anxiety. That was his 100th ball faced for Simpson, for his 84. I can tell you his strike rate if you want. Um, here comes Crane <laughs> again. And that's been drilled to <laughs> the man long off again, mm. and again. They're turning down a single. He's almost running alongside it, isn't he? He's taken so long to get to it. These, it was never going to make it to the boundary rope just in case there was an awkward slip for him. But, uh, Ran clever from Random Lees. underscore female has noticed that you might be a tad tense. <laughs> Here comes Crane again. That's tossed up slightly more and he's hit that hard. To drown to Alex Lees again, who's been busy at long off. He can't run alongside that one. That would have made it for four if he had had a little hiccup. There's no run. Lee, Simpson made it halfway down the track on at least one of these singles. Three, three balls of the over Where is the scoring shot for him? Here comes Crane again. Again, he's tossed it up. And now he's accepted the single to long off. <laughs> Lees is the man. Ravi Patel. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about him. 25 now, he'll be 26 this summer, from Harrow. And uh, 21 first-class matches with an average of 12 and a half and a high score of 26, not out. So... Uh, Yes, struck 22 fours. Tell in his time, one of those mm. would be useful. Now it would win <laughs> the match, but I don't think he'll go for it, and I'd certainly advise against it. So he, more than, more than a four for every first-class match. 21 of them. Here comes Crane. Two balls at Patel here. He's tossed it up. Oh, he's just keepers done with work down the leg side. I think that might have been McGoogly. That looked about on about leg stump line from. <laughs> we are a long way back, but. Uh, Mark Madrid says never accuse Kev of not shredding the nerves of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> never do it the easy way. It's boring. Here comes Crane for the final ball of the over to Ravi Patel. He's tossed that one up as well. Oh, Ooh. he's got an edge on that. Has, Has he? Got he? A on it, I think. Or was it another big turner? It's, oh well. It's gone. It's fallen short of second slip. Whatever's happened. So there's no drop. There's nothing. It was for Googly, the previous ball, the penultimate the one side, of the over. Yeah. And now we're going to have another look at this on the uh, replay. Another over has passed, 302 for nine. Three to win for Middlesex. One to win for the MCC. One wicket, I should say. Simpson, 85, not out. Bless me. Look at the conflab there. Bless you on the Lord stream. <laughs> um, Holy water on the Lord's floor. <laughs> 302 for nine. BBC Radio London and BBC Five Live Swartz Extra. Together again, like we were all at the end of last season when it was just like this. Deary me, the two batsmen are leaning on their bats having a chat, but... There's a mother's the, meeting There is. There. The umpires have got their hands on their hips. Well, we're not going anywhere, chaps. There's no rush. Um, In fact, there's a couple of little committees here among the uh, MCC 
mob. Craig Overton is going to bowl, I think. Is the, mm. upshot, is the upshot of it all. Well, in quicker the, they come. In the main committee is uh, Duckett, Lee's the captain, Leach, who bowled the last over from that end, but I think he's being taken off. Ben Cox, the keeper, with his uh, helmet on, and Duckett's talking very forcefully. They've broken up now. Yeah, double ha double teapot on from the umpires, but the only thing we're being delayed from is Stevie Eskenazi's birthday party. But <laughs> 24 today. Happy birthday, Stevie. Well batted. Although it was, of course, his wicket. Mm. Began the hat-trick. Overton has three wickets, all within three balls, all a very nice wicket maiden. Eskenazi, <sighs> Ben Flynn, Ben Harris, two Jameses in there. Can't breathe, says Andrew Wilmot. Still have an entire seat to come. I do somehow get the feeling Middlesex really are going to put them through it again. Because again, that was what I was saying at the start of this match. Middlesex saying, well, what are we going to do now? How are we going to top that? We'll go out and, you know, uh, this time prove by a points margin that you were the best team in the country um, last year and do it again this year. I don't think Middlesex are going to do it easy anytime soon. Here's Overton. He's in. Bowls. Sue Simpson goes big. How big? Deep mid wicket goes around and he's That's got it. He's made it for six. 308 for nine Middlesex. And look at the celebrations from Simpson again. <laughs> Extraordinary, the finishes we saw last season. And this game has just brought to such a crescendo this evening. Unbelievable stuff for Middlesex. Only a pre-season friendly for both, but just the way that it's built up this evening, you can see how much it meant. The Somerset bowlers, the Yorkshire skipper, the Yorkshire opener out there with him as well. And uh, Simpson with a huge shot into the onside while they went for the pace of Overton. I did say that that might difference. So look, there we go. They're tumbling a heap. Those of you that are watching on the TV as well as we see the replay here. Uh, shaking of hands and John Simpson yet again for Middlesex striking six and against Overton a Somerset bowler. Extraordinary stuff. Middlesex win by one wicket here in the Champion County match. What an extraordinary game. What a brilliant finish. John Simpson has just got something about John Simpson of those Somerset lads, isn't it? Yeah, uh, well, let's not rule out that England call-up just yet for Simpson <laughs> because um, the man's made it. got nerves of steel, hasn't he? Handshakes all around. The stuff who's tuned in as well at the moment is mum who's uh, over in Spain good to have you with us Karen uh, yeah that England call up might come one day uh, Middlesex remain undefeated undefeated champions says Peter Mead well again you know I mean the bus you were sat next to me on the bus today I was having a chat with Richard Johnson of course it's a pre-season friendly and you know you're tune over what's happened the last couple of days and how it's played out and Middlesex weren't particularly worried about it of course they'll go out and battle hard today but well that morning session this morning 100 and so for one, weren't they? Mm. And we thought, hold on a minute, yeah, they can do this. The top three all battered very well, but, but Tom Helm got those vital two wickets and first thing in the morning. Well, this is just unbelievable. Here comes John Simpson again. How many times has he walked off racing his bat? Somerset last year, Nottinghamshire and uh, Lancashire lads from Bury. John Simpson has grown in such an unbelievably important player to Middlesex. Astonishing, world class behind the stumps, but he's batting. Nerves at the moment, promoted to six in the order. I say it was a promotion, they backed him as opener a few years ago, but he's really come on as a white ball cricketer as well, and how he's proved that in run chases for Middlesex. And look at them uh, all lining up to shake his hand. They'll be very proud of him for his efforts. And then Angus Fraser's the last out of the dressing room. I don't think he was even watching it, was he, Gus? He's just emerged from the dressing room, surely. His nerves weren't shredded as well, were they? <laughs> well, a little... Note from next door, the Opta scorer. Mm -hmm. Middlesex have now lost only two of their last 35 matches. Oh, nice, nice. Um, very good from the uh, Opta man. There's a lot, and you know, you can see that Angus Fraser was up here earlier talking about um, the continuation of last season, not wanting to change anything from last season. The fact that um, he wasn't going to tell them that we need to do it a little bit differently now, it's a defence, because they do say that the defence is often harder, going out and doing it again is often harder, but he said, no, we're going to do it exactly the same way, uh, and that means that, uh, yes, blood pressure tablets are on order for all Middlesex members if they're going to do it like this again this season. Indeed. Astonishing. Again. Yeah, it really is. I'm just speechless, the fact that we're in Abu Dhabi watching a finale like that to another Middlesex fixture. Uh, just a reminder of the match, uh, MCC 332 and 150, while Middlesex 179 and 300 and what was it in the end? 308 for nine when Simpson hit the six. So Simpson's figures, most crucially, uh, we should give to you because um, that was an innings of the highest quality uh, from John Simpson yet again. 
Uh, and his, well, his run of matches from uh, last summer through to this would be interesting to go through a scorecard. I'm sure we'll be doing all of that. It'll be boring poor old Kevin James with all of that down at Hampshire, <laughs> first match of the season. But uh, Simpson finishes. Let me see if I can get his final uh, stats in front. There we go. Middlesex win by one wicket. Uh, John Simpson, 89 from 104 deliveries, seven fours, and that was his first six. Uh, for Simpson, which was just brilliant. Uh, six ball duck, six ball duck, no, it wasn't. Six ball not out, naught for uh, Ravi Patel. And uh, you have to feel quite a bit of sympathy, I think, for, for the MCC because, you know, this side that's put together, John Simpson said that, you know, they had to chop and change this siding uh, probably more than any year before. Uh, but four wickets for Mason Crane, three for Overton. And um, it really looked as though, uh, yeah, the Somerset and Yorkshire boys were going to come back and uh, haunt Middlesex uh, here in Abu Dhabi, but not so. Well, the, uh, yeah, certainly the MCC have played their part in what's been an absolutely fantastic game here. Craig Overton took a hat-trick today. Lewis Gregory had a fantastic game. Joe Clark played beautifully on day one. What a, what a prospect he is, the young 20-year-old Worcestershire batsman. He's had a great winter with the England Lions. He's learnt plenty. Ben Duckett played a typically sprightly innings on day one as well. So, uh, absolutely extraordinary game. Uh, and I've hope, I hope you've all enjoyed the, the coverage. And some of you are watching the Lord's stream, the holy site that we've discussed uh, this afternoon. <laughs> it seems appropriate, doesn't it? Um, Will McPherson, thank you very much. Uh, real pleasure with you the last three days. Young Cricket Writer of the Year uh, for 2016. Really good to have you with us. So uh, the champions are underway with another victory. Uh, they're next in action at Hampshire in the second round, the first round, uh, Yorkshire. I think will be the five live sports extra, but of course there'll be live ball by ball coverage uh, throughout all the summer with all the county fixtures. Uh, and it's just a couple of weeks away now, folks, so uh, tune in for that one. Uh, but well, uh, another breathless day watching Middlesex County Cricket Club as here from Abu Dhabi. It's a very good night to you all as Middlesex win by one wicket.